Welcome into the Cam Strick Podcast, episode number 198, baby. Presented by Hair Club, Cam, and that music bringing us in today is uh, Ain't No Crime, oh. Maddie Lashoff. He's got like a new single out. He's like a country music singer. Hey, Maddie Lashoff, I love him. He came to uh, Married a Girl from St. Louis, uh, Kirkwood. Maddie's a great guy. He's part of the alumni, blues alumni now, although he didn't play for the blues. First round pick to Boston, plays a god dang guitar, and he was a model. What a trifecta. Model? That yes, he's a model. What do you mean? What do you I mean? I what do know. I mean well, when I say he's a model? Andy? I never knew Why he was a model. Up? Yeah, he modeled. Like like, like on the runway? Yeah, dude. Hell what's yeah. what's he modeling? No, he used to as a kid and stuff. Oh, as a kid. Yeah, he's a handsome son of a bitch. Well, I had a friend who used to be in like magazines and stuff like that when he was a kid. Like, So he was a kid model. I think he was... He wasn't doing like uh, cologne like commercials no, back like no. in his twenties or anything. No, I, like no that. but he, he did like you know just like my buddy Cody Carson growing up with him. He's same kind of thing, model and mm-hmm. as a kid and shit. I had a buddy. He was like in uh, magazines and stuff like that. You know, red redheaded kid. <laughs> what happened to that? <laughs> well, then they don't model anymore. Exactly. Well, I mean, he probably like hey, left. There's any too many redheads. Mo- hey, look, I love them redheads from mm-hmm. females. Yeah. Well, if you got red hair as a dude, you ain't modeling. What do you mean? That's well, not true I'm at all. Saying. <laughs> that I'm is just saying. That's not true. There's not that many redheaded models, I'd say. There's not that many freckled, redheaded, pale skin models. No freckles. That's weird, though. I know. Because you usually got freckles out the mouth. I know. I, can I, I, know. And I like that on a, I like hair. that on a woman. So, what do you think creates red hair? Like, how do you get it? Being a stepchild? I don't know. No, no, <laughs> dude. There's people with red hair that are listening. You're not being very. I alive. know. Hey, I got a bald spot in my goddamn head. Who cares? I make mm-hmm. fun of myself. I can make fun of, if you have a red hair. It's all good. And you know, growing up, you might take a little beating. But if you're a big, tough dude and you got red hair, no one gives a fuck. But if you look like you, Andy, and you had red hair, oh, Lordy B. I once considered getting my kids into my, like, my oldest daughter. Like, never with my middle or my youngest because it just, like, you know, like, you get into the parent thing. Like, for the first time, you're like, oh, my kid should model. Actually, somebody said it to my, we were in line one time. and they, Chloe? Yeah. Uh-huh. When she was a baby, dude. And She's cute, um, man. She's a cutie. Well, she was a bit. I mean, so we went to the place, and and then they wanted to like uh, they wanted us to pay like hundreds of dollars okay. for like. I was like, all right, yeah, we, we ain't yeah, trying yeah, to model. If you want, you to asked me, us yeah, to come. Yeah. Like, we're not trying to get She's into playing soccer, dude. Yeah, okay, so anyway. so lash off though, man. This guy, he's got like a country twang, dude. He's from New York, and he like he's got like a he that sounds like a Travis Trader. Well, something. that's what you do. What's You're, the name, Travis? Who? Scott? No, Travis Scott. That's who. Uh, he's like a rapper. Yeah, he got he got he fuck got fucked up and in Houston. Was that in Houston when they trampled everybody and they're sticking everybody with like COVID shit? Oh my god! And like eight or nine people died. Yeah, and all the all the all the fans up in the front part were like, "Travis, stop the stop the concert! People getting trampled and dying." He was like, he kept stopping and be like, "What's going on?" Yeah, but you got to stop everything, dude. You got to like, yeah. He's dating Kylie Jenner, I believe. I think she's a billionaire. She's got like a cosmetic company. Oh, I would not. Oh, she's up. a breeder. Yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Oh, what'd you say? Oh, condom? Yeah, I got one on. Yeah, I got one on. Hey, so um, Travis Scott, he just had his uh, first concert since that incident yeah. in Houston just like a couple of days ago over the weekend in London. And uh, Kevin Durant was there, I think. Uh, Is that your buddy? Harden was there, too. Oh. They went there to, like, celebrate. They were spraying champagne all over them afterwards. They put goggles on when they are spraying champagne? I <laughs> know. They kept the goggles off. But, but Those get- nerdy-ass NBA guys, man, when they win. They're like, and they sip the beer like, oh, God, I can't drink that. Hey, like they got goggles the baseball on players do it, too. They're nerdy and, as fuck, And too. let me throw this out there. For the first time ever in my lifetime, I've never seen it before, the Avalanche players were wearing goggles. Oh, I know it gets in your Did eyes. Did you see Settle that? Down. EJ was one of them. Uh, EJ gets a pass. Actually, all the hockey players get a pass. I'm going to be biased. I don't give a shit. Hey, anymore. can I just say this? So, But Matty, like, he's got this single going on. Like We're playing it on the Alexa. And like we're gonna end this episode with another song. He's got like two songs that are out, talented, but he's man. got like a uh, he is talented. I know he plays the guitar, and you'll see him like uh, singing at different events. I th- I feel like I was at a Stanley Cup party one time, and he was singing there. Like they yeah. hire him. Yeah. No, I know. Like I'm having an Oktoberfest party. I'm gonna let you know about that and when to yeah, come over there. for that. Uh, but hold I may, your breath. I'll be. There. I may hire him for for do that, that too. Please do that. Yeah, I will he's hire great. him. Now hide your wives though. Uh, well, <laughs> he's a model. I don't know. I, I don't know how this works. But yeah, he's an awesome dude. He's got a cool wife. It too. makes me wonder if, um, because I'm not into the country. I'm starting to like it a little more, but I'm not a huge country music fan. You're not fan. into anything. No, my wife just got us tickets for Friday night. Um, 
At uh, man, he sings. At what? He sings Chicken Fried. Oh, that's no, he's good. Chicken Fried and uh, one of Kate's favorite songs. I for, forgot. I forgot what it's called. What's no, his name? Its dude? name's um, Zach, Zach Brown, Brown Band. Band. You want to go? I'd go to that. All right, come Friday Kate, night. You know what? You know what, Andy? You might come. I'm being dead serious on that. Yeah. Now, depending on where the fucking tickets are, if you need me to help you get hooked up, we could probably go in a, a couple of my buddy Max. Okay, okay. let's do that. Let's Is do it that. Is that where's that? Scott Trade? Uh, Riverport. I still call oh, it. Oh, hell yeah. We got to get a box, dude. Yeah, and it's going to be in the 60s Friday night. We, we got to be in a box, though. Okay, we so. We need to get catered. All I, that we got shit. two Don't other people with, with us shit. that are cool. And, are they cool? Yeah, really cool. And so. They're we, cool, so cool. hook that up, dude. They're cool, cool? Very cool. All right. Because the only reason why I would agree to this for my wife. Because mm-hmm. my wife loves Zach Brown Band. Yeah. And I will go there for her yeah. for that. Yeah. Just so you know. Yes. But I ain't sitting in the fucking lawn. And I'm not sitting in the seats. So we have to get a box. Okay, so, so hook that up. I went to Zach Brown like two years ago. It was the year they won the cup, actually. I remember telling a guy who was sitting behind me, he was like, hey, are the Blues going to win this series? They were playing Winnipeg. I said, they win this series, they win the cup. I told the guy. I'll never forget it. And he reminds me. Zach? This, I, this, it wasn't Zach. It may have been somebody else probably in the in the uh, traveling uh, group. Oh, yeah. You're talking to the roadies. <laughs> to the roadies. They didn't, let, they didn't let you near He's Zach. He's like, hey, will the Blues win the I go, hey, they win this series. They will win the Stanley Cup. I just felt like it was kind of set up for the Blues. I ended up doing it. Um, but no, so hook that up. We're sitting in the box. I like to so be in I the box. So I got to hook shit up now? Wait, well, what you, what, so I thought this was your gig. So if is. I invite you to something, Andy, I set it up. <laughs> so now you invite me and I have to set it up? That yeah. doesn't make any sense. With your buddy, yeah. who I don't know, who's probably very nerdy. I'm a, I don't want to <laughs> no, be no, no, around no. anybody I don't know when I'm doing things. I don't want him seeing me do shit. Uh, I don't know. I can't is he wait, cool? I can't is he going to talk to me about nerdy shit? Next year. Is he going to talk to me? Wait, is it your neighbor? No. Oh, God. Oh, my neighbor. Good Dude, he's Lord. got these guys working on his yard now. I mean, I don't know what's been coming out of the yard, but he's got people working on it, so actually there's some improvement. But, yeah, no, I, I didn't really – listen, I'm not into the country. <coughs> so my wife got – well, I don't know who she went through and whatever, but I like to be in the box. Last time we sat in the box when I went through my people, and you're right by the bar in that little area to go in there. So I, I, I need gotta to go be – I got to go to the private bathroom. And yes, now. yes. Private bar. Yeah. That's where we and go. And we had parking and everything. Yep. Yeah. So will you hook that up? Well, I don't care about parking because I'm getting dropped off. I don't drive down there either. Getting out of that. No, it's the I'm best to you. Uber to a concert. For you get, sure. You get in and your, out. Not Uber. I'm sorry. Car, if you get – not Uber because Ubers aren't, don't allow you to go to the cutoff. So you get a car service. Oh, really? Which is still an Uber. Mm-hmm. And you just take it, and they'll drop you off, and they have a secret lane, so yeah. you don't wait in well, line. Well, hook up the uh, why do I have to do box, anything? What dude? Do, I'm why just don't you do you, something? Because I don't want to waste it on this concert. I'm already in a bad mood today, anyway. I know you are. Can I just Mother finish what I, my my thought real quick? Yeah, though? go ahead. I it's just, not about. So I'm not mad at you. Well, once. I know you're not. I know you're not. I'm mad at you. Well, once. let the people know because people like my people like get very defensive when you're when you're kind of being care a dick. About your people. You know, I know. Well, you piss me off. I get those messages. I am not in a good mood. Oh, by the way, you were wrong last week. Somebody quick to point that out. They, they always... Listen, I got fact checkers. About what? You said the crocodile is the apex animal of the African jungle. You're way off. African jungle? I said... He's a Sandy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Dude, you said of, of Africa. It is, isn't it? They are in Africa. No, are, the, the lion is. And There's I, crocodiles and, and, and lions I, in Africa, and, and, you psychopath. You didn't know that? Look that up real quick, Brody. Look up if there's crocodiles and lions in Africa. You are out of there your are. mind. Yes. No, That's I what s- it said that. I said the lion. You said the crocodile is the apex. Dude, okay. The lion is the apex. <laughs> okay. Hey. Although humans are interfering hey, with man, that right Hey, man, look now. on YouTube and see when a lion and a crocodile fight. See who fucking wins, homie. Okay, I watched a couple last night. Jesus. And I thought you were coming up I with watched, straight facts Well, I me. watched a couple oh. last night. Somebody did bullshit about Ukraine. I'm not going to lie to you. Oh, really? Hold on. I watched a couple of those videos last night. The the lions, because they're with their pride and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah and yeah, they, yeah. they hang out yeah. together. They're yeah, not yeah, like, yeah. like, they don't yeah, like roll around. Yep, yep. They're not like bears that are like solitary. No doubt. Okay. No, no. They like Unless to hang out cubs, together. Go ahead. Um, and what happened was uh, uh, the, the, the lion, there was like three of them. This mm-hmm. is the crocodile had no, and it was like bleeding. How I, about you I, go I don't in the water? Like watching this. They How were in the water. The crocodile would kill all of them. No. How big was it? Okay, three on one. I'm talking one on three one. Three on one. Well, Andy, how about ten on one? You're oh, the crocodile. No shit. 
How about you go one on one in the water and see what happens? It's not happening because they 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 roam around right, together. Right, you're, you're, okay, thank okay, you. Okay, so thank real you. quick because we're going you. to the country music concert this Friday night. This is going to be a fun show next week. Tune in for the recap of how the country uh, the country show oh, went. I'm sure it'll be a blast. But if I don't with go. Lash off being from New York and he's got the country twang, like I'm, I'm just wondering: are he, are all these country music singers that I hear? Are, do they really talk like that, or do they put the twang on well, for the song? They're usually from the South, Andy. I mean, this is a stupid conversation. But but Matty Lashoff could have different he's voices. From the, for, he's got several different voices. Well, that's what you do when you're a yeah, singer and you're yeah. talented. You could do the New York accent. You could mm-hmm. do the country. You could have mm-hmm. a little twang, a little yeah, draw, whatever yeah. you want. Hey, <laughs> I don't know. one time uh, I called James Dolan, the, uh, the, the, owner? the owner of yeah. the New York Knicks and the Rangers. Yeah, I want him on. And I got this call from, like, the security guy. Like, Minutes, and I answer the phone. I'm like, "Hello, are you trying to reach the chairman?" Yeah, I am. <laughs> I was like, "What?" He goes, "Are you trying to reach the chairman?" The chairman. I'm like, "Uh, what do you mean?" He's like, "Mr. Dolan, why are you calling the chairman?" And then he couldn't have been nicer, and everything was great. And actually, the chairman was very interested. And, and, and then something else went on. I don't know if he like tried to fight like Charles Oakley or something like that, or he oh. kicked like Spike Lee out of the MSG. No, no it was uh, Patrick was, Ewing. Patrick Ewing tries to walk in, Dude. and the dipshit's like, "Sir, I need your." He's I know. like, Could "What you the imagine fuck did being you say?" That? It's like Michael Jordan walking into like I the do. United Center, and the guy's like, "Okay, I need to see your ID." I know you don't know who Patrick Ewing is, man. You shouldn't be working Thank there. Thank you. You're because, out. And I know I don't want to. It might be some young girl that doesn't know, but what is she doing? It's security anyway, if you don't know anything. Like, what are you going to do to stop somebody anyway? But, like, Patrick Ewan's in the rafters, and he walks in, and he has to, like, show an idea. I know you think that's petty, but it's not. Well, some people would look at that and be like, wow, why is he above everybody else? Because well, he, he is. Yeah. Because he is. Because his name that's is what hanging happens. from the rafters. It's like, it's like when Bobby Plager comes in, or, or Brett Hall comes in, and they're like, sir, give me your ID. And Holly's like, what? Oh, like, what the fuck? What? Oh, my God. Oh, he, come Let's on. See, here, they wouldn't do it to Holy. Well, no, they, they might, actually. Yes. Certain, depend with, not why, the entrance hey, he would go in. It wouldn't happen. I didn't go to the Blues game but for you, a while. because. Yeah, what happened to you? Well, well, no, that was petty. That was me going out for a smoke break, and the guy embarrassed me in front of my uh, buddy. Well, he so. should have for that. It was embarrassing. You embarrassed the brand. I, did, I didn't act. Actually. No, I didn't act a fool. Oh, you're smoking darts out there? I don't get about it. God damn. Am I playing? Who cares? <laughs> I'm getting my mind right. I'm at the game. I'm partying. I don't go to the games to do anything else but party. So I, and You don't like say hi to people? and oh, like That's all I do. Yes. I don't even watch the you, game. you got to interact with I folks. interact with everybody. I'm the most social butterfly you could ever imagine. I am. And I always put a happy face on. But the guy did uh, like search me down and give me a full cavity search when he knew I was out. I mean, it, just, it was kind of a goofy situation. Mm-hmm. But that turned me off to where I didn't want to go, like, do things where I get you know, I get put in a spot where people are, I don't know. I just get really weirded out quick, man. Yeah. And I don't know, man. I, I don't know. It's all good. Um, it's all good. Who cares? Okay, the people want to know. I went on the river on Friday, Cam. I had a great day on the Bass, river. Bass River. Or, yeah. uh, well, Bass it's, it's, it's the Cortoy River. Yeah, Bass Resort. Yeah, yeah Bass cool. River Resort. Andy, I've been going down there since I was a kid, homie. <laughs> I mean, you act like this is like a fucking wild adventure. Well, and, uh, it know, was a very wild adventure. There's zero cell service. Even I had three kids. Actually, at the, ver- at the very people. end, I know they, they do. They do. Man. You know how. I just heard you know about how? a story, a terrible tragedy in the Missouri River, which oh, God, I don't Missouri. You don't go on the Missouri, do you? I deal with a boat. Damn right, I did with Dude, a boat. Dude, you go out of that. You're done, though. You get in that water, man. You are done. It's, Not, like, the, it's like the Mississippi. You're done, dude. Yes and no. Okay, yes and no, because it's all dredged out. It's going to funnel you in the middle, and, and you, could, you can keep yourself up, but there are undertoes in that mug, and Absolutely. I, I, don't, I don't fuck with it unless I have a nice high-powered mm-hmm. boat that I can cruise up and go to Herman or whatever, but you got to know the river. But it's the Merrimack and all the, the rivers that you're on, they're not dredged. The, Mer- the, the, the Missouri is dredged, so you could have your boat in the middle of that water, turn the engine off, and take a nap, and it'll keep you in the middle of the water. Take a nap? I, I'm not sleeping on that I'm boat. Not. I'm not, not coming sleeping. on my boat. I'm either. not sleeping on that boat. I, I, got, I got to be awake and know what's going on there yeah. In, yeah. in these rivers. Yeah, Andy. I may take a I may take a nap on like uh, Lake Tahoe or something like that, or just like you know somewhere. I'm not I'm not sleeping on the Missouri River. I, I know, I, I know, Andy. But I'm just saying, like you could because the water's dredge and you'll never like hit a corner. or something. Terrible tragedy that this 18 year old kid actually died while saving his four year old oh. brother, and the four year old brother survived. I saw it. I feel for that family, man. You know, like, you go on the on the river, man. You understand like what could possibly happen. I knew another guy who's like they're constant. They're on the river nonstop. They live way out there, 
And um, so, you know, you get that, that, that confidence. And even at a young age, like, you know, like they understand the river, they know water and water safety. And the, and the kid got pulled under 11 years old, man. Yeah. So anyway, you, you go down and, you know, you get trapped under these little trees and are stuck. Mm-hmm. And they hold your swimming trunks or something. And yes, the water and just keeps stuck, you down. Dude. And they're like, you know, where'd you go? And you, know, you get popped up. At the very end of our um, very intense uh, rafting trip. Where very <laughs> you went on the easiest, nerdiest <laughs> trip ever. And that's why you brought your kids. So if you're going to brag about how scary it was and bring in your, your three little kids out, then you're a jackass. So don't like prop this up more than it is. It was very intense. Uh, I mean, heavy, heavy rapids. I mean, heavy listen, rapids. I had to, I had to like, had I mean, there were certain areas where I, and I'm doing all the, the paddling. I mean, oh, we know all of it. Well, you do, you do everything <laughs> anyway. We know my wife did she not yoga. Oh, she, she, yoga she didn't pick the thing up once. Chloe has got to do everything. I'm like, where's the, uh, uh, she's at yoga. Okay. Oh yeah. That's right. <laughs> Today. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pick Andy up at fucking Dobbs. No one else. I mean, Andy does everything. It's unbelievable. Dude, I got a I got a nail on my tires. But so. it does affect me that you do everything, just so you know. What do you mean? Because I have to cater around your goddamn schedule. <laughs> That's not true. So it's like, you know, put your foot down once in a while at home. Mm. That's all. It's all yeah. good. Well, it's all good. Get your confidence. You know what? I, I I want my wife to go to yoga and whatever. You know, it's important to That's true. To get a workout. I, but I'd rather her not and get a workout. To have and, help that, me and, out. And, and it's the mental workout as much as the physical. Yeah, it's tough. You know? It's tough. So anyway, so we're going through these very heavy rapids, and the only person that helped me was my 11-year-old daughter that actually picked up the oar. Like, nobody else did in the boat, you know? But we had to get through a couple of, uh, of danger zones, and, and then everything was okay. At the very end, though, and they tell you, listen, like, there's a bridge at the very end. Do not go towards the bridge because it gets very, very fast, and it can and will pull you under. So we're getting out of the raft and whatever, and uh, all of a sudden Ty is, like, floating away. And, like, this guy had to go out there and, like, grab Ty. I was a terrible just, father. Okay. I mean, I don't know if he was in real danger, but he was certainly was floating. Were you like, Chloe, go get him? Earlier on the trip, yeah, I, I mean, did. just, you know. Earlier on the trip, he was actually floating away again. Do you know how to swim? Dude, he can't. I'm not a great swimmer. I know. I'm not a great swimmer. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Fuck yeah. I took goddamn right. I took lessons as a kid. My mom took me every fucking week. Well, don't confuse that. Like, I don't know how to swim. I know how to swim, but am you I, like. You saving anybody. Hell no, I, I, I probably saved not. Before I, I know told you, you did. That. I know you did. I know. And actually, when I was on a float trip years ago, what you're saying happened to me as the back of my shirt or something got caught in a goddamn got caught branch. on a tree, and, and my buddy it. Ryan saved me. And they laugh. They tell the story to this day because I was like just so out of breath and whatever, you know, terrible situation. I mean, it could have been a serious get that tragedy. Shirt off. Why'd you have a shirt on for anyway? I, I you wear remember. a shirt, don't you? <laughs> no. Oh. And he's a guy that wears a shirt in a pool. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I, don't. I don't know why I would have, but it was like a tank probably, top or something. Well, you're probably getting burnt and you had to hide you your skin. You're getting burnt. I know. Dude. Yeah. I get, hey, Kate and I flipped a canoe, man. I've never worn a shirt, though, in a swimming pool in my life. I'm sure you haven't. Have you? Hell no. I would now, though, because I'm overweight. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't get too burnt. I, 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 tipped, I tanned. I tipped a canoe with Kate in the very last stretch. It was by our house. It was flooded a little bit. And I was drunk. <clears throat> and I stood up for two, half a second. I stood up to get something. And it flipped over so fucking fast. And all of a sudden, we're all in the water. Kate really? and I are, Kate and I are in the water. That's we're embarrassing, down. It was so, That's embarrassing. And so it's, it's so embarrassing. I find my phone. I hold it. I flip it back over. I grab Kate. I try to hold on to Kate. We're going towards what we're talking about. A tree down. I have to move over. All of a sudden, a boat comes up. I'm like, ah, ah. The guy comes up. Pulls up. We're in all the way up to our. Uh, I try to. I pull everything over to the side where it's ten feet of mud, snakes everywhere, shit everywhere. Just scraping the we, bottom. No, no, ten feet of. Mud. I'm gonna. I finally. I drag us over. I'm stepping in mud up to my fucking up to my waist. <laughs> Kate struggling. I hold her. So a guy comes over, helps us, gets me out of the water. I'm. I'm just mud everywhere. And he looks at me. He goes, "Hey, are you Cam Neely?" <laughs> I go, "Yes." <laughs> I go, yes, I am. And he saved us. And he, he took it. I got, I got all my, I saved my phone. We saved, the whole river was trashed with our beer cans, which mm. it looked so fucking embarrassing. Mm-hmm. So we got on this guy's boat. We towed the thing. It all worked out. We cleaned up all the shit. And he thought I was Cam Neely the whole time until he figured it out. Then he posts a post on Facebook saying he saved my life. Oh, my God. And I'm like, okay, I'll give you that. But, hey, water safety is very, very important. I want everyone to know that. Because if you're, if you're in Halifax, no matter where you are, PEI, a lot of our Canadian listeners, man, and even our listeners up, up, uh, you know, in the northern part of the country, 
Uh, they spend a lot of time on the water cam throughout the summer months, so yeah, make sure smart, you're uh, practicing uh, water safety. They're smart. Hey, if there's a nail on the ground, dude, my tire will find it. I, I, I run over more nails. I'm constantly having to get tires patched. So I woke up uh, super early in the morning. I got there right away when it opened, and I went to the dealership hoping to get my tire patch, but the nail is on the edge of the tire, so they can't fix it. So I went to a tire spot uh, here in town uh, where I, I know the, the guy, the Dustin Dobbs. I'll give him a shout-out from Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. And uh, so I get in, and they can't save the tire cam. So mm-hmm. now mm-hmm. my tire is getting fixed. I had to call Cam to Jeez. tell him to come pick me up, dude, the Uber driver. Uh, you need to clean the car out, dude. I don't give a shit. You need to clean that. You're going to come pick me up like that. You need it to. It smells you like need BO in there a little bit, don't <laughs> I don't know. I got shirts in the back. Hey, I don't, last I, time I, I don't was, care. Last time I was in a car with you, you started like, I think you you may have had a little COVID episode. I feel like, Andy, when you go into places, and I, I feel like people just rip you off, you know? Oh, you think they I do? just think they rip you the fuck <laughs> off. They're like, I'm going to get this motherfucker. No, like, no yeah, chance. I, I, no, no, but chance. You, then you put. I really, they were so nice to me, dude. Very, very nice. And they accommodated, like, they got me in right away, which is, it's a busy-ass place. That's a great business, man. They have a tire business? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I know more people who are just, they, they make a shit ton of money doing the most random businesses. You think that guy makes a shit ton of money? Guy who owns a tire? Owns a tire? Yeah. We own Dobbs. Well, yeah. of course. They yeah. Dobbs are everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah, but how do you own that? You got to have something to own that. So you think that's a simple thing. You're talking about like the guys that are changing the tires. They don't make shit. No. The guy that owns Dobbs. Let well, me yeah. give you an example. Mommy and, what does mommy and daddy do? Okay, but I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'll give you another example. This guy I know, um, he owns like a uh, credit card processing company. Okay, well, everybody has a credit card. Yeah, but like, I mean, how do you, how just, do you, own how do you just get involved in that Because business? you have money. To, to throw down, to be able to buy a business, and to be able to get what you need for it, and then you so every do the time right thing. there's a you use your credit card, you know there's a fee. Yeah, and that business has to pay the credit card company a fee. That's why some places I go, they try to tell me oh, it's down, or they if it's a small if it's a small purchase, they don't want you to use your debit card or whatever. They say hey, you have cash. They don't want you to use a debit card because they got to pay the fee, and the, you know it almost like washes it out. They don't make any money. This guy, so that fee, you always wonder where that fee goes. It goes right into my buddy's pocket. Good. He, uh, so he I need one of those. Built a successful business. And I need one Put the money in to get it. You got you to put money in to get this shit. Everything you see, somebody owns that company, man. Whether it's a little part that they, you use to build like a chair or any piece of furniture, whatever it is, man. Yeah. Hey, dude, and I'm selling a patio set right now. If anybody's interested in a patio set, I got a beautiful uh, patio table and chairs. And uh, I'm trying to sell it right why, now. Why? Why even talk about that? Because I got years. scammers reaching out to me, asking me for my. This one guy, asked me for all this personal information. I give him my email address. He told me he was gonna um, send me fifty dollars more than what I was asking, so he could hold it. So I would hold it for him. So he, could, you know, he asked me for my email address. I give him my email address, and he said. Um, well, it looks like your uh, Venmo account is set up on, as a business account. And I, he goes, look at the email. you got to fill out this information. And I said, I don't see an email. He goes, check your spam folder. And sure enough, it was right there. And I said, this guy's a scam artist. Then it happened to me again today as somebody else is reaching out. And they're scammers, too. How, how are these people getting away with it? You know where they're at? They're in Jamaica. Oh, really? Oh, a lot of these scam artists are in Jamaica because uh, when I've, I've gone to Jamaica several times, I actually uh, I love Jamaica, Cam. It's like mm-hmm. the perfect uh, place to go for uh, families, uh, for parents and uh, kids. They both both have great, great, a uh, great time there. I'll go to Jamaica. Oh, yeah. I don't give a fuck. But you see them on the side of the road, and my driver was telling me, hey, you know those people that call you asking you for your information, asking you for like all? He's like, those people right there, that that's them, man. Those are the scammers. And it's pretty easy to know what a scammer is. Like, you just got to figure it out. Hi, can I give you... Her name was Elizabeth Scott. Yeah. Should that have given Elizabeth it Smart. Remember her? <laughs> oh, God. Remember Elizabeth Smart? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember that fucking story with the, with the Mormons? With the baby or something. They're, no, no. They're like Mormons in Utah. And mm-hmm. they're like very religious. And they're like, hey, we're perfect. And me, 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 me. And this weirdo motherfucker, two daughters, mm-hmm. cute little daughters, young age. Steals them out of the window or something? Gump climbs in the window. Yeah. With the other little daughters, like, help takes Elizabeth Smart out. They can't find her forever. They think the parents did it, blah, blah, blah. Ugh. These psycho, scary-looking weirdos were two miles in the woods in this little cabin doing weird things to her for weeks who and weeks. Who was? The who's your fucking mountain people? The guy who stole her? Yes, during the woods Did the in this family cabin. know the guy? Yes, they worked on the house. 
It's always and so that. So did they arrest him? Fuck yeah. Both of them. The and, wife and, and the how dude. long did it take? It took a while. Remember that story in the 90s? Okay, listen to this, though. Like, because I love these stories. Remember that? And I, and I, and Why I, do you love I, those? I, That's I, horrifying. Well, I don't Jesus love the story. We got two daughters. I'm, and you have no protection at your fucking house either. What do you mean? So, what do you mean? What do I mean? I've got lots what are you of gonna protection. Do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? If somebody comes in your house. Well, I got a lot what of protection. What are you going to do, Andy? Like, Jesus. Ty. Yeah. Get him, Ty. I'm kind of serious. On I that. know what you got, but I'm like, listen, serious, don't man. let the people know. I listen. Well, I, then do something. I've got, I got plenty of I, things. I love your family. Homie. I got plenty of like, things. Like, I love your family. Like, Dude, do we're, something. Just know you come on my property. You're, on, you're under surveillance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's under surveillance these days, homie. I got it on video. They're, they know they're on video. They do. They're going to get the fuck out of there so fast your head will spin. Says who? Says criminals. That's what. Mm. Okay, so the other story, <laughs> that guy in Cleveland oh who my had God. that little girl. Yes, in the basement. So I don't love the three stories, but when these happen. Three of them. Three of them. And then they, like, bust it out. They bust it out. God, if I'm, man, dude. No, but for years. I know. It's like that Emo's guy here in town that had that little girl. And Kirkwood. Kid. And Kirkwood. two of them. He had them for, like, Several years. And they found, oh, God almighty. So and those stories, right I there. just get, like, very, like, and most I'd of, love to cover those, actually. And most of those stories, it's always a guy that's worked on your house, mm-hmm. that lives nearby, that's surveillance your coming and goings, and they figure it out, and they plan it out, and they get you. Are they that smart? Yes. No, Criminals he, are smart, he just stole, so you know. He stole the kid from, like, an, a, a country, uh, Richwoods or something like that, way out of town, probably where you the grew Cleveland? up. Cleveland no, one? No, the guy here, the, the emo, oh, the yeah, pizza that, driver. Yeah, yeah. And he got him. He, he's in Kirkwood, and he was there there for ten years. But he's playing with other kids. And he let stuff. him, and that's when they escape. They'll be like, they'll get so traumatized, and like, that's my leader. I listen to him. Okay, I'm a young kid, I, and all of a sudden they'll go out, and the, they'll get a little bit more loosey goosey with the kids when they're kidnapping them, and the kid will finally like something will pop in his head, like, wait a minute, this isn't normal. Wait, I am. Well, kidnapped. he knows it's not normal. From you the get brainwashed, Andy. Listen, yeah, at the beginning. But then you get brainwashed and brainwashed and brainwashed. You're like, wait, I got this is my leader. I got, and you just you can't figure it out until you do. And it's usually when they give them a little bit of like a little bit of leeway, and the kids are like, wait a minute, I, this is not normal, and they bounce out and they start mm-hmm. screaming and they get caught. It's like once you take your eye off yeah. them, there for I know a because second. they get a little bit little more. Oh, Andy. Oh God. Oh man, I hate that. I hate it so much. And it's so always... his name was Michael Devlin. If people want to look that up, that was who the name the of the guy who again? stole the kid. Yeah, and. Um, and then he died in prison. Oh, he got motherfucked up, boy. Like, you the think, prisoners don't mess around with those Hey, I always said Andy, would, if Andy's in prison, he's going to be a hair braider, you know? But these mother... <laughs> you get tortured in prison. But these guys... A hair braider? He'd be a hair braider in prison. Is that what they have? They have those? Yeah. I don't know they, how to braid hair, do they? Oh, you'll learn, brother. <laughs> <laughs> They'll force you. you you're going to learn a lot of new things in prison, Andy. I'm not going. No, you're not. You're not going. But if you did... Hair braiding is going to be okay. Your that, next that's occupation. not that is not just so you know. But the point is, uh, but yeah, man, this is it's so creepy, it's so weird. I get worried about Kate at our old old house because we live right by Highway 44, basically, and there's a little park right there that 250,000 people a year go to. And Kate would run down there with her headphones on. Oh, yeah, and I just you know, and, and, and I got listen. Kate runs down. She's going to the park. There's, a, there's an on-ramp that goes right to Highway 44. And you get on Highway 44, you can go anywhere the fuck you want. You can get on 270 and go to Chicago. You can go down to Memphis. Like, there's a corridor right there in St. Louis, seven miles from my house, where you can go any direction you want. And that's why all the drugs come up 44, all the meth from fucking... In, your, in your neighborhood? Well, it's just right up Highway 44, Highway 40. So anyway, Kate, Kate's like running, and I'm like, it just scares me. Because Kate could run on the side of the road there with her headphones on. And a car could pull up and grab her and throw her in the van. No. So, what are you gonna say? You want some candy or whatever? No, no, no. She wouldn't even know. You pull up right behind her. She's on. Her, she's jog, jogging with her in headphones like a on. Van. Yes, and grab her. She's a hundred pounds. Andy, you could pick her up, kind of. You could grab Kate and throw her right in. <laughs> Gone. Right on the highway. Gonzo. So I'm like, I don't want you no, with your headphones. My on. wife is running around too, I know, all the dude. time. I know. It's cr- it's scary, man. Like, I'm not, like, a hypochondriac, but on the other hand, it's like... Would your dogs protect her? Fuck yeah. I, I don't see those dogs The babies, being... the little babies, they'll bark. Like, they're not going to bite you. Mm-hmm. But if somebody came to my house, they're going to bark. They're going to be like, what are you doing? You know? Did but you I got see that video house, brother. of that mountain lion that came up on the porch of that little-ass dog? 
Oh, yeah. I think I did. And a little dog, and the lady is, like, yelling for the dog to get back. It was a glass no, door. Was, yeah. And the, the mountain lion, it was huge. Yeah, man. They'll get, they'll get And it you. came all the way up to the door. It was a glass door. I can't believe that it didn't break through the glass. Like, how did that not happen? It didn't want to break through the glass, Andy. That, that glass is pretty thick. Side side, Those little sliding glass doors are pretty thick. Like, you'd have to run at a full speed to break through it. I don't know if the mountain lion's up for that. But less like you go on these trips in, in Montana and stuff, you're like, I didn't see any mountain lions, but they saw you. Oh, really? Fuck, yeah. You yes. told me because I didn't see any snakes in the river. That they, they saw, saw you, me. though. You're damn right. You didn't see them, but no. they saw you. Where were they? Like, They're everywhere. I mean, you just think they were, like, looking at me? Fucking like, right. Are they under my under my raft? No. It they don't swim si- underwater. It was a six-person raft. It was a very, I know, very I know what it is, raft. but they, they don't swim underwater. They won't bite you underwater. But they swim fast as shit, and they'll crawl right up on that raft. They're water moccasins. Oh, I didn't see them on the raft. Yeah, Andy, because you weren't looking, but they're there. You think that you think I had a snake on the raft? No. No, I don't. <laughs> but it can crawl up. Look, it could crawl right up on your raft, and you're like, ah, panic mode. But it didn't do that. But if they're all on the side of the banks, dude. Mm-hmm. Go look a little closer. You see a little tread in the water. Yeah. That's a snake flying across. Hey, we have a wonderful God lady damn. who uh, works next to us here in our, uh, in our studio, and she does, like, body work. And stuff like that. And it's very, very, um, very uh, aggressive treatment. Uh, it's very therapeutic. It's very, very good. She's very successful. What the hell are you talking and about? And she asked me last week if I would be a, uh, if she could experiment on me because she was trying to see how certain muscles um, react <laughs> to certain Jesus. different types of treatment. And then she did Cam and whatever. And she asked Cam. <laughs> She said, and they're very peaceful. She's like, she looks oh, like she looks like oh, the ice queen. Oh, she lovely just, woman. She's like living in like the rainforest. Like yeah. water is just pouring she's on majestic. her, and she could never be happier. She's majestic. Like a rainbow yeah. is just constantly shining. She's one over big rainbow. Her. Oh my god, <laughs> she is, and she's just wonderful, and very talented. Mm-hmm. Um, but she said to Cam, she's like, so do you do you ever calm down? Like, I was like, d- 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 are you able to calm down? She was trying to like get you to like because you were talking about your body being be- very yeah. tight. There's something that she tried on me. She had no problem with it. Took two seconds. And all of a sudden, it's Cam's turn. And she's, like, full on, like, giving him, like, uh, more extensive treatment than I had. And I'm like, well, why is he getting that treatment? I didn't get it. She said, because I was able to function properly. And she said, your body was too tight that you couldn't function. So she was trying to get down to the bottom of it. And she was just wondering yeah, if yeah, you're... Yeah, if yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I'm Jack are, are you're you, not. Are you constantly going a th- thousand miles yes, an hour? Yes, I always am. 100%. <laughs> That's why things work. So we're trying to get you to want calm me, want down me to now. slow me down a little bit and <laughs> no. see if this works? So now we're going to try to get you to slow down a little bit. Hi. <laughs> what else is going on, Andy? <laughs> I'm normal now. Well, what would you like to know? So, did you feel? Be- <laughs> did you the fuck out of here? Did you feel better after your uh, treatment? Man, I'm always feel weird around women. You kept saying, "Oh my god, I smell." I so do. Bad. I'm I just sweating. You're, you're I, scaring okay, her. Here's what happened. She's like, "Can you come in here real quick? I need to see both." Well, of you. She, yes, and I'm she like, "Oh, I'm like, what's up?" She's like, "I need to see Andy." <laughs> You know, she goes, I want to see both of you right now at the same time. She's like, I didn't mean it like that. Oh, my God. I thought she was going to complain about your cussing or something. Or, or us so being too. loud. I know. And her clients That's complaining about us. I was really worried because about that. Because, Cam, tell the, tell the list, like, everyone in the building. They all know they us. All they, know. They, they all know us. They all know they, us. They, they know when we're here. <laughs> they love us, I guess. <laughs> but she goes, I, want, I need you at the same time. I'm like, oh, shit. She's pissed at us. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, okay, take your shoes off. So sweet. And I go, oh, my shoes. Oh, man. I know. <sighs> Because my feet smell. I and know, so I, I get so... And you're sweating. I took a picture. Oh, and God. put it out there. Uh, and I'm like, the last thing I want to do is take my shoes off while she's touching my feet. When it's No, you asked if you could go change your shirt, I put you? deodorant on. Oh, no. You said... I put deodorant Cam on. Cam goes, can I go put deodorant on well, real quick? Andy. <laughs> do you I carry be, it with you yes, everywhere you go? God damn right. I have to I have to put deodorant... She's like, okay, take your shoes... I'm like, oh, God. And that to take your shoes off to me is like, oh, it's guaranteed stankville. <laughs> And I'm like, this poor, lovely, lovely woman is going to try to touch. She's so pure. She's just tr- pure. She's a pure. She's the ice yeah, queen. Yeah, you can't infect that. And she touches my foot, and I'm like, fuck. And then I start sweating even more because I'm nervous and I smell bad. And this whole this whole thing, I'm a disaster, dude. I I, I can't. I can't even get my. I, I don't know. I don't like. I don't uh, take your shoes off real quick. I'm like that to me is like, yeah, whoa. No, you don't you want had that. a problem with that. I know. Yeah, you were very uncomfortable. And then he got on the. Uh, 
on the uh, on the table, and she just started doing things that that I, that's the treatment I wasn't getting. But then yeah, she told me it was because my 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 uh, flexibility. Yeah, you weren't an athlete. Well, no, my flexibility oh. was was already in in you know, didn't like require. It's like grabbing a twelve year old boy and be like, "Here, you're flexible." It's like Andy, like he's like the same build. You had no hip problems. You had no nothing. No, I've happened got serious hip problems. I've got major hip flexors from like skating and stuff like. I mean, oh, honestly, yeah. from like from power skating. skating. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. A nice video of uh, Sidney Crosby, by the way. Why are you trying to bully the kid? Like he's like 18 years old. Like, did you do that to the kids who came into the league? Like, you no. try to intimidate those young guys? Fuck yeah. Of course I did. I'd be a little nice. You no, know, he came after me, and I put my hands up like, "Whoa, look at that!" I drew a penalty, and I think we scored in the power I play. I think it was him. you and Brooks Orpik who got I, I hit him tangled up. I got I hit him pretty hard. I always like Brooks Orpik, but I, I heard a lot of people kind of chirping him throughout the course of his career because he would lay some devastating yeah, hits and never Crime fight. Is that bad to do? Hell yeah, dude! It's gutless. He'll explain, knock guys off. Like, what that. happened? Well, it's just you know, but he was a good player, man. I like very Brooks, good dude. player. I like Cromwell too. Um, Stanley but, Cup winners. But I like hitting those guys, man. I, I, I keep, I'll hit you too. and But he'll rock you and not step up and be like, what happened? Oh, what happened? You know, that like the mm-hmm. like what fucking bug-eyed motherfucking Kadri does. When he when he runs into a goal, he's like, ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Like, shut up. I know. Just know, well, we how, all know. How, how you should did. you react? Then? Like, yeah, fuck, I got you. Like, I got you. Be like, what's fuck up? Me. Like, I got Like, whoa, whoa, sorry, push me in. But they go, I didn't do it. I just cross checked him in the back and from behind. Like, I don't, what, what did I do? Like that bug eye, like, oh, I'm a victim. Oh, fuck yourself. There's another video of you just completely going like in a rage, like, like an animal. When? On Henrik Lundqvist, like a settle. What are you oh, screaming? Yeah. What were you saying to him? I love your beautiful hair. I want to hang out with you, <laughs> you lovely person. <laughs> like, where are you going tonight? You know, I'll hang out with Crosby you. Crosby got the penalty on that play. Did you get a penalty too? No. I drew penalties, dude. I didn't take penalties, man. Unless I put you down mm-hmm. with an elbow. It was on the Pittsburgh bench, though. Like, th- th- that entire bench must have been yelling at you, man. They didn't say one word to me. No one chirped me, dude. Even the when only, even when Crosby is like, nah. The only guys that I chirped me. I think some of Crosby's teammates early in his career probably got him. annoyed. They're like, what are you doing with to him? his antics. Like, now I'm going to go fucking get right. pissed at somebody else. Right. And I'm going to get them. And they didn't have any heavies at that time, dude. They didn't have any heavyweights in 2005. No, Godzi came later on. They didn't have. I tortured them, and they. I'd go out there with Crosby all the time. Did they have what's his name? Uh, who came on with us? Played with the Flyers, dude. Um, come on, our boy, uh, smaller guy, your size, but tough. Aaron Ashley. Aaron Ashley. Nope. Ashley was playing for the Islanders. They didn't have any heavies, dude. And Cro- I hit Crosby one time, where I rode him against the glass so hard, and he comes behind me. It's in the paper. He cross checks me from behind, right in the back of the head. And I went, well, bam, and, and it's in the paper the next day. And I, I was thinking maybe that was the same play you're talking no, about. No, it's a different one. I, I used to run the shit out of him. It was really Why bizarre. are you on the ice when he's on He the put ice. me on the ice. They put me on the ice against him. I mean, there was a video I that was out God. the other day. Like, you're getting in a fight, and, like, Oshi had the puck in the offensive end, and the whistle blew. I'm like, that's terrible coaching. It, that, it, it that's completely- not good to do. It killed the play. That's not good to do. That could have been a scoring chance. And, and why are you fighting when who, he has the puck on the it? offensive end? I don't know. Oh, sh- uh, Yeah, I, I, that's not good to do. Like, a guy's on a breakaway and you're fighting. And, hey, here's the worst. He wasn't on a breakaway, but I hear Okay, I hear but you know saying. what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. say a guy's on a breakaway. You were actually in front of the net. He was up top what, with, with the puck. What was I doing? He's probably, like pissed. Have it? Yeah, he'll be okay. That the whistle blew? But the, here's what I never did, though. If a guy's on a breakaway, where all of a sudden you're on a breakaway, and Two guys start fighting. They blow the whistle down, and the fight's a joke. And you're like, well, I, just you, I don't see that too often. It happens here. A and there. breakaway, or like a two on one. Yeah, like an odd man. Okay, rush. Scoring chance. Whatever. Yeah, scoring yeah, chance. Yeah, and all of a sudden, yeah. two dipshits start fighting. Yeah, because they don't, <clears throat> they're not aware of what's going on. Mm-hmm. And they throw one punch, and they both fall. And you had two on one. Yeah, don't do that. What were you saying to Lundqvist? I, I don't appreciate you talking to him like that. Here's what happens when you chirp a goalie, just so everybody knows. So Avery does a thing in front of Marty Berdour. Does a thing where he's a, they they wrote a rule about it. You can't do it. Oh, where he's yeah. We talked front. to him about that. And then fucking my boy and Marty and my boy Colin White came in. I love Whitey. We gotta get him on. Mm-hmm. He can't. He's crazy. I love him. Why you get some? And so I was like, yeah, I talk a young unquist. So I'm like, I'm gonna fuck you. I'm gonna motherfuck you. Blah 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 blah. blah. And then I go out there, and Colt Nor comes out to me, and I go start going him, and he gets his left and catches me on the temple. And, oh. I go down. and so I just look like an asshole. I go and I fucking chirp this <laughs> handsome, handsome, beautiful, majestic human being. 
And then I'm like, I'm gonna beat you. I'm not gonna beat him. He up. was yelling back at yeah, you. He, Could you was, hear him or no? No. But I'm like, it was in whatever. And like, you know, I'm not gonna beat up Henry Long. I'm not gonna do that. I don't do that to I don't I'm not a bully like that. I only bully you, Andy, according to some people. But I, I'm like, oh, I just jinxed myself. And then Colt Nor came out and goes, No, 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 daddy's home. And he caught me with a fucking left and I went down. Is that what he said? Nah. Daddy's home. Nah, I said that again. Uh, who, why, why oh, you know how I got that? Yeah. Okay, so and we're playing against uh, Edmonton one time, you know. And me and Reaver were on the same line. Me and Reeves. And big boy. Who do you think I'm talking about? Who was I scared of a little bit? Oh, on Edmonton. The boogeyman. Oh, no. on Edmonton. On McIntyre, Edmonton. maybe? Yeah. Yeah. So Stevie Mack comes up to Reaver and I on a face-off. I'm running, guys. And he goes, <laughs> one-legged stop. You know, <laughs> the one-legged, you know. warm up? The T. No, no, no. And a face-off in our own zone. Oh. He does a come up to both of us because we're both on one side. And he does a t- the T stop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he looks at both of us and goes, Daddy's home. <laughs> and Reaver looks at me. I go, <laughs> I go uh. That dude, I love. He listens to everything, by the way. McIntyre. We love him. We got to get his ass on. And I'm like, uh. And we didn't fight. I already fought uh, God, I, I, Vandermeer that night anyway. But Reaver, of course, turned him down. But uh, no offense, Reaver, I love you. But you're turning Mac down at that point. He's the heavy. He's like the he's like the heavyweight of the he world. He was the champ. <laughs> I'd say Stevie McIntyre. No, I'm saying Reaver is the oh, champ get out here. in the league today. Now he is, and I, it wasn't back then. <laughs> he wasn't back then. He fought McGratton here and there, but eh, you know, it's all good. How'd he do against McGratton? Pretty good. Yeah, Reaver's big. Reaver guy. can throw. Him. He can throw hard, dude. Yeah. He didn't like to get hit. But Stevie McIntyre, it, for a while there, was the most intimidating guy on the ice. Mm-hmm. Him and Biggie. Were the most intimidating, and then he got, got Goddard, and then he got Orzy, and he got some buys. How, Mac- how many games did McIntyre? Uh, I say about two hundred, and he got rocked. He got his over the bowl bro- broken by Goddard. Really? Goddard, let me give you a little, a little breakdown. All y'all out there, you love tough guys. Eric Goddard is one of the most toughest motherfuckers you'll ever that ever played the game. He's a giant slayer. Quote me on that. Eric Goddard's a giant slayer. What do you think I mean by that? Um, he will slay you, he and, will, he's, and no, he's massive. He knocked out Boogie, knocked him out. Eric Goddard, when he was playing for Calgary, knocked out Boogie Man, mm. fucked him up, and he broke goddamn Stevie McIntyre's over the bone. Eric Goddard's knocked out monsters, and he doesn't get the credit he deserves. I talked to him, and I want him on the pot. He's like, man, I'm not good at those. I go, dude, you'll be fine. I go, you'll be fine, dude. We, we love you. Like, we're going to pump your tight. He went through some hardcore shit. Mm-hmm. Like, I gave Eric Goddard a shout-out. He's a fucking giant slayer. He's underrated, and he went toe-to-toe with everybody, and he could throw with both hands. Mm-hmm. Love that guy. You hear about this uh, Michigan coach, Mel Pearson? Yeah, I did. Fired, dude. So what do you do? And he's, like a, he creepy? he's a recruiting motherfucker. I mean, this guy gets... Gets all the big boys? All, I mean, well, the last couple of years. They haven't won a championship yet, but he gets all these big boys, you know? He's had a bunch of first-round picks. Yeah. You know, he's got a couple of the Hughes brothers and... Okay. You know, whatever. He's, he's had a lot of success recruiting. Um, is, he, is he fucking Pepe Le Pew? Owen Power, you know, who went first yes. overall. Went Verniers, uh, who what, went third overall to Seattle. I mean, there's just been a bunch of guys that have come through there. Brendan Brisson, <laughs> a bunch of guys. So he gets fired. Uh, I guess, you know, if you remember, I mean, you probably don't even know this or remember, but like back in 2021, uh, right before the NCAA tournament, Michigan, who was considered a, a, a favorite, you know, at least one of the favorites, certainly a contender to win the national championship, loaded with talent, and they were forced to miss the NCAA tournament because of COVID cases and whatever. And I think the way I looked at it was like, wow, this is, of course, the NCAA not letting them play because they got a couple of COVID cases. But then you hear, like, talking to some players, they got kicked out of the tournament because he had them lie on their forms. And I was told by a player about saying what? that they didn't have COVID or something, whatever. I don't know what they put. I mean, they're not going to say they do have COVID. So I would imagine on the forums no they shit. said they don't have it. I don't know. Or said that I mean, they were tested, tested, said they were tested, <laughs> you know. And I listen, I, I find it hard to believe he's the only coach that did this, though. No shit. I bet you there's a number of coaches that did it. In fact, I know of an NHL team uh, who uh, – a player who played with COVID when the team knew he had COVID. So what? Oh, I'm just saying. So what? I'm just saying. So don't assume that that, that doesn't go you. on. How about funny is NFL, too, by the way, mm-hmm. whenever they have all these co- – and all of a sudden the playoffs come, pff, no one's mm-hmm. no one has it anymore. No, I know. Remember a couple years ago, no, it's like it just, funny how that it works. It just went away. It just went away. I, so that's not – I'm not looking to get into the COVID conversation because it is what it is, but 
this guy apparently created a toxic environment for his players. And I mean, but he's getting all these big dogs. Let me tell you what somebody I talked to. So what's the point of it? What, I don't. He's fired. It's a okay. big story in hockey right now. Well, was he creepy to chicks and shit? Nobody really knows exactly what that means. So when they throw that out there about you know female staffers being you know, unco- that, you know, I, I don't, I don't know what I don't, get I don't know what it means. Like you know, creepy ass and, old and, man. And actually, asking a player about that, the player said, "I don't really know about that part in particular." But everything else that you're hearing about, he says, is true. And he said the players didn't really know the details with the female staffers and stuff like that. He said it was think, uh, he thinks they were just treated poorly, and Mel hit it and didn't want to do anything to change it. The COVID stuff, he said the coach, and I remember the coach having like a press conference being like, this is unfair to the players, and they gave it their all. We appreciate all the support that we're getting from the fans. This player is saying that the coach got them kicked out of the NCAA tournament because he made them lie on the COVID questionnaires. That sucks. He said, otherwise, they would have played in that round of 16 back in 2021. He said, at the end of the day, the guys weren't comfortable going to the rink because you didn't know what they were going, what he was going to do or what he was going to say and how you were going to be treated by the coach. He goes, some days everything was good, and others, the coach would just go off on guys for no reason. No, whatever with that. I mean, like, uh, the, 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 welcome these, to the real world on that one. You think? How you get treated? Some days you get treated great, and some days you get treated like shit. Yeah, that's about the real world. Yeah. Now, the lying, making kids lie about COVID, I get. I said so what earlier because if I'm a coach and the kids are okay, I'm like, yeah, I want to goddamn, I, I want them to play. They're going to be okay. They're healthy. I, mm-hmm. I get that. And now we even know more that that was okay to do. But, but man, you're making kids lie. That's not good, okay? Like, it's not good. Aren't you good enough to have a team where maybe a couple of kids can't play? But you have kids lie. That's that's not right. healthy, okay? And so he I got get that. them kicked out of the tournament. Well, that's stupid. And then these kids yeah. couldn't. And I'm sure, that obviously, there were seniors on the team who will never get that chance ever again. I get you. And they had a chance to win a national well, then championship. Well, he's a fucking idiot. But you know what the questions are, probably. You know, have you been exposed? Have you been around somebody that's been exposed? Have you been to a yes, foreign country? Yes, we all country? have. You know, all <laughs> that stuff. Every second of the day. I would imagine day. the questionnaire was something like that. Yeah. But, I mean, when players are saying, hey... Right, now this, uh, this this new coach who's taken over, who was an assistant last year, uh, from what I understand, uh, what I'm being told, is that um, they're really happy that what is happening now with the guy that's taken over. They love the new coach. They're happy he got the job. And the players are way more comfortable now as he trusts the players and they trust him. So now whatever. I, I mean, listen, here, here, here's what I'm saying. Because you can say, well, yeah, it's like the real world and whatever. And I kind of. But nobody likes to be treated like shit. No not. one likes to be talked down to. No shit. No one likes to be ripped or torn to no. shreds. Nope. And if you think as a coach, if you can still get away with that, man, you're not going to be able to. And that's fine. And that's completely fair. But it's still you re- wouldn't handle that if you work with somebody. We used to work for somebody who no. he didn't treat us like what that. What we do? But he treated other people. What like What we that. do? We sucked it up, and now look at us. Well, yeah, we're fucking kicking our feet up, fucking looking at our badass houses. But he didn't talk to me like that. He didn't talk to you like that. No, but he, but t- he treated. He took all my money away from me. Yeah, he but, fucking scammed me. But you know, he treated other people like shit too. It's fucking right, I know. And it, I almost fought the guy in front of a full restaurant with another female. What did that you, I was working? Oh with my god! Because she, he was treating her like shit, and I didn't like it. What'd you do? It was embarrassing. Put it that way. It was did, about three years did ago. Did you like get up and make a scene? Yes. No, you didn't. Yes, I did, Andy. It was bad. You know, as as much... I just stuck up for her. Okay. She was recording the whole thing, by the way. Was she? Yep. Okay, as much as Cam, like, um, made a living fighting and all this stuff, and he's like this Neanderthal who's got a Tall. very dirty... Neanderthal. Ne- so you know. He's got a very dirty car. Um, he, he picked me up in a dirty car today. He's my Uber that. driver, by the way. My you, you are my Uber driver. It's my truck. Um, your windshield's cracked, by the way. I'm trying yeah, to... Yeah, Twister I'm, will fix it. I'm trying to get Twister to fix that for you. <laughs> Um, I mean, I Twister, if he fixes my we're fucking party. I man. can't see you get in that in that state of mind where you would like fight somebody inside a restaurant. It was not healthy. I don't like to do that anymore. But I got to stick up for myself, and I got to stick well, up for, for my partner. Well, for a female too, yeah. She, they was treating her like shit. I'm part of that. She was working for me. So what'd you do? Like you got up and like, got what the fuck bed? you say? What the fuck you say? You fuck. You fucked me on this. You fucked me on that. Don't you fucking do. Really? Yes. It's I mean, not I, good. I mean, you're like, don't fuck with me. Were you spitting all over the yeah, place? Yeah, dude, I was fucking psycho. Calm bro. down. Can no, we get I'm can just, we get Cam some water I'm for okay. God's sake? You're scaring I'm everybody. I'm okay. <laughs> okay, you're I'm okay. scaring you're like, me. I'm okay. 
I'm just giving you an example of what yeah. I said to him. You need like a, a wet towel or anything? He fucking drove me crazy. Oh I almost killed him. You got that mad. Oh, God, yeah, dude. Okay, well, I'm glad uh, I'm glad we got you know we got through He that. was taking my money away from me. He mm-hmm. was forcing me to have all my goddamn, my buddies that have money, sponsor shit. And I'm like, what, what, what? I'm like, is this what the, is this what the radio world? I'm like, fuck me, man. Mm. So anyway. It's all good, we, is, but here's the bottom line. Hmm. Not everybody's going to treat you right. Not everybody's going to treat you with, with, with respect. That is not the real world. It's not this fucking utopia. Like, oh, everybody happy. Oh. No, it doesn't work that way. You got to figure out how to get out of that jam, yeah. and you got to do it the right way. You don't you don't cuss like I did with the guy. I couldn't help myself at that particular moment. Yeah. It was a little bit embarrassing. Nothing happened because of it. No one filmed it, mm-hmm. although she was recording. But, but it just you don't want to get to that point. But you might get to that point. And when you do get to that point, you got to take a deep breath and figure it out. This is a real world, Andy. Yes. This isn't fantasy fuck land. No, the real and world. fucking la la yeah, land yeah. like you live in. Okay. This is a real fucking. <laughs> but world. I will say this: I think I think athletes in other sports, at least growing up, because I played football too. I played yeah, both know. both sides Jesus of the ball. Jesus Christ cornerback and wide receiver. Well, they would have thrown the ball to you <laughs> every goddamn play. Cam, I Go was a, little, I was little, a the ball slow, hawk, little slow guy. Three interceptions and a two point conversion. My yeah. freshman year. Okay. So anyway, but like I think we were conditioned as football players, and in it was different, like in hockey. Although maybe when you were a little bit younger, Don Morrow? yeah, like Are you kidding? You were just conditioned <laughs> to deal with no that. shit. And I still see Don. I was talking to him the Love other day. Him. Oh my god, he tortured me. A lot of people. He tortured me. A lot. And of I people. was the big boy of the team. Yeah, and I'd go toe to toe with him. Mm-hmm. Then he'd make me do the but crawl. But you played back football forth. too. You know how yeah, those right. football coaches were. And though, they tortured man. me too. And their job was to get in your face and just bring you pound you down into the dirt every single day. I tried day. to fight a coach in, in class one time. And I got oh my five God. games for it. I got five. Why are you fighting everybody? Because he's calling me out because I just quit football and to play hockey. He didn't mm-hmm. understand what hockey was. I go, Dude, no. We I, have a lot of and you know what happened? Oh Jesus. And you know what happened? The football coaches at Eureka were so pissed at me. Uh-huh. Cause I was crushing guys. I was doing good. I'm an athlete. I was fast. They could they can work with me and mold me into something. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to leave practice to go to hockey practice. They don't. They didn't get it. That. So what I what I do? I quit football. Almost fought the coach. Got suspended for five games. And you know what I did? I called the cross country coach. I and I go, can I get in shape and run cross country with Hold you? On. And so I ran Why cross did you country. Get suspended. Because I tried to fight him in class. What do you, mean you tried to fight him. Like, like you're like, let's go and because I come into because I'll explain. I come into class. Oh, here's the quitter. Oh my God! Here's the quitter. I go. Would you, Is you this know, like driver's I go, you head? I go. You don't know. Yeah, or it's social stuff because you know the coaches had oh, like yeah. this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I go. And they dress like coaches. I go. You don't. Yeah, with the tight sh- pants. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 the bike. The bike pants. They're not. Andy, a hundred percent. They're not bike shorts. Jacked. But they were. The brand was bike. Yep. Jacked. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, here's the quitter. The three buttons. What the <laughs> fuck? Here. I go. You don't know shit. What'd you say? You. Co- you don't know shit. I'm playing hockey. What the fuck? How I old get, are you? 15. Freshman? Yep. 15, 16. Were you, talk, go, you, were you, were you, were you talking to girls yet? Back oh, then? Jesus. I, I wanted to be something so bad. <laughs> I, I was poor. My parents didn't have that much money at the time at all. Mm-hmm. I had to wear the same fucking shirt once in a while. You know, like I just, not that bad, but mm-hmm. I wanted to be cool and I wanted to do something. No one understand the hockey thing yet. No. If we we're in Canada, they saw me playing. I'd be fucked. But then I'm like, I was still big and strong, and like you know, like. I, but I was Canada, so cocky. I know. I was so cocky because no one understood what I was doing. But I quit football, and he tortured me, and I was I almost fucking fought him. And then I ran cross country, mm-hmm. and all the football coaches were like, "Is that where you met your wife?" No. All the football coaches were like, "What the fuck is he doing?" So he doesn't play football because we thought he was lazy. But he's still now he's getting tortured and running six miles a day in cross country to stay in shape for what? Yeah, hockey. So now they're like, whoa. So why'd you and quit And then all of a sudden I made you the NHL. They're like, what's up? Why'd you quit football? You didn't want to get hurt? No, I had hockey practice. Oh. Either you play yeah, football. But how could you go to cross country? Because I could, could, I could, doesn't matter. I could be like, I'm going today. I got hockey practice. Go ahead, leave. Coach Kimball giving you a shout out. Stewie Kimball, you're an awesome dude too. They gave me, an, I go, I have to leave for hockey practice. So they, they were me, more flexible. Fuck yeah. Because Cam, and I'm not, I'm not bullshitting you, because I did play football. And I remember lying to the coach that I had a doctor's appointment. Of course you did. When I really, we had a new hockey coach, and the coach was like, dude, I need you to make one tryout. Like, it's not fair to everybody else. you got to be at least one of course. tryout. Oh, you were so good, eh? <laughs> Jesus, Andy. You are, I don't think that you are. Cam, he wasn't going to cut You're oblivious me. to what no. really happened in your life, <laughs> no. I think. No, he wasn't going to cut me, but you had to make one, one tryout. 
So and he was a big power forward, Brody. So no skill guy. I'm Swedish, remember? So no, you're not. So on the loud <laughs> on the loudspeaker at the, the the announcements at the end of the day, yeah. they were like hockey practice, our try tryouts today, blah blah blah, at Creefcore Ice Rink. All of a sudden, a few minutes later, I'm in Miss like Mr. Shuey's class, and the football coach, the head varsity coach. Comes into the room and says he needs to talk to me. We go into the room next door. He said, "I mean, if I you you better show up to practice today. If you don't, you're off the team." Oh, that must have been a really so hardcore I, I day didn't, for the guys. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't go to football practice. Yeah. Okay. And so mm-hmm. I went to hockey practice, and I remember the coach saying, "Hey, I think you made the right decision." I went and talked to the football coach the next day. He said, "Well, let me think about it." He made me go to practice for like two weeks straight. Fully dressed out and sit out, like stand on the sideline, never participate in practice. Oh yeah, and get the crowd going like yeah. No, it's like practice. I, I could, Andy was one of the guys with the f- football jerseys on on the sideline with no pads on. Oh yeah, like the cheerleader. <laughs> oh, those guys. <laughs> you know. Oh, about. the guy at the end of the bench you in the basketball games. You know what I'm talking about. Who are like flipping out? Like, with yeah, every, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. and they look at the crowd like yeah. let's get up. And meanwhile, you don't no. even have equipment on. No. You're just a cheerleader. No, it was not, that was not for me. So I you, wrestled. So though, eventually, too. I, quit. I still wrestled. I told Ty that the other day. Dude, Dude get him into that. I, Ty asked me the other day get him if, into wrestling. if you played in the NHL. And so I was telling him, I go, you want to see a video? <laughs> I wish my wife recorded it. She was, she was right there. What? He's like, oh, my God. He's so angry. Who? You, Ty. Oh, <laughs> he was like, oh, he, oh, my God. He's, oh, my God. He's so angry. He's so mad. Oh, my. He was like, oh, my mangy your face. highlight video is like oh, not Jesus. the typical highlight video you're showing of somebody <laughs> where they're like scoring goals, two on one breakaways. Yours, you're like, yeah, it's very violent. Well, don't show him that yet. Oh my God. It was hilarious. Hilarious. I wish I would have recorded it's that. It's not good for kids to see what I did though. Cause I didn't. No? Well, it's so well, foreign. Well, you can't do it anymore. These kids don't see that. I know. When they watch hockey, they're not seeing that. Killing guys, but he was dying laughing. That's where I saw the video of you and Lundquist. Like, yeah. he's like, "Oh man, he's yelling at the goalie." Yeah, and then I got buckled. Don't yell at goalies. It, it's just like when you act tough like that, and you're like, "Fuck you, bid, bid, bid. Something always bites in the ass. I never got chirped because I didn't really. Well, he's very scared you of you. Can, why? That way, he's very scared. Well, he's terrified, be. actually. You should be scared of me too. <laughs> okay, a couple more things I want to get into before Pat Rubik, the little ball of hate. Yeah, great. Great interview. Great interview. Great interview, man. Good job on that, by the way. Oh, on the interview? No. Well, yeah. I mean, just good job of getting him. Oh. You got him. Yeah, Patty. Yeah. Well, he's a big dick. I look at Pat Verbeek, and I'm like, if he's not a GM, I don't know if he's doing interviews like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I feel like he maybe he feels a little more obligated to, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, he doesn't have to do them. Yeah, I know. Like, he's, guys- he, he doesn't, even when you're a GM, you don't have to talk to do interviews and stuff like that. But I, I do think it's important when you're in a non-traditional market and you're a, a manager, I think it's important to, to be out there and to like bring attention to your team and your organization. Hey, no. If I'm the owner and I'm paying my GM and I'm in like a non-traditional market where you have to compete with the other sports and the other teams in your market, I'm like, listen, we need somebody to be a face. Now you got to run the team, but we also need you to be a little bit visible because you know we 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 need the attention too. It can't just be about we can't be behind USC and UCLA football, you know. Well, you're gonna be a, behind them no matter what. But you know what I'm saying? No, I don't because you're gonna be behind them no matter what. But if I'm, but the people in Anaheim have no clue who Pat Verbeek is. Mm-hmm. They have no clue. But now if they listen to they listen to the podcast, now you can be like, oh, this guy was a fucking well, the hardcore should be a Hall do. of Famer. Yeah, the hardcore fans. You know. Because they certainly remember. This guy was a very loud player. Um listen, I, and, and very successful player too, man. He played a long time. He did. Damn. The Hall of Fame thing, I just don't understand how these guys oh. just can't get the in. Tough, like the tough guys that had like a thousand point over a thousand points. Like how are the old school guys in the NHL who are in the Hall of Fame? Who played against this guy for twenty years? Not how are like, how are they know. not like? Listen, get this guy, get him in the Hall of I Fame. It, it, look, like it, he belongs in the club. Like, how are they not doing that? I know I'm biased on this, but like, if you bring the heat and you score goals and you have five hundred goals, you have a thousand points. I don't give a fuck how many games you have, and you were tough. And you fought like all and these you guys had, twice or and times. you have penalty minutes and you're tough. That should add on so much credence. Well, I think whenever you're in a category all uh, all by yourself, credence, or maybe the right maybe there's like one or two people that are in, in the same category where you have 500 goals and 2,500 penalty minutes. No one's in that category with him. I don't think anybody. He's got is. almost 3,000 penalty minutes. Just yeah, so you know, exactly. Like Craig Berube's at 2,800 or something. He's at like 2,900. Yeah. 
How is he not in the Hall of Fame? 2,900 20 know. minutes? Do you think... We had Get this conversation with somebody a long time ago. It may have been Chelios. It may have been uh, Darren McCarty. I don't yeah, know who remember, it was. Yeah. Do you, you think Probert should be in the Hall of Fame? No. Remember, remember somebody... No. Hold on. No. Somebody was making that no. case because no, 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 fighting no. was part of the game and it was such I a big know. part of the game and he no. was the best to ever do it. Should there be a spot for him? Just like in, the, in football, for example, they the, the players who are like the best special team player ever... Um, you know, they, they, like who, who's a hall of famer? It's just special teams. Well, I think like who Devin Hester is going to go in or something like that. Are you, you mean the one guy that had 50,110 yard, uh, kickoff return touchdowns, that guy from Chicago. Yeah. Wait, look what he did. He's special teams though. Yeah. But he's, but did is he, he in the hall of fame? He's up for it. I'd give him, but he's okay. Scored, but but did, did Mark Kelso, like that dude from like the know, Buffalo man. Bills back in the day, who was a great special teams player? I mean, th- there are some. Pl- trust me, I think well, a punter got in recently. Pat McAfee, Ray Guy, oh. who was with the uh, Oakland Raiders back okay, in the day. Well, so I'm, I'm just asking. Okay, but Proby, I don't think no, because you have to have special teams. You didn't have to have a heavy back then. Fucking Pittsburgh what never even had a heavy about? back in the '80s and '90s. Andy. Every you team, have, every team didn't me. have a heavy. Stop, stop, stop. You have to have special teams in football. No matter what you do, you have to have a special team team in football. But you, re- you reward the best to ever you do You have it. to have it. Just like you have to have a catcher in baseball. You have to have special team units. You don't have to have a tough guy even in the hardcore days in the 80s. You didn't have to have one. It's a, it's a, it's a special team. It's a team. choice. It's a choice to have one. There's teams that still didn't have that many have a heavyweight back then. You didn't have to have it. So it's a different kind of thing, dude. Is Prober supposed to be in the Hall of Fame? Hell no. But just like the UFC, they have different kind of belts. Like you got the fucking, you know, middleweight, blah, blah, blah. But you got the bad motherfucker belt, too. Like Nate, fucking Nate Diaz has and fucking Jorge Masvidal has. What is that? The bad motherfucker belt. That's what they call it? That means that you might not have won that belt, but you are so fucking tough in your longevity and the way you fight where you're entertaining and the way your pay-per-view tickets are because you're fucking entertaining. You might not win every time, but you are talked about. That's the bad motherfucker. Mm. And they win that belt. And I'm like, maybe there could be something in hockey for that, but that's just a reach, too. So, no, Probert should not be in the Hall of Fame. Okay. Ken Dude, Ken- Probert gets enough attention, just so you know. I know, I know. He's the most popular hey, guy listen, ever. It, Bob Probert's the most popular hockey player ever. I'm not falling on the side to push him in. I'm just saying, other people have made that case. It's worthy of discussion. Now, if Probert... People can let us know what they think if about If Probert it. got four or five more of those sturdy goal seasons... Mm-hmm. That's a different story. Right. Even if his was he was at three hundred goals mm-hmm. and five hundred points, and he had and he was Bob Probert, I'd say God damn right. But he didn't have the, he was good, but he didn't have the points enough to equate and like balance that out. In my opinion, does did that you, make sense? Did you see the uh, tweet? No. Okay. No, that makes sense. Okay, and I agree. You right. Okay. But you're saying he's got to have the offensive stats to back a it little up. bit more, just a little bit more, mm-hmm. just a little, just like when some of these defensemen. Yep. That got into the Hall of yep. Fame. That didn't put that many points up, but yep. they're solid. It's like, mm-hmm. eh, what, what, what? What do you think of uh, some of these Canadian like media people who've been around for a long time? They're to, like, like they're going. It's, they're what just are they angry. doing now? Well, what like, are they like doing? Ken Campbell, for example. Uh, I like him. Okay, I follow him. He, we're Facebook friends. I get I, it. I like Kenny. But let me just read you a tweet. And a lot of people kind of went after him about this tweet. Go ahead. He said, uh, "This is after Canada won the uh, Helinka Gretzky tournament." Did no one pay attention to him? Okay, go ahead. Well, did they? It, when was this? Well, here's who pays attention to Canadians. It. No, 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 no. NHL teams. It's a oh, big okay. part. Okay. Uh, it's a it's huge scouting and tournament. Stuff. You're scouting draft eligible I players. Okay, my bad on that. Yeah, I think it's a huge tournament. I get you. And no, it's not popular in the U.S., but go ahead. You're good. No, but like the World Juniors in reality isn't super popular yeah, in the U.S. Yeah, but we know that. You, just recently. Yeah, but okay. You, 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 didn't grow, you didn't grow up watching the World Juniors? No. But when I played in the OHL, you're not gonna right. because you knew everybody in Fine. there. But I don't know the, like the Gretzky thing that much. So my bad. Go it's ahead. just Go starting ahead. to like really become attractive to a younger audience here okay. in the states. That's cool. Then I got you. Um, but the Ivan Halenka, you know, like the Halenka uh, Gretzky tournament. I mean, Canada sends their number one team. Other countries aren't like USA. It gives an opportunity for your 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 B team, if you will, you know, to get that exposure that you need, or maybe they're not going to get. Because they don't play for the program or whatever, but it gives them that exposure in front of NHL scouts and you know every summer at the tournament, so or whenever the tournament's typically held. 
So he said, so I can only assume that Hockey Canada executives will be receiving their well-deserved bonuses for a bunch of 17-year-olds winning a nothing tournament that this country has historically dominated. So he kind of called it a nothing tournament, kind of diminished their accomplishments of winning it. And listen, Canada's loaded. They bring their number one team. They win it pretty much every year because of that. How long has it been going on? Forever. Long. The Halinka? The Halinka Gretzky tournament, yeah. It's been going on forever? A long time. Jesus. I'm yeah. out of touch, man. They've had a couple different names to it. They used to call it the, no wonder it's confusing the Ivan Halinka tournament or whatever. They, okay, so they, he they, said that. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't no. bother me. Well, he's basically saying, well, these the Canadian executives. He would have said, like, because of climate change. I would have been like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? But he's getting into all the issues that are going on with high, Hockey Canada well, and blaming the people at the top. And he's saying, hey, hey they're still getting their up. bonuses. Those girls are fucking, I don't know. I don't know, man. I, Andy, I don't I don't have a comment but on to this. Demi- to, don't, don't blame the current group of players, I think, is what people are saying. Okay, that's fine. Like, they that's have fair. nothing to do with what happened before. And don't diminish their accomplishment because you think it's a nothing tournament, man. It means something to them. Yeah, I get you. You know, I mean, these players have obviously put in a lot to get there. They want to play in the NHL. It's well, a, they're good anyway, and they're going to be. Fine. I just feel they're like there win. are people out there that are just very negative right now. And I, it, and, I and I've said yeah. this before. And I'm just well, reading the shit's you one going down tweet in both countries from Ken so Campbell. You know. But there are very loud journalists out there, and I just cannot tell if they are um, looking to uh, help the game or hurt the game. And you that's know, I get you. And, and, I I, and if, if it's all about helping the game by calling people out and changing the culture, like I said, I'm fully on board with that. But if it's all about ruining lives and ruining the game, then I think something. we have to question Let me that. ask you something. Yeah. As a journalist, because I'm not. Mm-hmm. I was a player. You're, You're kind a of a journalist. Oh, I am. No, no, you oh, are. Oh, what am I... What am I, what am I looking Although, into besides yeah. <laughs> Vlad, Vlad the Impaler and D.B. Cooper and shit? Here's the deal. What works... As a journalist, does positivity work for you? No, 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 no. What works? Mm-hmm. Look at Twitter. Look yeah. at social media. What yeah. works? Yeah. Is it positivity? When I say Andy, Andy was, re- hi guys, I'm on Twitter. Andy was really good today. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Andy's fucking golf shot. Look, it goes right there. Do you think that works? No. What works when I post on Twitter? What? When, what? When, well, what? The, the opposite. What? When you don't, <laughs> when, you, <laughs> when you're swinging and missing, you, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Or when I'm bullshitting, I'm, yeah. you got cigar smoke in my face. Yeah, Negativity. Yeah. <laughs> when you miss three times, what works? Yeah, that's it. Negativity. Mm-hmm. That's why they do it. You think they really care? I don't know. Maybe they do. Some guys do. Some guys are always for like, oh, do you Ukraine. Think, uh. Do you think they're trying to uh, change the culture and help the game? Or are well, they don't just, be rapey poo with chicks. Well, don't you know? do, don't do that. Don't be fucking rapey poo with chicks. When the girl's passed out and you got fucking night, why are you banging? Just don't be rapey, do we know touchy. If, I don't is know. Is that an allegation or don't, is that a fact? Well, do we know what's going on? Well, that's that? an allegation. It's an it? allegation. Well, yeah. yeah. So it's just like, okay, you know, don't treat women like shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you can get any girl you want. You can get any girl you want. And, you know, when you force the issue and you got your buddies and you're fucking that, yeah. like you just... A girl's going to wake I'm up with you 1,000% on yeah. that. And listen, I've got be two fucking daughters, rapey poo. and I've got a son, too. Oh, shit, you so do. it's important to educate your sons, too, just as much as it is your daughter. Don't let your sons be like that. Be and, good to girls, and, man. And, and, and hopefully, uh, and I know sometimes it's easier said than done, do whatever you can do to, to, to educate your daughters not to put themselves ever in a bad position either. Ever. Or if they're in a bad position, reach out to somebody right away, send a text, make a phone call, now, be like, hey, help me out. Here, I know. You know? And, and, so and, I would never blame a victim. I'm never going to victim shame. I'm not going to blame any victim here. So please don't try to twist my words around. But um, I just wonder, there's just a lot of, it's not just about that. That's a, that's a different issue. You know, people are, 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 you know, assaulting women. Like, do, I mean, it goes without saying, we would never condone anything like that. But there's a, there's a lot of negativity that I just can't tell if people are trying to help the game negativity or if they, if they want to hurt the game. Well, it helps them. I'm just telling you. Now, it helps who? It helps the journalists. Mm-hmm. When you talk about negative shit, Andy, yeah. just like I said. Yeah. But it's like, um, you know, I, I don't know what happened with this whole fucking thing. But it's like I watched a Woodstock 99 documentary. You know? Oh, I've watched that. Isn't that crazy? That's our era. And so, like, these girls are like, oh, hi. Oh, well, I got naked. And I crowd surfed, and somebody touched my boob. Like, girl, what the fuck do you think's gonna happen? Like, don't get naked and jump on that. Now, there's other girls, and I think they got straight up fucking raped, and it's like, Jesus Christ, like, put your, that was an absolute disaster. But don't put yourself in that situation, for one. But 
if you're in a weird spot, like these guys, man, sometimes they get fucking crazy. They think with their dick, and they don't know what the hell to stop it because they're like, oh, I got a girl. Yeah. Like, it's like, well, there's a, there's there's a, a balance. There, there's to some it. entitlement that's there, man. But, hey, these kids have been having, especially now, with social media, I mean, these kids who grew up, you know, dominating the game and playing in all these international tournaments and getting a lot of attention. And, like, listen, we just asked, um, we did an interview with a player. We, we haven't even released the interview. I said, what was the first, how old were you when the first story was written about you? He said, like, it was, like, on the front page of a paper in his local town at 14. You know what I'm saying? So I think you do get a sense of entitlement when you grow up in that community where hockey is everything and you just feel like you can't do any wrong. Oh, you can. And you got to be humbled here and there, man. Mm-hmm. And, like, why you want to have sex with a chick with eight dudes anyway? Like, why? Like, there's so many girls. Like, go wheel a cool one that fucking wants to hang with you and you only. Not ten swinging dicks. Like, oh. Like, what? Mm-hmm. I don't know. All right, you see those um, Max Patcher Ready comments? Yeah, I did. He plays for Carolina, you know, now. I know. Yeah, he's not in Vegas oh, anymore. Great trade for yeah. uh, Vegas. <laughs> for, like, for nothing? For nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we did good on this one. Oh, yeah, what Vegas get for him? Oh, money. Cap relief. Cap space. <laughs> But he said in Vegas that there's no accountability for the players. That it's a, He said it's not a country club, but it kind of sounds like one. Like, they're just very comfortable. You know, they're getting their uh, car washed all the Yoink. time. And I think there can be some positives to that, to creating that type of environment for the players. I remember David Perron telling me when he was playing there in their inaugural season when they went to the Stanley Cup final. He's like, you know, sometimes the owner just doesn't even, doesn't even say anything. And all of a sudden you come out after practice and your car is detailed. I, that's, that's nice, you know. There's yeah, but that shouldn't that. make you a fancy lad. No, it shouldn't. So Shit, the boys in the blue should have their fucking cars washed, too. So he's saying that in Vegas, for those players that have not played anywhere else, and maybe he's comparing it to Montreal because he spent all those years in Montreal yeah. and he was the captain, but Montreal is a little bit um, on the excessive side. It's like, I don't think on the extreme side, you know, like where if you don't play well and half the city's on fire and they're going crazy. He's just saying in Vegas that these players, don't, there's nobody held, holding them accountable. And that's a big. Well, angle. hold yourself accountable then. Yeah, you know what? You know what I hold say about that? Ac- who, then where are the leaders at? Because exactly, yeah, I don't give a. That, that, I, that I don't ridiculous. like what he said. I'm glad you said that that's because ridiculous. I'm with you. Because I'll never forget. It's the owner's fault. They should have put their foot down. <clears throat> what? What do you need? Aren't you 32 years old? You need accountability from the fans. Yeah, what do you need? Wait, you got your car washed. So what are you peacocking around? Go fuck yourself. And they're getting organic food and stuff like that. So what? You're supposed to. You don't think the boys get organic food with Ryan O'Reilly in there? Hey, Who are you kidding? What, you'd you, probably sneak in there and steal it from when you, when you played in Montreal, you weren't getting, like, a free car, and you weren't getting free meals. What the hell is he talking about? And you weren't about? getting, like, you know. The owners wasn't hard enough. That's why. What? He's like, oh, what? but the fans. Okay, let me just say this. I'll never forget, and people have to hear this out. It's, it's always stuck with me. Roman Polak. Oh, huge penis. <laughs> I mean, gigantic <laughs> penis, and it. Fucking! It you hovered. don't have to. Say, it, I'm not no, no, talking no, 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 about no, no. that. It hovered around the drain in the bathroom, and it had a mind of its own. It was hideous looking. <laughs> I love that guy, dude. You do not need to. I, that's not what I'm talking Huge about. Penis. I'm talking about something else. Right, my bad. So Roman Pollock. Um, oh Every time you say his name, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, he played a long time. Played like great you know, guy. I think he played close to 800 games. He like was that. the strongest, the fastest. He beat everybody and everything in a race. He beat everybody in the race. He beat everybody in push-ups. He off beat ice race. off ice race, on ice race. He, he was a worker. He was like a bodybuilder. He beat everybody is two hundred forty yeah. pounds. Yeah, he's huge, all muscle, huge penis. Very good skater too, like fast skater, huge powerful penis. skater. Um, anyway, so and uh, he's from the Czech Republic, but I'll Czechia. never forget we were talking. He was playing in Toronto, and he was like, you know what? Everyone talks about oh, there's so much pressure. It's so hard to play in Toronto. He goes. Dude, I felt way more pressure playing in St. Louis than I felt playing in oh, Toronto. Wow. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, everyone says it's because the media is so hard. He goes, you think anybody in there gives a fuck what the media says? They don't care what they're saying on sports talk radio stations or what they're writing. The pressure comes from who's putting the pressure on you internally. It's internal pressure. Is there pressure from the coaching staff? Is there pressure, f- pressure from management? Is there pressure from ownership? That's where pressure is to win. If the real pressure is there to win, that's when you feel it as a player. And he told me this. He said, I didn't feel pressure in Toronto because there's no pressure to win. I didn't feel pressure from ownership. I didn't feel pressure from management or coaches. There's no pressure inside the room. Who cares what they're writing about and what they're saying on the radio? But when I'm playing for the Blues, 
We were expected to win and to compete. Wow. And okay. I'm feeling pressure from management and coaching staff because every day it's demanded yep. of you when you go into the rink and you practice yep. and you play. And they're saying, hey, we're, we're expected to win. That's real pressure. There, you, Andy, you know I chirp you for a lot of things. <laughs> that it was perfect. You're absolutely right. It's a mid-market team here. They got to make fucking money, homeboy. And in order to make money... You better put a goddamn good product on the, the ice. Cap. They spent to the fucking cap. You better put a good goddamn you product on win. the ice. You better win. You better win when you're supposed to win. And that that in itself is mm -hmm. very difficult to deal with. Doug Armstrong don't fuck around with mm -hmm. that shit. You got a goddamn win. This ain't Toronto where there's money flying in out the fucking wazoo. You better fucking win, and you better be relevant in the city. You know why? Because mm -hmm. the other big boys will swallow you up here. The fucking Cardinals will swallow you up. I'm telling you, if you're irrelevant in St. Louis... The fan base won't go downtown St. Louis. It ain't easy to get downtown anyway, just so all y'all know. So you want all these good old boys from Fitton to go downtown? You better have a fucking good product on the ice. Well, and that's why they demand that. And that is 100%. Because everyone's a realist here yes, in a town are. like St. Louis. Like, hey, you, you want us to expect people to drive downtown and pay and spend, money yes. and watch you play? Damn right. Well, then you better bring that's it. That's a good point. And so anyway, so Great like point. we make too much out of that. Yeah. Well, the media, the pressure from the but media. But there's no pressure from the fucking Kyle Dubas what? coming in like, hi, I'm Kyle. Me. Yeah. Like, what? You're not bitching at us? Right. We, we just lost four right. in a row. Right. With Austin Matthews? We're right. all, wait, what? You're not bitching at us? Oh, but the fans are. Oh, but the media is. Yeah. We could drown that. But you can't drown out when your GM's but mad. But they live the fancy lad exactly. life, man, because they're playing in T.O., and they got all the perks of being a celebrity in Toronto, man. We're all that's all they care Can about. I be a dick for and they have nothing else to compete. I know they got the basketball and stuff like that, oh, but nothing Jesus competes Christ, Andy. with the Maple Leafs. They are making so much money. Listen, you could you could drown out the media. But if Dougie Armstrong comes down and looks at you in the locker room, you're gonna drown that out? No, you're not. No, you're not. You're gonna drown out when the ownership comes down and fucking stares you in your soul. No, you're not. When you better win, or this is whole thing's gonna change up. In Toronto, the media is hard, but I think Kyle Dubas comes down like, hoo, hoo, hoo. like I don't know for sure. I did see a picture of Mitch Marner with his shirt off, though. With uh, Joe Thornton, with Jumbo? Is he working out? Who, Mitch? I thought maybe that was from like 10 years ago or Andy. something. Andy. Is that Marner? Is, is that him? I don't know. Andy, <laughs> you are bigger than he is. <laughs> he doesn't, he has no definition. He's a hell of a player, though, man. I know. I like that Mitch Marner, Andy. though. I get that. I'm not chirping Mitch Marner. Either. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. I saw that, and I evaluate bodies, especially men's bodies. You know that, Andy. And I looked at him like he's built like a fucking child. He's got a child's body. He's got a children's he body. He was next to Jumbo, right? They were Jumbo like, ain't that fucking big either. But he's next to, he's, he's built like a little boy. And I'm like, where are you working out at? There's no definition anywhere none, in his body. None. And you saw that too, didn't oh, you? Yeah. It's like I a, just say that's like a fourteen year old. Now it doesn't mean he's not dominating. I get that all the comments. Yeah. I get. I love because yeah, I like Mitch, man. I love. All I'm you. not going to chirp Mitch because I think he is a hell of a player. Built like a child, and he, well, he and I. He is Andy. Oh yeah, and I just saw Come the Kachuk on. boys the other. I'm like, Andy, Jesus and they're, Christ! They're like, I know that Brady Kachuk, dude. He scored thirty last year. This guy, I I think he's got potential to score forty goals. And let me just say this about Ottawa oh, before we get in. Oh yeah, I just hope. You know, some, listen, everyone's getting excited about Ottawa and everything this offseason. And you know I love the Ottawa Senators. I just hope they didn't make the wrong decision by bringing Claude Giroux in. And, and I hope that is the right decision. That's all I'm saying. You know, it's one thing. If you want to surround a young core, because they've got a bunch of really good young players there, led by Josh Norris and, Matthew, and uh, Brady Kachuk. If you're going to surround them with veterans, just make sure it's the right veterans. That's all I'm saying. You well, is Claude Giroux not the right one? I don't know. We'll see. I say I say roll the dice on that. You need a listen, hey. Brady. Uh, we talked about this. Mm -hmm. Brady's young. You don't want to. No, you don't want to disrupt that core though. What I, they have going on? I. What do they got going on? Losing? Well, no, they're up. No, and no, coming. no, no, no. What do they got going on? Losing? They lose. But they're not bringing in a guy that's won a bunch. And he went to Florida, kind of disrupt what they had. Dude, he going scores on fucking there. goals, and he's a goddamn leader. Yeah, he's not a winner, but he's still a leader. And you're gonna and you need somebody to counter mm -hmm. Brady a little bit. Yeah, like Brady's. What twenty three? Yeah, and he's a lead, lead a ringer. Yeah, and say, yeah, let's like you kind of need that. Not yeah. saying Brady's doing the wrong thing, but it's like he's he's a kid. It's just something to pay attention he's a, to. He's we'll a, he was a mascot for the Calgary Flames during the playoffs. Like, Claude Giroux's probably gonna be like, hey, tone it down a little bit, homeboy. Let's we'll see how that plays out. That's all I'm saying. Like, I it, so it's like a it's like a I'm not gonna jump to any conclusions or whatever. No, I'm. I, I'm but just you saying, get a chance to 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 
to get grab a player like him, but but also yeah, Cam. Cap space too. It's a red flag a little bit that a player of his caliber, as a free agent, won't go anywhere else. Isn't doesn't have the big boys knocking on his door and saying, "Hey, we want you to come here." He's going to a team that you'd consider a contender. Well, one of the big boys that to have money for that. I'm just saying. Exactly. Well, th- that answers your question. That's why Ottawa, with all that cap space and a young team that haven't done the shit, no, but are the, like, bring in Kyle Giroux. He's a center. He yeah. could do a bunch of stuff hey, and, and guide you. Florida could have kept him. For that money? They're probably going to spend it on something else. Well, they would have had to make a trade and move some money. Well, well then there you go. But they'd rather have Matthew. Well, no shit. <laughs> so Ottawa's like, no, we need a veteran. Brady's great, but we need another guy to kind of be We're just going to pay attention to. I just hope that it's... I just hope and like I don't mind that yet. To bring it too. Well, fuck yeah. I like that too. We'll, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see, man. We'll have Am to, I making sense on that? I don't know. I just think it's something to pay attention to. You no, know, I love them, dude, but yeah. I, we're a realist. You here. just I, have to. It's one thing to add veterans. Just make sure you add the right ones. To bring that young enough, obviously, he can come in and score goals and whatever. I, I don't expect him to score at the pace that he did in Chicago, though. You're not playing with that Patty Kane, you know. So, nah, you know, I get thir- you get a lot. You see a lot of his goals scored off the rush, man. Just unbelievable good, passes though. from back. He is good. It's good. He, he scores on him though. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll give him the fucking puck. He'll score. We'll see. So find a way to give him a puck. We will see. Um, Paul Giroux, my like, fucking, bring him on. Now this Huberto deal. Hey, I, I mean, again, again, listen, Brad Tree Living, I like him a lot. He's a great guy. GM of the Calgary Flames. He had uh, no leverage whatsoever in this Matthew situation. I feel bad for him. He lost. Yeah, uh, Johnny Goudreau, too. Yep. Probably should have signed Goudreau last summer. Maybe he could have avoided that. Um, but you lose two 100-point players in the same offseason, man. That is tough. But, you know, Huberto. Never before. He had to sign Huberto. I know. Ten and a half, man. Fuck. <laughs> for nine more years. Or whatever. How old is he? He's going to have a – the eight-year deal is going to – you got him for nine years. He's The eight-year deal will kick in after this – this season. How old is But he? he's like 30, 31 or whatever. Oh, fuck. I mean, it's like, oh, I mean, at 10 and a half, I mean, he could have gone in there and said, I want to be paid 15 million bucks a year, and they probably would have had to do what it. What do you, you know? do if you're It's like, living. we cannot let him leave. We'll get absolutely crushed. We just, you know. I don't know. And he's, he's a hard trophy final. Hey, this is like, a long contract. It's get, like. Get Brad on, by the way. I know. We're going to. And I like him a lot. But, you know. Um, so do I. The situation with, uh, with uh, Nazem Kadri, too. I mean, people don't realize this guy's going to be 32 years of age entering the season, and he still is unsigned. Maybe he's got a deal tucked away in the drawer somewhere. I don't know. But I'm sure he went into free agency being like, I want six years. I want seven years. I want eight years. I don't want Nazem Kadri as a 38-year-old. Fuck no. And I don't want him as a 39-year-old. I don't want him as a 36-year-old. I don't want anybody as a 38-year-old, to be honest with you. No. Unless they're making $2 million. So at 32... Just so you know. It's, it's, or they're a backup goalie. That's where the game has changed a little bit, especially without the cap going up. It's yeah. like you you have a great season or your best season of your career at 32, man. I don't know how I you're, you're paying you for like it. a six or seven I'm year. I'm not paying you for that. But Brad Treliving had no other option. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? The or days maybe, of the 39 and the 40-year-olds and the 38-year-olds playing with the 24 and 25 and 26-year-olds. I mean, and they're making a ton of money? They're almost Those done, teams man. don't do anything. They don't. When you sign these cats at 31 because they've been kicking ass for you and you're like, I'm married to you, i got to get... No, I don't want a GM that thinks that way. I want a GM that says, I got what I had out of you. Mm-hmm. I love you. You're great for the city, but I can't, I can't offer this to you. Mm-hmm. I know what you want. I'm not doing it. I'll get this young kid and we'll figure it out from there. I don't want a GM overpaying for a 31-year-old that's done fucking crazy stuff for you. I don't want that. Well, exactly. It's, it's not a marriage. It's and never a marriage. And he still had all the attention on him. He was still loud and too much during the playoffs. I mean, e- even if, like, uh, the Bennington situation, and if it wasn't all on him or whatever, away. it's always about Kadri. You're right. The always. victim, you mean? And then and then he got hurt. The fucking you know? victim. The victim. Got hurt. Peelzy called that... Uh, the victim. Karma. When he got... <laughs> Do you use it with? Do you spell it with a C? At Peelzy. At Peelzy. Peelzy's like karma with a C. <laughs> and so karma doesn't mean anything. It's just he said it with a C. All right, we got to get into uh, Pat Verbeek here. And listen, we get into that situation with uh, Jay Beagle and uh, and Troy Terry and what happened with Trevor Zegers and all that. You're gonna be find it very interesting what he had to say. A lot of people were like reacting in a certain way and had a certain opinion on this. Where do you hear what the Anaheim Ducks? general manager had to say about that and a number of other topics and an unbelievable conversation we had with Pat Verbeek. Uh, he and I have a lot in common, by the way. Like what? Hunting. Yeah. Farming. Yeah, you asked him some goofy-ass questions off the bat. Farming. Farming. Cam, I asked the questions that I want the answers to. Like, what do you mean by, like, shooting guns? Like, do you, like, shoot stuff? 
<laughs> like, yeah, I do. I didn't say I'm that. I'm like, Andy doesn't know shit. My bad. He I didn't, didn't laugh at anything that. I said, by the way. He did not laugh. Not one. Oh, and by the way, I just just prepare yourself because Cam starts every question oh, is, uh, hey, hey, let me ask you this. I know. Hey, well, let me ask you something. Every single question you ask, hey, let me ask you this. Well, let me ask you something. Hey, let me ask you something. I mean, am I wrong when I say that? Hey, let me ask you this. I ain't no journalist, hey, okay? Hey, let me ask you something. I don't give a shit. I don't. He didn't laugh at anything I said, though. He was not laughing. No, I know. No, he's going to have some success, though, man. Yeah, he'll be good. He's cut from the same cloth as Stevie Y. You know he knows players, and he he, he has no problem identifying the players that he wants and who's going to fit into his mold. And just the people that he's surrounding himself with, Robbie DeMaio and some of these other people. I like our little Robbie DeMaio. What's up, baby? They all got that same mentality. Yeah, they're tough as shit. And they're going to be uh, very successful before too long. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the Anaheim Ducks bandwagon. Like I'm on the Anaheim train. We know a lot of people in Anaheim that we've interviewed. Yes, we have. Damn right. Including Getzlaff. Yeah, we got a couple guys on the bank, too. You'll see. Um, yeah, some other guys, too. Absolutely. All right. Uh, the Cam District Podcast brought to you by Hair Club Cam. Uh, Cam. You know, you just go to the landing page, hairclub.com slash Cam and Strick. Yeah, baby. That's where you go. And, again, you have any hair issues? Are you losing your hair? Do you have a cul-de-sac in the back of your oh, head? Oh, God. <laughs> Fucking cul-de-sac. God damn it. Can it, like, alpecia, can it fix that? Or does it not? No, you go to hair club. Yeah, for that. Do well, you want to keep doing that for the rest of your life? Just get it done. Take it from the back and put keep it on the Keep doing what? What are you talking about? You just started rubbing your head just now. What does that mean? Because if you put propecia in your hair. Alopecia. A- alopecia it, is a disease. Yeah, if you have that, it can fix that too. Or I mean, Whatever. Oh, Jaden Smith. Fuck her. Jada. Oh, what do you think of uh, Will Smith's uh, Fuck them both. apology? I don't give a shit about either one of them. And Chris Rock, you like Chris? Uh, yeah, I do. I like Chris Rock a lot. You're yeah. damn right. I like Dave Chappelle a lot. I like yeah. fucking Bill Burr a lot. I like Norm Macdonald, God rest your soul, a lot. I love all of them, dude. They're hardcore. They didn't mm-hmm. give a fuck. They don't apologize. They just do their thing, and they're pretty much right on a lot of stuff. Hey, before I now. forget, I've got to remind you once again. Make sure you get that box for the concert on Friday. Get the box. What happened? Get the box for the concert yeah. on I'll Friday. I'll set it all up, Andy. Yes. You and your nerd buddies <laughs> I'm going to hang out with. There's going to be six of us. Evaluating there. everything I fucking do. Like, no. <laughs> What's Cam <Kim> doing? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Give me the fuck out of here. You won't find that. I, ain't, I don't hang out with people I don't know, just so you know that. Okay, you won't find that issue. I, I just don't hang out with people I don't know. You've actually met these people. Oh, really? Yeah. I'll fill oh, you yeah, in. we're at. Yeah, I'll fill you in. At the Creve Core Racket Club? <laughs> I didn't go there. Oh, I'm starting to play pickleball, too. I bet you are. Um, my only issue with pickleball, man, I don't want that to be the game that, like, does me in with the like, uh, an ACL or an Achilles or something like that. Yeah, Not you'll be worry, right, dude. You'll it scares right. me about that. Hair Club, hairclub.com. Replace your hair. Restore your hair and regrow your hair, man. That's the three R's. That's all you got to know. Hair Club, go there today. 800-279-7878, baby. All right, CarShield and CarShield.com, 800-857-2481. Man, I love our friends at CarShield. I, I tell more people about CarShield. I'm like, you understand what they can do for you? Right, for a small fee, you always have that protection. You never yeah. have to worry about anything. It's easy. Easy. Simplify your life. What's the show? promo code? Cam. Yeah, it's very embarrassing. Cam. Very easy. But it'll save Probably you 10%. Probably get late, too, if you say it. Is that true? I don't know. I mean, that's quite the, uh, I mean. Well, if you're I, a woman, You're, you're going to put that out there, dude. You better well, make Well, you sure. might. Just make if sure. If you say Andy, you certainly aren't. <laughs> That's not true, dude. <laughs> what happens if you say Andy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. Oh, my God. fucking Brody have to delete. Oh, Brody has to delete enough I shit. Know. I know. He's say. like, will you guys stop saying I, things I, that, well, you don't want set ta- me up. that you want taken because out? Because you set me up to say something, and then I say it, and then you're like, oh, you got to edit that well, out. Well, we, get, we get a little loosey-goosey sometimes on here, you know? Well, so, isn't that what the people want? Yes. You want me to be a robot? Well, t- is that what they want? Well, uh, do you think these good old boys in Saskatchewan are like? I want normal Cam. I want Cam to be like normal. What's robot Cam? Hi, how art thou? How art? What, what would you like to know, Andy? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I like Crosby. I like everything. I climate change is re- everything's good. And you mean, shut up. No, I'm not doing it. CarShield, God. CarShield.com, baby. Eight hundred eight five seven two four eight one. Go there and go there today. And uh, great people doing a lot for the community. They love hockey. Oh, my God. They love hockey. They're, they sponsor youth hockey. Thank you, Car Shield. For even ha- they, they produce a team here. They sponsor it. Like, they take care of the kids. The kids are dominating because of them. Thank you. We love you. I wish more people would step up to the fucking plate. They hoard their goddamn money, and they blah, blah, blah. Car Shield fucking really Dude, puts you said in. if you won the Mega Millions, you weren't, you weren't giving it to charity. I wouldn't. Wait, is AAA hockey charity? Well, no. Would you, well, start, you, would you about? start your no. own program? Here's what I do. Homeboy, for hockey. So you, because you know, people are like, I gave half of it to charity. Oh yeah, where'd that go? 
What charity was it? Where'd it go? Do you know exactly where that went? You gave a hundred million bucks to charity. Where'd it go? No, okay. show me. No, no, show me what happened with that charity. Mm-hmm. What charity is it? Mm-hmm. I want to know because well, I've dealt with charities my whole life, and I know about a lot of them. Just so you know, it's not. Here's what I would do if I made a ton of money. Ton of money. I'd build houses for the poor. So I could actually see mm-hmm. what the fuck I'm doing. I would build houses and I'd have, I would do something I could physically touch and see. I would. So they, I know that they're okay. I, Not just like flaming away. Here's the climate change. Here's the this. No, 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 no. I need to see where the fuck this money is allocated. You know what That's I would it. do? Because I would open up my boys and girls club, remember? For underprivileged kids. And yeah, I'd I buy, and I'd buy every, all the homeless coats. I'd yeah, be, I'd be handing out coats. Yeah, I don't I mean, like to see people with people cold and stuff like that. Yeah, I just hand out the yeah, winter. Well, you could build them a house, but I would have warm. my I would have my boys and girls club. Listen, though, man, and he's like, I'll give you a coat. Oh, I'm outside, freezing cold at 20 <laughs> degrees. Like, hey, what about the gloves? Come on, Andy. Well, I give them gloves too, and a hat. They'll still die of, of uh, freezing. cold. There's an organization I talked to. They reached out. They have a uh, they they hand out winter hats, beanies, and stuff to uh, to everybody in Canada. So, uh, well, know, that's pretty nice of them because like people are cold. If I made a ton like of money, that. I wouldn't just give it to a charity and be like, there, look at me. Let me mm. get my tax. No, no, no. I need to see what the fuck yeah. they are doing okay. with my money. Okay. So I can look at the smiles. And by of the these way, kids. you were so wrong last week because. About what? Again, the, my fact checker, who, I mean, I'm going to start paying this guy even more well, because you've been so wrong your all the time. neighbor um, with the mask <laughs> doing gardening outside. <laughs> That guy's telling his, me what his to do. His okra is looking great, oh, by I the way. Oh, I bet. Um, no, but you were wrong about. So if you about win, what? if you won the one point two billion dollars, uh, four hundred million. Yeah, I know. What did I say? Six hundred. No, I said seven, and then and I said six, and then if you take the lump sum, you get seven, and then that's taxed, and so then there's another okay. tax, and then yeah, there's another so, tax. Well, so you, you, by the by the time it's all said and done, so you're paying like ninety three million dollars in taxes or something on like another tax. Like uh, uh, you're you're left with like three four hundred million bucks, but then every year you're paying. What are you paying taxes on every year? The thirty seven percent tax rate, Andy. I don't what are know. you paying it on? I don't know. Like, are you are you eventually left with nothing? No wonder a lot of these a lot of these lottery winners. I've I've, I I've, shit they do. I've looked it up. And I watch uh, my lottery dream house on Friday nights. I record it every a night. Stupid show. I record it. The house is, they're not even nice. And the guy that hosts that is oh, a fucking he's nerd. a weirdo. He's a nerd. Hey, but the guy, but they always have. How, okay, he's like, well, how much did you win? They're always like, wow, one million dollars. Like, where's the people that won like so a couple like hundred million? Grand? I know. Okay. So and, anyway, and they're looking for a house. I do like, watch. You know, I'll give you a shout out to this. Nerd. How much do you want to spend on your house? One hundred and thirty grand. <laughs> and I'm like, that's what I'm watching. I, I want to see the mansion. I say okay. Are you stealing my shit? No. Because you're right on that. Yeah. Oh, Did yeah. I say on the radio where you copied me? No. Because, you know, eh. No. You're right. Why am I want to watch poor people with, with shitty houses? Exactly. I don't want that. I want wealthy people. Let's go. To watch Thank their you. houses. Thank you. I, I That's what I want to see. So I watch, uh, I do watch a lot of HDTV. I love it. And the two, the one guy's a very big nerd, but they are. What show? It's called, they own Mag- Magnolia Entertainment now, Network. And it's oh, the, Chip. The brothers? It, no. No, they're, they're cool. Property, Pro- brothers. property brothers. Chip and, oh, Kate, what's her name? She's a sweetheart. Oh. Oh, what? the woman? Yeah. They're the dark, married? Yeah. And Chip's kind of a nerd. And he's like, nee, 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 yeah. I'm like, I fucking he's hate him. Spazzy, yeah. And then I'm like, no, I like him. Because that's how I would be mm-hmm. if the camera's in my face all mm-hmm. the time. I'd be mm-hmm. a nerd like that. But he's like yeah. Christian and stuff, so he's not oh. cussing like I would probably do. Mm-hmm. But, like, they are so good. Everything that they build for these people Kate's like, that's what I want for my house. But these other people put in, and it looks like a 1995, know, like, fucking. I know, I know, It's like a weird, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm with you, man. Yeah, so the Magnolia, it's Chip and, um, how? Yeah. She runs a show. She's fucking bad at it. And she? she's cute, too, man. Uh, they they've have been, like, having a lot of the same type of, like, guys' grocery games and stuff like that. I'm not watching all that. Yeah, I don't give a Although, shit. Although, uh, I had you a. You know f- what I watch? Hmm. And what you need to do to fucking I boost pro- up your I probably American watched history. it already. Watch how the men built America on the History Channel. How men built America. It's on the History Channel. It gives you step Oh my by, God. It's so unbelievable. I watch it all the time. So it's, it's so like unbelievable. It's a, the founder of like uh, Lemon Drops or something well, like that. Well, that's the No, how food. That's how food built America. Yeah. This is how the yeah. men, the Vanderbilts, the oh, Vodka and Big all Dogs. Those too. It's so good. Those are amazing. And it's, it's a bio doc. So like mm-hmm. the actors in it look like the guys. Yes, they it's, reenact it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I have watched that. It's so good, dude. Yeah. You want to brush up on American history? Mm-hmm. That's what no, you that's do. That's a great way to do it. And you know it. what? If England, if Great Britain, if Italy, they did the same thing, I'd be like, I'd watch that fucking thing too. Now Canada, I'd be like, eh. 
But like I would watch, I, I love that. I went step by step how these monsters went toe to toe with each other, you know, forward to this, to that, to the other. It's very, very interesting. Yeah. I love that shit. Yeah. Well, okay. Good. The, the men who built America mm-hmm. on the history channel. Yeah. They'll have like the Ford family. Or oh, something. oh, and they yeah. go, and it's like, and they they're have, never they, happy. They act it out. They're it's never happy. No. It's like you have all this money. And you just have to keep building because you're competing. So these big billionaires, mm-hmm. they don't care about us. They all, they only compete with, it's like when you're a Hall of Fame player. Mm-hmm. You're like, well, what do I care? Maybe I didn't get, maybe I didn't hit 700 home runs like Albert. Albert Pujols. Well, Albert Pujols isn't comparing himself to fucking Goldschmidt or whoever. Albert's comparing himself to Barry fucking Bonds and the big, big dicks. Mm-hmm. So he wants to get that 700. So my point is with the billionaires, they don't, they don't compete with everybody lower than them. They compete with that handful of billionaires. And so they're never happy. They're never satisfied. They never kick their feet up. They never say, you know what? I did my, I'm going to chill and hang out with my family. Mm-hmm. These billionaires, there's a reason why they're billionaires. And they just compete, compete, compete. And it's just like, you're not even, you're never satisfied. No. But you like say, you're never satisfied. You, I, I don't know about in the food channel if they, if they do that, but like a lot of the people that founded the country, that the country, a lot of them have developed. Uh, food products like the Kraft family and stuff like R- that. Rogan Bakker uh, popcorn oh, to yeah, all to dudes. McDonald's to yes, yes. Dairy Queen to everything. So How I've about seen to, all those? Yeah, to uh, the ice cream stuff mm-hmm. to uh, Ben and Jerry's. Bunch of hippies, by the way. Yeah, um, I love. I like. Listen, the Cherry Garcia is my favorite. Yeah, uh, you love Ben and Jerry. I, I love. You hey, like those. Two I just got my. I'm going out to see fish. By the way, at uh, Dick Sporting Goods in uh, Denver, Colorado, on Labor Day weekend. If I had a ton of money, I'd have a house and and fucking. In Colorado, and I'd have a I would have a badass mountain home oh, next yeah. to a fucking ski and Dude, I can ski out in Aspen like a big dick. I do it all the time where I just type in a city, uh, and I'll put homes for sale. So like a Telluride, Colorado, whatever. Telluride's just to, beautiful. Just to pick out the spot that I would like Jesus. settle down in. <sighs> By the way, I was wrong last week when I said there was a bull and a bear that got in a fight, and you're like, I don't know. It was a moose. You know, shit, Andy. Jesus Christ. The moose was scaring the bear away. That wasn't in Africa. That must have been in North no, America. No, that was in like Alaska probably or yeah, something. Okay. North America. Because you said a bull. Yeah. Now, bulls are indigenous, I think, to Spain. You, I, I, don't, I don't know, but, but they're not in but, Africa. But it was a bull. Can you imagine a moose? Like, who wins that they're one? They're 3,000 pounds. With the grizzly? Dude, well, I w- they could re- they could they could scare a grizzly away. If grizzlies are kind of like this is what grizzlies do. They like to beat up on their bullies. Mm-hmm. They don't want to fight a fucking thing that's going to gore them. They want to fight the fucking you or you know somebody hey, they could beat up. I read all about it last night, like how to use bear spray. <laughs> okay, because you got to have two hands. You got to have one hand on the cam, one hand on the trigger, and you spray it towards their feet. But they got to be within ten feet. You got to let them get within 10, 10 yards. Yeah, or, yeah, no, yeah. ten yards. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, Andy, tell me how to. Did take you care know of to bear. spray it at their feet? Why do you I'm do? Why do you do that? Because it distracts them. <laughs> Wrong answer. What? Because then the I think it comes up. Yeah, it distracts them. So I was kind of so right. they lose their sight for fifteen to forty five minutes. It's ninety eight percent accuracy or whatever that it works, okay. which means two percent of the time the bear is still going to eat you. Do you know bears don't attack people when you're in groups? Because well, I told you, they're scared. Of, if you're loud to them, they get scared. They don't. Want, they're bullies. If just they, so you know, if they have one or two, you know what I mean. If by you're that? by yourself or if you have two, they may attack. But do you think that includes if I have little kids with me? Does that count? If your woman is menstruating, you got problems. Just so you oh know. my god, that's a fact, homie. You could put that down, clip that off if you want. If your woman's menstruating, I wouldn't be cruising. Just so you know, for real. Just so you know. They smell that blood from miles away. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, dude. Yeah, what, That's a what, fact what, You don't check. know that. Look it up, Brody, real quick. Fact check is stupid <laughs> hey, Oh, yeah. His, his girl's going to see his search engine. Okay. <laughs> Women menstruating. <ministry. laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey. No, I'm telling you. Homie. I don't know about I'll, I'll, I'll double okay. check. Somebody will okay. let me know because everyone, okay. fa- I got fact checkers all over North America. I got okay. all over the world. Yeah, they suck. Those drivers, truck drivers driving in Saskatchewan. They, they don't get, text they, you. They get back to me. They text oh, me. Oh, my God. Get out of here. It was a truck driver in Saskatchewan that I sent you that message. Crushing, 1983, also reported that free-raging polar bears detected and consumed food sen- samples of used tampons, but ignored non menstruating human blood, unused tampons, and suggesting that polar bears are attracted to odors associated with menstrual blood. Thank you. That's a polar bear. They're the same thing. No, they're not. Okay. Yeah. Different that's, family. That's okay. a polar bear. So anyway, so all these... You're, you're so... So... 
listen, these cyclists were all oh, I standing there in the woods. Yeah, I saw it. And the Grizzlies come in. I know. And the Grizzlies just, don't care about them. Look, the Grizzlies like... And they were chill. Listen. So they would. He wouldn't attack. He could if he wants to, but he it's had, a lot. They no, had the bear spray was, though. They he the bear doesn't know you have bear spray. The bear is walking. I saw that exact video. They're on the path. Yeah. And they're all sitting there like just back up, and they're looking they're at like, him. Go the, away, bear. Hold on. They go. Duh, duh, duh. The bear just looks. I'm like, I'll fuck all you up. But I got berries over here, and there's a dead little fucking carcass. I'm just. You don't eat. know what he was thinking. Yeah, but. That's kind of what they are. Like, yeah. I don't need to fuck with you guys. There's too many of you. I'm going to go to this dead carcass over here. But if it was just you two, he'd be like, you know what? I could take that little dink boy out, and he's going to fucking grab your little dinky legs and fuck you up and step on you and crush your fucking sternum and then pick away at you when you die. Mm. So you know. Oh, my God. Good God, Andy. So, well, if I'm going to Colorado. Hey, can I tell you about cyclists again? These I, I don't mother- like how fuckers. you talk about these guys. These guys suck, dude. I can't. I, can you guys please explain to me? Why these cyclists are on these such, like, there's no shoulders on these roads. I almost got into three head-on collisions on a Sunday morning when I'm trying to go get breakfast for my wife. It's not the cyclist's fault. The people oh, in your not, community should right. have, they need, they, yeah, but they yeah, should yeah. have, especially out where you live, dude, where people are. Wealthy part? No, it's like, you know, people, where people go to, to, like, get outside and stuff like that if you want to, like, go on hikes and stuff. You know, out in the western part. Andy, it's really goofy. Dude, have a bike lane. There's not on no. your. That's yeah, terrible. But, yeah, but that's there's you, bike lanes. You go to in Colorado and whatever. Every every road has a not bike. Lane. Every road has a bike lane. Most. That would cost them out so much. You have no idea, dude. You can't just take Bassett Road. There's cliffs. I'll tell you this. In Denver, there these every, guys are nuts. In Denver, everywhere there's a bike lane everywhere. Man, I almost got a head-on collision because it's, I'm behind this woman and she's like me 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 and I'm like ah can I pass her? Can I? She's going two miles an hour and I finally do and all of a sudden the car guy has stop. I just stop like er and I pull back over. And she doesn't even look at me. And the guy flies by. I'm like, okay, can I do it again? And I try to go back again. Here comes hey. somebody else. Stop her. She doesn't even look at me. Let me give then you. Then I pass her. And I throw oh. my window and I go, I kind of look at her like, what? She just it completely ignores me. Like, I'm getting my workout in. I'm important. My workout's more important. You're head on collision. That's what she gave let the me, look. To, she l- gave me. Let me give you something to always remember. And if you want to like tape this on your uh, dash or whatever you want to do. <laughs> what, like, Andy? You want to wear like a dog, got a bumper sticker or a t-shirt, whatever it is. Coexist <laughs> bumper sticker that you have. <laughs> I don't have that on my. On Anybody my... that has a coexist bumper sticker. Oh, do not talk. Anybody that ha- I mean, seriously, coexist. I look at you and I'm like, yep. Okay. Okay. That's judging. I'm just saying. I judge everybody. Brian O'Reilly. I get judged every Brian single O'Reilly day. Brian O'Reilly says, judge not. His dad says. Nah. Don't, don't, I, don't, judge don't judge. My, I judge myself every fucking day and I know where I'm at. Pretty self-aware. I'm pretty self-deprecating. I know where I'm at with my shit. But I'll evaluate you too. I evaluate everybody. Okay, so who I work with, that's not who the I deal sticker with. I'm talking about. My wife, when I was trying to wheel Kate, you don't think I evaluated her left and right? Are you kidding? Okay, no, I evaluate people. Okay, so that's and all y'all should. That's not the bumper doesn't mean sticker that you don't hate what I was talking about. Uh, what I was gonna say, Joy One Hundred and One FM. <laughs> I was gonna rem- I was gonna tell you to remind yourself the that river. The, no, cyclists are part of the road. No, they're not. Bikes are part of the road. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Not. No, 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 no. Not when there's no bike lane. We're not talking about bike. We're talking well, what about. What are they supposed to do? Go to a park. No. They rode the road you cyclists. Are such a They're road nerd. cyclists. I don't give a shit. You know what you do? Head on collision. Three of them in a row. And this fucking chick doesn't even look at me and say, sorry about that. Pull the fuck over. Well, oh, that's... never mind. You can't because there's no fucking bike lane so you're in the middle of the road and i'm trying to pat they're going two miles an hour up a hill and i'm like do i pat what that's do i do ex- that's an exception with her I, I don't know what i don't know what went down with you two you had, did you have a gopro on or did she i'd like to see some know. video of this one of them is gonna get rocked dude well you better be careful i'm that. not i go 15 what, i drive slow as was shit. she weighed down her bike did she have a bunch of like uh packs and stuff like that like maybe she was <sighs> going like long distance and maybe long she was distance camping. she's in that wealthy house up on the hillside Trying to get a workout in hey, like she's Lance Armstrong. You know, one thing you do like is waggle golf, man. Oh, my God, dude. Did you see what I look like the other day? In your rooster gear? I got my rooster gear. I got oh, my... Oh, did you see my picture I put up? Yesterday? I had the whales going on. No one, no one oh, the saw sharks, it. No I one think. saw it. I think there were sharks. So, anyway, I got the uh, the other one on right now. The, yeah. That the crocodile. Gator, the gator. Yeah. They, yeah. Dude, they got the coolest shit. I'm telling you. I know. And it's fits so great. It's so comfortable. Fits amazing. No, you, you didn't see my Instagram story. The uh, Kate liked it, actually. And well, she's, I feel I, sorry for you. I had the shark. And the shark hat going on at the same time. You didn't see that? I mean, this is... Usually when you post something, I I usually know what it is. 
Let me see if I can find I f- it. I like all your stuff. I actually like your wife's stuff. I always give you an American flag as an emoji. Let me see. Let me look at that. Yeah, it looked good. Yeah, it yeah, looks I good like on it. you. Yeah. You Thank look good on that, yeah. dude. Thank you. looks good. Thank you. Why wouldn't you wear that shirt today? Why are you wearing the blue shirt? Because I just, I don't know. If I go out to the golf tournament, I will definitely put that on. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. what I have. Yeah. So I just didn't want to get it all. Like, why aren't you wearing yours? Right? Hey, don't call me out for that. Why aren't you wearing yours? I've been right on the radio for three hours. I'm no. going to sweat right through it. Yeah, exactly. Well, so. You don't have sweat glands. <laughs> Do you have like a real sweating issue? Is that like, has this been like yeah. uh, confirmed by, my whole by like yep. a medical professional? I don't fucking know. Okay. Waggle Golf. Get your waggle on.com. Cam, I've been telling everybody about this. And a lot of people are asking questions like, what, like, what is that? They're supposed to have a big new like announcement, I think, coming out today. Travis Baker and uh, all the boys over there with Waggle Golf. I certainly want. Some more clothes from them. Do you? They got awesome. Well, ass you got to reach out to Travis. I, well, I don't think he he's you know a huge fan of yours after the way you talked to him. What did I say to in him in the meeting where you asked him if he was a cake eater? Well, he's from Minnesota. Well, I that's didn't. A, I don't know if he understood that. I didn't understand. That's it. a that's a Mighty Ducks thing. I didn't know what you were talking about. Well, watch a movie. <laughs> I have seen the movie. Well, then figure it out. Okay. Well, so Travis cake Baker eater. has figured it you out. You are a cake eater. They got women's clothes. I can't wait for. Um, uh, cause I, 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 I will golf in like the, uh, fall when it's like cooler. Oh, out. will you? And I will wear those quarter zips they have. Have you seen the quarter zips? No, but I want one. I like when uh, you're golfing and you have to wear like long sleeves, man. Hell yeah. You know what? Time out. You know my favorite, it's my favorite time of the year. What mm-hmm. do you think it is? It's fall. 100%. It's, it's everybody. It's, 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 is it? Well, most people. Is it? Because I want to, I can't. Hey, you're going to tell me people in LA love fall? No, you don't. It doesn't matter to them. You tell me people in it fucking hot Florida in LA, like fall? They don't. It's the same. But people in Missouri have four seasons. I like fall because it looks Halloweeny. Mm-hmm. It's windy. It's 60 degrees. There's no humidity. The leaves are falling. It looks beautiful everywhere in Missouri. I like that. You can wear a sweatshirt. You can mm-hmm. wear this. You can wear that. You can golf. You can put a fire on at night. You can still jump in the water if you really want to. Well, you could be on the boat it's, and not be cold. It's, it, the it's, fall in Missouri is unbelievably beautiful. It's and Halloween's what? one of my favorite holidays. Halloweeny, I love it. I love Halloween too. I Although love it's too Halloween. much candy though. I, I don't like my kids getting all that candy. Well, though. you gotta. Yeah, I get that. You know what I mean? I know. I like, get that. I'm just not really. I, I can't believe we did that yeah, when we let, were kids. Let them like go enjoy getting stuff. I bet you mm-hmm. your fucking nerdy ass neighborhood hands out like, like Apple, pictures, apples, pictures of raisins, or raisins and like. <laughs> Air. They hand out air. Pictures of themselves. Pictures like a mask. Hey, They'll hand out masks. Hey, but I want to see some pictures from our listeners, man, wearing this waggle stuff, yeah, man. Yeah. And if you want to yeah. stand out or if you just want to like fit in, I don't know what you're looking to do at the golf course, but you want to be comfortable and you want to like wear something that's going to improve your performance because it's proven that it'll, it'll improve your uh, performance. You get the waggle golf stuff. Get your waggle on.com. That's the website. So go there and go there today. All right. Dan Bellman and uh, everybody over there at Bellman and Bellman.com. Yeah, man. man, Bellman Automotive in what town? Chai. Troy. <laughs> they got the Buick, the GMC cam on the other side of the street. They got the Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. I'm not going to lie. I'm looking at a Jeep. I've been looking online. I wouldn't mind to drive one of those. The problem is Which one. I want my wife to kind of drive it. Because I, I, I need something a little more size to it, you know, to haul, all, haul around all the hockey gear and stuff like that. But, um, you know, th- those are so nice, man. They drive like cars nowadays. The Buicks are amazing. The GMC, it goes without saying, man, that Denali is incredible. Cam's looking for a, uh, what are you looking for? A Denali? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the GMC. I want a quarter or a three-quarter ton GMC Denali. I could, I could, I could haul a big thirty-three foot cobalt. That's very deep V. Mm-hmm. That's really heavy. Three-quarter ton. I want a three-quarter ton. No dually. But do they do they team. come in a ton size? Can you get them a half ton, a quarter ton, and yep. a three-quarter ton and a ton? Yep, yep, yep. Andy. Wow. You know your trucks, don't you? Well, Bellman has everything. No, I don't know my trucks. I know you don't very well. I do not. But car, you know, pickup trucks have changed over the years. Where I, I would absolutely. You know, I certainly had no problem driving one now. I love them. Oh, and now the, the pickup trucks. And now that I'm going to the country music concert with Cam and Kate, they're coming with us um, this am Friday I, night. Am I driving too? Oh, yeah, that's going to happen. No, you're going to get dropped off. I'm going to get dropped off also. Chloe's got a soccer game till about 7, then we're going to go straight there. Her game's right down the street. So Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to really cater you that night, Andy. Yeah, no, it's great. We'll I'm going to get the tickets. I'm going to set it all up. I'll buy everything, and then I'll take you down there, and then I'll wait for Chloe to get done with us, and then we'll go to the... Yeah, no, we're sense. meeting you there, because you said you're going to get dropped off. 
Man, I'm probably not going now. I think about it. Why? Because now I have to do a bunch of shit, you and do I don't it. like to do shit. I like to, to get it. hooked up by other people. Why yeah. am I hooking okay. you up? Well, then I'll hook you up. I'll hook no, you well then do it then. No problem. Because like, I, like every time I go to a concert, I never do anything. Okay. Somebody always hooks me up. No, we'll I'm hook privileged. You up. We'll I told you. Up. We'll hook you. I got privilege. No problem. I didn't. I didn't earn it. Say hi My mom and dad are rich. Say hi to Danny. Hey, Danny, man. What up, man? Hey, Danny, you know what I'm talking about with that. I want that fat-ass fucking cobalt, and I need a truck to, to haul that goddamn thing. I want to put it in Mark Twain Lake. I want to put it in Table Rock Lake, Danny. And I want a fat-ass, badass Denali, all blacked out. And I want a three-quarter ton. That's a fucking shit kicker. And you, and, and you know, when you go to uh, Bellman, you don't get any... Uh, Swinging fucking dicks. Yeah. Swinging their dick when they come out. Get out of my face. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I hate that. I know. Swinging their dick. Want to bother you? don't got that much money. Came, blah, blah, blah. Shut up, mm. idiot. That doesn't happen at Bellman, dude. They're Bellman Automotive, baby. There. Bellman and Bellman.com. Of course, Mars Blade, get those roller blades, man. I saw Austin Matthews has like a new like teal color, like the Austin Matthews version yeah. of the Mars Blade. So, you know, you check that one out, too. I got a lot of people asking me about the Mars Blade. Ty's been cruising around on those Mars Blades, too. Toe dragging them cougars. You don't got no cougars in your subdivision. Oh, lots of them. Unfortunately, hell, I bet. Yeah, lots of them. I bet you do. And right when you get out of my subdivision, like all around there. Yeah, we're on so what, Highway 40? No, yeah. it's a little... <laughs> the homeless on Highway 40? <laughs> highway 40. I don't live that close yeah, to the highway. you do? No. You could hear Highway 40 from your house. No. You're right by the shack. What are you talking about? I can't hear Highway 40. Yeah, you can, dude. You're a mile away from a highway. I got a school in my backyard. Yeah, you hear school kids. And then you hear the highway. No, because they're far away, too. you hear too. a curry boy it's down the road. It's the football field. I like your backyard. You got a nice little setup, man. But your neighborhood's fucking goofy. It's very private. I mean, okay. It's very you, you telling me a, a private neighborhood? Yeah, you got golfers <laughs> looking through your windows. No one's, dude. They, no are, one, they are cruising, nobody. looking at they're looking at Kate. I know what they're doing. Okay. Well, they probably are. <laughs> you don't have okay. a problem with that. I don't care. What, are you going to wheel her? I'll <laughs> shake your hand. <laughs> You know, wheel away Mars from Blade. Shake your fucking hand. Marsblade.com. Go check that out. Get yourself a set of new wheels. Use right, your wheel. Let's get to uh, our boy uh, Pat Rubik, man. Unbelievable interview, man. An icon. It was very interesting to uh, hear his philosophy on running a team and just the game in general. So enjoy this. Yeah. Pat Verbeek. No on ball hate. The Cam and Strick podcast. No what? L- little ball hate. Oh, yeah. Little yeah. ball hate. The Cam and Strick podcast is brought to you by Car Shield. You know, nothing more frustrating, Cam, than when that engine light comes on and you know right off the bat you're going to have to spend thousands oh. of dollars <gasps> to repair your vehicle. Call 800 857 2481. Mention the promo code CAM mm. or visit carshield.com and use the code CAM to save 10%. Yeah. That's carshield.com. A deductible may apply. Save yourself money. Cam. Sign up and get your coverage now Cam. with carshield.com. Cam. Now to the Cam. interview. Hello. Pat. Hey. <laughs> hey. How you doing, bud? How are you? I'm good. It's amazing. I answered the phone. I know. Hey. I know. Isn't that amazing? Like that's what happens. Now now you're see now you're a general manager. They yeah. make you they make you talk to people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take advantage of that. Well they don't make you they don't make you. you know. <laughs> no, that's true. Hey, where are you at right now, man? Actually, I'm in Michigan right now. I actually just kind of left my uh, farm and I was training my dogs uh, on the water and just doing a bunch of different hunting stuff with them. That's right down my alley right there, Pat. Oh, we, come we, on, Andy. We can talk about training. Do- what do you mean training the dogs? What are you training them to do? Yeah. Well, there's lots of uh, commands as far as, you know, they, when they fetch, uh, they have to be disciplined to... Uh, if they're, I got one's a pointing dog, so I'm, I've been working on him to, when the bird flushes, he's, he's got to stand still. He can't chase after the bird. So he's supposed to hold his point and remain still and then shoot the bird. And then you release him to go get do that. So that's a, that's a process. So anyway, so I was kind of working through that today. What kind of dogs? Are they like Gordon Setters? Uh, German uh, Shepherds? This one, 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 the one I have a, I have a yellow lab, but the, the pointing dog's a Deutsch Drahar. Mm. So they're kind of a, they can hunt a lot of different things. They can hunt rabbit. They can blood trap. They're, they're like, my dog's like a, is an incredible swimmer. Um, so they, you know, they, they, they swim where well, they retrieve ducks, geese, um, uh, and they point so I can hunt pheasant and quail and any kind of, you know, land bird with them. So yeah. I, they're, so it's a lot of fun. Okay. So. When you say pointing dog, what, what, does that mean like you point? The dog points, Andy. God. The dog points. Yes, the dog points. Explain what the, the explain point. that, Pat. 
What do you mean? So the dog? when the dog when the dog senses and smells game, he'll lock up. A lot of birds will hold. They'll hold. They won't fly. Because usually if they, they if they know they fly they die. So what happens if they you know they they'll hold, and they won't move a lot of times until until the um, the the dog flushes them or the human being flushes them. So when you have a point dog, you want him he you want him to hold that game there till you get there, and then you flush the bird, you shoot it, and he retrieves it. That's the that's the point of it. And he's a city boy, just so you know. No, Patty. I need one of he's these. He's a city boy. Uh, I need a pointing dog is what I... Hey, are you going to be able to do all this out in Anaheim? Like, is this more like... Oh, like... uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah. There's um, there's lots. That's one of the first things I did when I, you know, took the job was to make sure that I could hunt. And they got lots of quail hunting uh, in, uh, in uh, California. So what's your farm so, like? What's your place like in Michigan? Like your farm? How many acres you got? Like, you, you seem uh, like... It's 165 acres. It's got uh, it's got two lakes on it. One's 55 acres, uh, and the other one's like a four acre lake. And then the rest is uh, basically it's uh, it's hay ground. So I I was just out there today. The farmers uh, the farmer was cutting the hay for the season. So when I turn this thing into a bird farm, like a bird hunting place, he won't be there. Won't be any hay getting cut. Now, all that grass is going to be cover for the birds, so that they can stay away from predators like hawks yeah yeah so, man i see that in my backyard all the time i could I, you seem like the kind of guy andy like the complete opposite of us like he'll like <laughs> protect us in the woods like he could you know survive in the woods like when joey coaster we had him on, <laughs> yeah. and he's like chopping actually uh chopping you wood. guys have been chopping wood like when we've had when we've had these uh these interviews a couple of guys have been like chopping <laughs> wood bear hunting yeah. i mean are you are you like are your hunting friends are they former players are they people that you that you hang out with that are outside of the game uh I hang out with other guys outside the game. Most of them, most of them, actually, I got a couple, you know, I hang out with Gibson a lot. We hunt together. Um, so he, we both, we both hunt. We like to hunt as as well. Wow. So, and he's, uh, he lives close to where I live. I love it. Kirk Gibson. So, what a legend. Legend. He went with that. I, I, I hunt with guys. I got a bunch. Yeah. I got a I got a bunch of guys that you know that away from the game that I that I'm friends with and that I hunt with yeah yeah I love it did you grow up doing this like where where'd you grow up no no I didn't uh, I didn't grow up doing this at all I got into it because my uh, the the girl I married um, her her uh, her dad was a big hunting so they they loved to hunt deer and and uh, they did some pheasant hunting it was mostly deer deer hunting so. Uh, but I ended up getting into the pheasant, and then I got into the turkey hunting, so and duck hunting, and I I love bird hunting. I'm not not really a big deer hunter. I don't uh, I don't uh, I don't like doing that too much. But well, I like I like deer hunt or uh, bird hunt. Well, I kind of want you to like deer hunting though, Patty, because I want you to come out where, where I live and kill some of these deer, so I don't kill them with my truck driving to work every morning. <laughs> they are so overpopulated yeah. here; it's crazy, man. Where are you at? St. Albans, Missouri, kind of in a, forty minutes okay. outside of. Um, Oh, St. Yeah. Louis in the middle of the woods, man. Yeah. So, like, God, every time I come in, I got a radio show at early in the morning, so it's dark outside. They're everywhere. It's crazy, man. Yeah. I got to go 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Yeah, no, there's, 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 I see plenty of them on my farm. So, yeah. uh, I see lots of them running through. So, I know I got people calling me up to want to hunt a place, but we'll see about that. Are you, are you a shotgun guy or are you a, are you a bow and arrow? No, no, I have, I have a boat, but I just, I just don't, uh, I just don't do it. I really don't. Yeah. yeah. I've done black powder. I've done black powder, a rifle, got a shotgun, you know, slug, rifled slug. Yeah. I just don't do it. I'd rather spend more time chasing birds. Yeah, no, I'm with you. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. It's really interesting. Hey, I'm just curious because, like, the way you play, man, you were so aggressive yeah. and you played with so much intensity and emotion, like, did, was this something you did as a player? Did this help you kind of relax and take your mind off the games? No, I really didn't start doing any of this stuff till I was uh, finished playing hockey. So I kind of picked it up at about 38. Oh, there started, you go. Know, yeah, started learning how to shoot a shotgun. Um, you know, I knew how to shoot and all that stuff, but it wasn't, you know, I wasn't any good at, you know, uh, at being able to, you know, hit anything, you know, so that, that took some time. 
So hockey, man, I was, was, was hockey just like, I'm just curious, you know, like, were you obsessed with the game as a kid? Like, how did you, you know, kind of come to the realization that this is something that you could make a life out of? Like, how old were you when you, when you just started really just dominating the game? Uh, well, I, I knew at seven, at seven years old, I knew what I wanted to do. I didn't know if I could do it, but I knew what I wanted to do. Um, I was, I loved it. I couldn't get enough of it. How was your mom and dad? Were you close with them? What'd they do? Um, uh, well, they're, um, uh, I mean, my, my parents actually are 80 years old. They're still working hard. Uh, my mom runs a big pork operation and my dad kind of oversees the day-to-day -day operation of a 70 acre greenhouse. Um, as well as, uh, with, with him and I, uh, we kind of run uh, a couple thousand acres in Canada. So we're, you know, I, I didn't get to get back. I had my job kind of gotten away, but I usually get back in the, in the springtime and I help put crops in the ground. So, um, you know, I get a big kick out of doing that. I like doing that. What so, kind of what kind of crops are we talking? You're a farmer he's doing too. God's work, Andy, I mean, you're so doing. You know, uh, we, uh, I don't, how do you have time for all this, Pat? <laughs> well, you know, with the equipment we have, you can do you can get a lot done in three or four days. So, um, I have we have um, we grow corn and soybeans and wheat. Nice. And those, hey, Andy, those. That equipment he's talking about yeah. is very, very expensive, okay. isn't it? <laughs> are you? Yeah, it's, uh, it is. It are, certainly is. Are you selling the corn and the wheat? Like, what do you do with it? Actually, my dad uses it for uh, for feed for our for our pigs for our twenty five hundred sow operation. Man. So he uses he uses that as as a way to uh, we we sell our soybeans, uh, you know, to to market and our wheat. Uh, as well to market so um but the corn we keep can, can we do the next interview on the farm just just yeah, so we can see what's going on you got pig what else do you have besides pigs uh that was about it uh, we have my mom used to used to have a couple horses but uh not anymore okay so we just uh it's, it's primarily uh well, it's all pigs, to be honest with you. Horses are a pain in the ass anyway, and expensive. <laughs> hey, hey, you know some of those trail cams uh, that you probably have out all over your farm, though? You see anything? Yeah, I don't have any out there. Oh, no, really? Not yet. I was going to say, yet. you no. see anything weird out there? Like any bears creeping down, any mountain lions? No, any... no, no not, not this neck of the woods. Not yeah. yet. Not yet. Not yeah. yet. They migrate. Uh, coyote, coyotes. Coyotes. Yeah, I see them all the time. They're beady eyes in the uh, in the distance. They're looking for my dogs. They want my dogs to go roam around at night, and it's not happening. They'll yeah. they'll lure them out and get them. It's coyotes. Yes, they will. They're they're uh, yeah, they're sneaky. They're mm. sneaky son of a guns. Yeah, they are. Hey, listen, like uh, everyone's always made a point of you being like undersized and calling you the little bit, you know, a little ball of hate and all that type of stuff. But is that your natural personality? I mean, to just like kind of have that underdog yeah. mentality and just, go. you know, just, you know, always like ready to take on whatever challenge comes your way. Well, I, I think, um, I think my temperament was, I just didn't, I didn't like uh, getting pushed around. And so you, you got two things, two ways to handle it. Either you, you deal, you either deal with it, either run away or you, you face it head on. And I, chose to rather face it head on <laughs> rather than uh, run away. And yep. you feel like, hey, because you were a smaller player? I mean, because, listen, I'm watching some of your fights. You're fighting, like, I mean, some of the biggest guys every in the game. Every scrum, he's in the middle of every Yeah, scrum. I know, I know. Like, I whether it's, it. whether, you know, Hatcher or Lindros or whoever you're fighting, you know, like big guys. So uh, it, I, used, I, used, I used to piss them off. <laughs> <laughs> would they take try to take advantage of you, though? Like, is that what would piss you off because you're small? Maybe uh, Not really. I got I think I think they just got annoyed with me being small and annoying the hell out of them. You know, I think that's probably more than anything. And so that's what probably caused a lot of it. Did you know when you had a guy, you were under his skin and you could just get him off his game and own him for the entire game? Like, did you just have that feeling? Uh, yeah, you knew when you could kind of, you know, pull guys out of their element or you could, you could actually you could – um, you could get them, you could get them to, to where, you know, you, you could, you know, um, you had them yourself, you know what I mean? Where, where you, I wouldn't say like not owning their show, but it was, you know, you, you got the best of them in their you know, kitchen. And you could, 
you got in their kitchen. Yeah, you got in their kitchen and it either took them off their game or it it took their will to win away, which is what I was trying to accomplish anyway. Yeah, and you could see that in hockey too. And it's such a weird thing to say, but no, you could see it in their eyes when you when you have that power. But you weren't dirty though, like you know, you weren't talking shit the that whole time. That was a little bit. Yeah, but everybody <laughs> was. Well, yeah, but you stuck your stick. But you know what I mean, though. You weren't like chirping every time. Getting you just played no, hard. I didn't. I didn't like chirping. I never, never saw any use for that. Um, just, I just wanted to play hard. Yeah, man. And play, you know, right to the edge of the rules. Sometimes I crossed over. Damn right. Hey, you think that's a lost art in today's game? I mean, do you do you see anybody that yeah. that you said, hey, man, he kind of resembles. How I played yeah. and what I did, and and I I would have loved to play with that guy when I was playing. Well, I would say Marchand plays that way now. Yeah. Um, you know, he's but he you know he he can he can beat you a bunch of ways. He can get under your skin, or he can just flat out beat you with his talent. Um, and there's a few other guys that you know that kind of you know they're very similar to that, but it's. Um, the temperament of today's players isn't quite like that anymore. They're, um, and part of it's kind of been, um, as the, you know, as, as our game has kind of developed or evolved, you know, with the rules and all of that stuff, it doesn't, um, doesn't allow. So kids, kids can't get away with things that they used to be able to get away with, you know, or, you know, they're penalized. And if they're penalized, they're penalized severely. Like, you know, When you look at the OHL, like it, you know, some things that we would never get suspended for, they're, you're, they 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 bring guys up for five to ten games, and so you become so it's kind of um, it's kind of pushed out of you. So you learn not to not to play that side, and when you do find a player that can kind of um, handle and understand the line, um, it he's very valuable. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, God. So, like, when you're scouting and you're watching these teams and juniors and shit, and you're watching a kid, say you see a kid, and he's got that. He's got that emotion. It reminds me of you a little bit, the aggression, the emotion on the ice. And maybe he's a little slow-footed. Are you like, okay, we're going to have to work with this kid. He's got everything else. We're going to work with his feet. Because that's, so, just like Andy says, kind of a lost start. Like, you don't see that that, uh, that much with these young players. So, you kind of, like, go a little bit overboard to maybe uh, you know take one of these kids under their wing if they're a little bit slow, but they got that attitude. Well, I think it's that's whole. You know, I, I think that's the game of amateur scouting when you're when you're watching these players. Um, you know, can you? Um, that's part of the projection. You know, can you fix their skating? Um, you know, is it is it is it do they have slow feet or or is it a function of them not being strong enough? to be able to make them skate fast. You know, a lot of these times these kids are, are growing so fast, you know, at that age and, uh, and they don't have time to, you know, they're training, but they, they, it takes their body a while to catch up to, to themselves, you know? So, um, and so that's, that's part of the projection and that's part of, you have to really kind of dial into, um, you know, to find, to see what, what the kid's all about. Hey, do you love scouting? I mean, you, you you have to love it, right? I mean, if you're truly going to be good at it and put in the necessary time and work to, yeah. to see players and, and truly, you know, watch and evaluate them, I mean, you, you, you have to love it, right? Like, like, what do you look for in a scout on your staff? Well, I um, usually you like former players, but you don't have to be, you know what I mean? Like, um, you just got to be able to notice uh, traits that you're looking for, you know? So, you know, how smart is the guy, you know, um, you know, you look at a skill, you know, I think a couple of things, you know, it's like, you know, is the compete there, you know, you look, you have to, you know, you look for those things as well. So, um, you know, so I, you try when you interview scouts, you ask them, what are they, you know, what are they, what are they like, you know, in players and, and, um, you know, can you tell me that, you know, what sorts of players you just kind of go through the process of asking them um, what they're looking for, what types of players, what types of players they, they think have been successful. Um, 
and then you just kind of let them go to work and see what they can do. Hey, let me ask you something. You drafted by the Devils, you know, uh, early 80s. Lou wasn't there yet. You're playing for the Devils, and then he finally comes, I guess, in, like, what, 87 he came? Like, explain that. How was your relationship with him? What was it like pre-Lou, uh, you know, uh, compared to post-Lou? And when he walked in that locker room, like, did you guys you guys have a good relationship going? Um, Lou was um, – when Lou came in, we were, uh, we were kind of knocking on the door – um, we weren't quite, we weren't quite ready. Um, and so Luke kind of gave us the confidence to believe in ourselves when he, when he came up, like Max McNabb was, um, was our general manager at the time. And, uh, and so I think Lou just kind of saw what we were all about, saw that we were a team that was hungry, but didn't quite know how to go about it. And, uh, he brought in some brought in some couple of different players and, and uh, kind of changed our makeup and and uh, and we took off from there. He make you shave yeah, and do all say, that stuff back then? Keep your jerseys untucked. <laughs> same kind of color tape with socks. Like, was he like that in the late 80s? Uh, Lou was, uh, I would say very, yeah, Lou was, Lou ran a tight ship. Um, it's funny, it kind of when you're a player and now when you're kind of a manager, you kind of really have an appreciation for what Lou did, yeah. you know? Uh, um, and, uh, and I appreciate it more. I just wish I would have appreciated it more back then. You know, you just kind of, when you're a young kid and being told what to do, sometimes that's not always fun either. Right. So, <laughs> um, so, but Lou, Lou, uh, Lou's very smart. Uh, obviously he's, he, you know, he's running the Islanders, and he, um, you know, I just got a ton of respect for him, a um, ton of respect for him. So why did you get traded then? I mean, that, like, you're like his perfect kind of player, you know? Like, it just doesn't – so when you were traded, was it like, uh, whoa, like, well, why did he trade you? Well, back then I was a little more um, confrontational, and so I don't think Lou saw that as a, as a positive at that particular time. Um, and – and so that's why he moved me. So that's why I think he moved me. Congress. I never actually, I never really actually sat there and asked him why he traded me. But I, if I had to guess, that would have been it. What do you mean by that though? Like confrontational, like, uh, you know, he's like, well, like uh, what? contract, contract wise. Okay. Oh yeah. Contract oh, wise. there it is. Well, we've heard a lot of guys that, oh, had, yeah. and that's why they ended up getting moved <laughs> oh, out of yeah. New Jersey. So it, it, <laughs> it, all, yeah, yeah. it oh, all now come, it makes sense. And now it all makes sense. <laughs> Hey, you played with Shanahan in in Jersey, then played with them later in your career, almost at the end of your career with Detroit. Like, yeah. like, did yeah. you did you see yeah. him being that guy, like having the career that he had? And how tight were you guys? Uh, Shanny was very like he was eighteen, um, just kind of he was just kind of feeling his way into the league the first year. Or so, um, and then I ended up getting traded, so I I, I knew Shanny briefly. So it wasn't like um, you know we had. Uh, you know, but anyway, I played with him in Detroit. Um, did I see, I think Shanny, Shanny learned a lot when he got, when he went to the blues and he watched, um, watched Brett Hall score goals. Oh, yeah. That's kind of when, that's kind of when he took off. Like for me, like I had, you know, I was listening to another hockey channel later, you know, earlier today and they were talking, Wayne Gretzky was talking about, uh, was talking about Mike Bossy and Mike Bossy was the guy who really showed me how to score goals. Like, you know, I, I, you know, we all, you know, guys who make it to the NHL at score goals that, you know, they, they could really score goals in junior. Um, but when I got to the NHL, it wasn't so easy, right? I had to, it's almost like you had to learn again on how to do it. And I had two people show me, you know, one was Mike Bossy who seemed to light us up when I was my first and second year in New Jersey. I swear to God, he had a hat trick every time that he played us. Um, and then, you know, Chico Rest, Chico Rest told me about Pat for NHL goalies. It's all about height. You know, the height, how high you shoot the puck. It's either, it's either eight, nine inches off the ice or it's under the bar. Yep. And, and as soon as I started, you know, uh, really dialing in my, uh, my height of my shots, that's when goals started to go in. And, mm. and then, kind of started working on quick release, but it was Mike Bossy, you know, um, and it was Holly that taught Shanny, you know, in my opinion, 
Chuck Cheney on the release score. Yeah, no, they were only amazing, got us man. all in the hockey here in St. Louis, <laughs> just so you know. And Patty. both both scoring yeah. fifty goals at the same same time, oh, it's shit. it's crazy. Yeah. Is there is there a veteran yeah. guy though, like who you who you know when you first came in, like who took you under your wing or under their wing, and um, and really made that lasting impact and, and impression on you? Well, I had a couple guys in New Jersey, so like when I came in there, it was like I was eighteen and then turning nineteen. Um, you know, we had a we had a good bunch of guys like uh you know i could start like you know ron Lowe, uh you know who's a goalie uh chico resh like mel bridgman like bill russell don lever um you know bobby lormer who i sat beside you know joel quinville like i there was just so there was just so many guys you know and they all you know they all they all took care of me you know in in, in, di- in different ways and so it was, it was, um, it was good. It was, it was good. And I was a cocky little bugger too. And, and, uh, <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I'm sh- they used to have fun with me at times anyway. Yeah, no, oh, I'm I sure. know that game. I'm sure. Hey, listen, you're crazy durable too, man. You played over 1400 games Jesus. for the kids who don't know. You need to look this guy up. I mean, he played over 1400 games and, and obviously had an unbelievable career, but like, uh, were you playing ever playing through like crazy injury? Like, what what do you credit towards being able to uh, you know to be available and healthy yeah. as often as you were? Uh, no, I really didn't really have. Uh, I don't know. I was just. I wouldn't. Say, I you know the injuries I had. I probably you know. Um, you know I tore my MCL, like tore a cartilage, which cost me a little bit of time. Um, uh, actually, this they're not uh, separated shoulder, but other than that, those like those cost me, you know, a few chunks of game. But, you know, I, I, other than that, I didn't miss much, you know, and sure. I mean, there was times, you know, you get through, you know, you had, you had, some, you know, you were sore, or it was painful, but, um, just once I got through it and I was able to kind of get a couple days under my belt without having a game, I, I could, my body would heal up and I would, I'd be fine. They'd be able to keep going. Yeah, man, you grinded through it. Hey, let me ask you like, uh, you know, you went down, you four checked hard, you hit guys, you played mean with emotion. And you know, when you hit guys like that, Pat, like guys are going to try to hit you back and they're going to catch you. Like, who scared you? Not scared. I shouldn't say scared, because every time I say it, they're like, no one's scared. But, like, who? Uh, you know what I'm fiercest, talking about. The fiercest competitor was probably Scott Stevens um, mm-hmm. to play that I played against. Um, you know, he was he was really strong. Um, probably a guy that really scared me was Ben Wilson. I got oh. to play against him. Oh, 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 oh big boy. <laughs> he, was probably, he was probably one guy that, that really – literally scared me one, one night thank god the referee got in there fast like hit, hitting so wise or like just he's gonna grab you and pump no you. like you didn't know what he was gonna yeah. do you know what yeah. i mean you yeah. might you might piss him off and you just didn't know like he may be okay with it or he might not be okay with it you just never knew <laughs> you just never knew. you know you never know um but scott stevens was he, was he was tough i mean he was strong he would compete just as hard as you did would work as hard as you did so it was I, I had you know when I played against him I had to really prepare well mentally um, to understand uh, to know that I was what I was going to face that night it, it was going to be hard and I had to prepare myself for it to be hard yeah he'll hurt you man hey do you ever catch him with his head down like do you ever like find a way to get some of these big guys where they're just kind of cruising uh, the, fence you know I mean? kind of, the fence are kind of hard to keep catch you know you'd have to you'd have to really hunt them down. Like, you know, if they're coming behind a net, yeah. you kind of sneak out out of the pack. Uh, it, it's a little more def- hard to catch defensemen with their head down. Yeah. He's got his head up the whole time anyway, and he'll reverse hit you too and probably put you on your yeah. ass. Yep. I yeah. Yeah. I used to do that too. That works real well. Do you tell kids that by uh, the way, Pat, like these young kids, and I say that all the time because you could always brace yourself when somebody tries to hit you. And even if you put them down, like, you're not going to get a penalty on that. And anytime you try to hit a guy and they're braced for it, like, it sets you back as a hitter. Like, you don't oh, want to yeah. hit that oh, guy yeah. again. Yeah it's, yeah, it's that law of physics that uh, for every action, there's an equal and opposite <laughs> one. So yeah. you have to kind of – you have to be re- know that if the 
guy you're hitting, you know, he could be braced and ready. But I, I always tried to do that, like, you know, be ready. Yep. No, I knew when I was going to get hit. Um, but, I, you know, it's kids now, like, you know, I watch them go into the boards. They get hurt. They don't know how to go into the boards. Oh. And they certainly don't, they don't protect themselves uh, very well when they do go into the boards. Uh, part of it is I don't think they expect, you know, that they're going to expect to get hit is part of the one thing. And or they're expecting the guy that's on them to follow the rules. Well, not everybody follows the rules. So, <laughs> um, you know, and, and unfortunately, sometimes they, they get they get hit and they get hurt because they're, they, they didn't protect themselves very well. Hey, you were in Hartford for a long time, man, and 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 obviously had some success there. But but then you come to New York, and I know you weren't there very long. But I mean, you look at some of the names you played with there, with Messier and Leach and Robotai and Graves and all these guys, man. It's just it's an impressive group of players. Like like just that one full season there with the Rangers. How, how did that impact your your entire career being around those guys and specifically Messier? Like was he a, was he that leader yeah. for you? Like he's got such a strong reputation, and we've had him on before. Like. Well, what was it like from your your you know vantage point being in the room with them? Yeah, Matt, Matt's had, um, he was really inclusive. Um, um, he certainly handled players that he knew could um, that could be better. Um, he handled each one of them differently. Um, sometimes in front of the room, sometimes privately. Um, I learned a lot from him. Um, you know, as a leader, um, certainly uh, different different people um, you know, go through that, you know, play in that role. And, and, uh, and so, yeah, I learned a lot. Um, it was a good team, I, you know, playing for the, you know, playing for the Rangers at the time. I was probably disappointed. I came the year after they won the cup. Um, uh, was a good team. The next year I played there was a really good team. Um frustrated uh you know i played with a couple teams i probably should have won a few more cups that was probably a team that i could have won a cup with probably could have won another cup with a team in dallas and then even with one in detroit when yep. i played there yep. so yep. um there is you know it's it's funny to win to win that thing you got to be good but you know certain things have to work out you got to be you know you got to have some luck too you know yep. um and so like i look at that and, you know i would like probably could, would have liked to have, you know, at least two more cups than, than what I won. Yeah, I know, man, because you, you, you were on some great teams. Yeah. But you're playing with Brian Leach, and you also play with Zubov. Like, like Zubov, who's in the Hall of Fame now, you know, like he just seems like he's one of the most underrated players. <laughs> yeah. Like people just don't realize how great he was. Leach got so much attention. Was there that much separation, if any, between the two players? Well, they played different games. Um uh, Zuby kind of played more of a, way, a layback, um, he'd carry the puck, but he can thread, you know, thread the needle, um, uh, really cerebral when he played, um, you could see, when I tell you, you could see everything was going on. He could see everything. He, his vision was, was incredible. And we'd be yelling at him at some time to move the puck. I distinctly remember in, uh, in, uh, in Dallas, uh, and then he'd make a play, and we go, "Oh, that was a good play." We didn't see that play. Yep. <laughs> we didn't see that one, but he did, you know. So it was like he was incredible, and he was hard to forecheck because if he got, he got if he got his skates turned up ice, he he could look you off, and he wouldn't be moving. He might be moving at about one mile an hour, and he could, you know, he could just shimmy you, and he, you'd skate right by him, and you miss him. And he and he continued. He was he, he was incredible. And Leachy kind of played more of a, a skating game, um, you know, where he was able to really, you know, carry the puck up ice and then you know make plays off off the rush and off you know with speed. Um, that's where uh, Leachy was really good at. So they were they were really good players, but different types of players. You know, they they played the game differently. Yeah, you, you, it's so funny. Some of these players, man, you're right on that. Like you don't notice them until you have that meeting the next day and like he has to puck the whole damn game and you just you don't notice like Brian Leach you see him he's flashy but Zuby you kind of have to watch it the next day and be like yeah he dominated this damn game <laughs> but let me ask you something um you know of all the teams like you know the, the the Rangers team that was really good you didn't make it i know the Dallas team i guess you were on when they lost to the Jersey in 2000 and then you play for that Red Wings team so out of those teams that you probably could have won like which was a 
the best team where you look back on that and you're like, how the hell did we not win? Uh, uh, well, probably, uh, I would say, pro- well, 90, 2000, trying to think of it was the 2000, the 99, 2000 team was really good in Detroit. And then 95, 96 team was really good. Um, and probably, I have, those teams were fairly equal in the sense of uh, how good they were and how good we were in the league, you know, and just, you know, we had, we had, a, we just, it just, things didn't go right. You know, they just, you got every bounce that went wrong. Yep. And, and when they don't go right, it's, 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 uh, you know, when you win, those things go right for you, you know, and when they don't, you know, it, it's just, certain little plays that you sit there and think about and you go, well, man, I could have done that play a little better. You know, if this play only would have happened, you know, this, this would have happened, you know, it's just, it's a fine line of between winning and losing. And then you can look at a few plays and that make the difference in a series. Yeah. And it's great. It's goaltending too, as we all know. Oh, and yeah. you had Eddie Belfort there in, in Dallas. I mean, when you got there, did you already know he, he was what, what he was? I mean, or did, or did he just blow you away in terms of, you know, just how he was playing well, when he was in Dallas? Like, his level of play was incredible. Well, I, you know, I, I didn't um, – I, I knew he was a good goalie. Um, you know, I played against him in Chicago. Um, but didn't really understand the competitor that was underneath all of that equipment, like fierce competitor, fierce, and didn't didn't know that, you know. That, that was so. There was one thing that I didn't realize that it was that, um, you know. And so, uh, part of that before, I mean, Ed had Ed had to go through, you know, a process of learning how to win too, because Ed Ed had a fiery temper and uh, very highly competitive. And at times he could get bothered in the crease and it would, it would throw him off his game. And it probably came, it became prevalent in the Detroit series when we lost in the semifinals that one year, uh, the year before we ended up winning the cup, Detroit ended up going on to win the cup that year. Um, and the next year Ed came with a completely different de- demeanor, uh, a completely different self-control um, that nothing bothered him. He could he he could be punched in the head. He could do anything, and it and he, he remained calm and steady and under control. And he never lost his focus. And at times it was tested in the playoffs, and he never wavered. And uh, obviously made some uh, some incredible saves in the you know keep the game tied at times and, and uh, allowed us enough time to be able to beat Hasek, who was at the same time a hell of a goalie himself. Hey, let me ask you, uh, all these these Dallas stars, that, that, that team, I mean, we've had Belfour on, we've had Moto, we've had Hatch, we've had Geek Carbon. We've had all these guys on. Like, when you, and you were established, when you walked in that locker room, were you like, okay, and Holly, by the way, were you like, I'm going to go sit in the corner and maybe not say much. There's so much personality in that locker room. Who ran the show? Who set everything up? Were you? Was it kind of intimidating, uh, even though you're a little bit older, walking in a locker room like that? No, not not really. Um, not really. I think uh, we were an older team, but I think what was the beauty about that team was guy different guys could step up and lead. Yeah, guys could take turns. So it was never it was never really one guy that was relied on to lead the team. It was never really one guy. Um, you know, they had to get up and say something. It, it came from all over the room. And if you looked inside that room, there was a lot of former captains on the team. So it was, um, and everybody was comfortable with their role. Everybody understood, you know, that they could, you know, voice their opinion when it needed to be. Um, and so it was, it was a, a very unique room in the sense that uh, there was lots of leadership and, and the team was focused, you know, on winning and didn't want to let anything uh, distract from that goal. Hey, what did Holly bring to the table? <laughs> and, like, his his personality, like, 
and, I, and I'm sure you knew him a little bit before he got there anyway, but uh, did, do you have to, like, does it take some time to get used to, or do you just embrace it right away? He was actually, uh, yeah, he, he was actually quite tame, I think, uh, for the, that initial year. Um, and then maybe next the next year, not so much. But anyway, he, he, he actually took a year to become comfortable on, on the team. So anyway, <laughs> he was good. He was good. But he, I mean, he provided, you know, goal scoring that, you know, we, had, we hadn't seen before, you know. And, and um, you know, with Lettinen and Madonna and him as a line, it was a phenomenal line. They could check you, but they could also – they could also rip a bunch of goals on you too, so it was uh, it was quite a line. What about Hitch? I, <laughs> did you like Hitch? Like of all the coaches you played, you played for. I mean, we had him on. You won with Hitch. Like, what was your relationship like with um, him? Hitch, Hitch was uh, well. Hitch could get under your skin, um, and you know that was kind of done on purpose um, at times, um, just to kind of bring the raw emotion, you know, um, out of you that needed, you know, that needed to be brought out of you. Um, and, but I think one of the really good things about Hitch, you know, when we, um, was with the way he could figure out the personality of the team that we were playing against and had really good, uh, ways of breaking down, um, what would make, other teams crack um what what would pull them out of their out of their you know their game plan or out of their you know their comfort zone of how they wanted to play and I think you know I think we were a team that could play any way you wanted to play whether it was a skilled game we could play a tough game um we could play a grinding game so I, so Hitch had the ability to be able to break teams down from that that angle and we were able to um, execute the game plan that he wanted wanted to play and we were a team an older team that uh, you know had been through a bunch of different things and understood how to play and the way it needed to be played at certain times yeah I, I could picture Hitch going in the locker room and be like hang hey, yang, 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 and then like Holly and the guys all look at each other and kind of roll their eyes and I mean <laughs> I, you, you know it's there's just a lot of personality there can I ask you a question though man like, I know this is a, we have a lot of, I'm a, I'm a big Pantera fan. I don't know if you know who that is, but apparently when you guys won that cup, you went over to Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl's house. He throws a cup off the, 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 the pool house. It lands in the pool. Yeah, it, I, what were you there? What's I, the deal with that? I missed that. No, oh. I missed that. I heard about it. I don't know why I missed it. I think I went to every other party. Um, <laughs> uh, that was there. Uh, yeah. Vinnie, Vinnie, uh, they actually, that song that they actually created that I Dallas know. song uh, during that, uh, during the St. Louis blues, uh, when we were playing St. Louis, um, that song got, uh, you know, developed they, or he, written or whatever. Yeah. The intro, it's like when you score a goal, they play that song. I think they, they recorded that before you, 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 I think it's your goal song, but yeah. Yeah. We had yeah, it's the goal on. song now. Yeah. Yep. It's the goal song now. Yeah. But it, we used it to go out in the, kind of cracked it for the first time um, when we were facing game six we were going into overtime against St. Louis and we ended up uh, winning that game uh, winning the series that night and uh, we played that song on our way out of the of the locker room going into overtime <laughs> and so it kind of stuck and yeah. that's how it stuck See Andy Pantera. Yeah. There you go. Andy gets scared when I play Pantera. <laughs> he gets scared of that hey, kind of music. I, just so I you don't know. need the heavy metal. I don't like the heavy metal. He gets metal. scared of it. It's hey, all good. So, okay, so playing with a Kovalev and playing with like a Fedorov, for example, like like any similarities there? And like, Ko, like, where do you put Kovalev in terms of the most like naturally gifted players you 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 played with? And and, and Fedorov, like he, he's got to be high up there too. Did he just blow you away? Even though he was kind of established, certainly established by the time you joined him as a teammate. Yeah, uh, Sergey played more of a, I don't know how, more of a power straight ahead game. Um, used speed uh, off the rush, like uh, he was a he was an incredible athlete, very strong. I mean, he he could really skate, like it was incredible. Um, wasn't probably um, Alex Kovalev could 
he could probably stick handle the phone booth, whereas Fedorov could, you know, couldn't stick handle quite that well. You know what I mean? I got you. Yeah. Um, and but and and Fedorov played with more straight ahead speed than um, Kovalev. Like he liked to beat you three or four times coming up the ice, sort of thing. Um, you know where he kind of did a lot of. Um, I call it, uh, you know, a lot of east-west. He played a lot of east-west versus north-south. I got you. Type of game, but he was a big, he was a big, strong kid too. Like could really shoot the puck. Like, you know, Sergey could. They both could really shoot it. But I would say it was more. Um, Alex liked to dangle more in traffic versus uh, Sergey would look to play speed and attack with speed off the rush. Hey, so your your relationship with Iserman, like you worked for him for so long, you were his teammate. Like, how well did you I mean, you knew him pretty well, obviously being his teammate. Were you guys close before you started working for him? And and like the way he like runs a team and leads a team in the room on the yeah. ice, is are there any similarities to you see? You know how he kind of you know manages a franchise. Well, I would say he's more vocal, more um, more transparent, and how he wants things. Uh, he has his ideas, so obviously he's the boss. Um, I think he, when he ran, you know, as a, as a captain, it was more, um, led by example, but wouldn't, wasn't afraid to, um, you know, let you know if you weren't performing, you know, the way, you know, he knew you were capable of performing. So, um, you know, he's a very competitive, very intense, uh, intense player or as a player um really more can be a real smart ass now now that you know that i you know i really have gotten to know him over the years <laughs> you know uh, uh he's a real he's a real smart ass now hey do you think you're like him i mean working under him as long as you did and just seeing how he goes about his business do you feel like you're you're just by nature of being around him as long as you have been you, you've got a lot of similar traits that, that yeah, he... I would say there's a lot of similarities. I think when I think we look at hockey players the same way, like I think that's why we um, we looked at we looked at players the same way. We could see the same things in players, um, look for the same things in players, and knew that now nah, we wouldn't like this player for our team if if we needed to get him. We like this player for I, I, I think. There, there's a lot of we looked at the players and at the game very similarly uh, in a lot of aspects. Okay, so I've talked to players before who we've had on who's they talk about the presence he has, like when he walks into the room or when they talk to him. It can almost be intimidating. Like, do you want to have that same presence with your with your players, or do you are you more like a calmer guy? Like, you want to have that relationship and kind of shoot the shit and all that and kind of be their buddy at the same time, or do you? Feel like you gotta uh, you gotta maintain that distance. No, I think that's the hardest part right now. Is is um, you know I think communication is important um, with players. So um, I'm looking, you know, make sure that I commu- communicate well. Um, I think part part of the whole presence with Steve Eisenman is you know he was a, a heck of a player. Um, you know I think that's um, he garners, you know, his respect as far as when he walks into the locker room. Um, but once you get to once you get to know him, uh, he's very personable. I, I think that uh, you know players start to understand that and and, res- and respect them from that from that perspective. Hey, let me ask you something though, Pat. You know, you got these young kids on Anaheim. We had uh, Zegras on the on the show. Great kid. You got Troy Terry. getsy has gone. Deloria's gone. Like these guys are doing incredible things on the ice, and they don't give a damn. And they're just out there to, to put on a show and and do what they need to do. But like, do you think like as a GM, like maybe we got to get somebody? Like, you know, we have what happened to Troy Terry. Like, do you do you think that way as a GM? Like, yeah, we might have to get somebody to protect these young studs. Yeah, I, well, I just got to make sure that guys, you know, I. My attitude's been with them um, is to make sure that when you're on, everybody sticks up for each other. I, you know, I call it pack of five. Yep. You leave no one, you leave no one alone by themselves. And I think um, 
if you know if you develop the pack mentality, I think everybody will be fine. You know, um, and do you need that guy? Yeah, there's certain times you certainly need that guy um, to uh, make sure that uh, if there's a message sent. Um, uh, you know, and hence, you know, what, you know, they make sure that you know that sort of stuff gets taken care of at certain times. Um, but I don't certainly um, not looking to build the team that you know is is of that uh, you know that mindset. But it's up. It's more the mindset that you know we can all take care of ourselves and. The minute anybody does get in trouble out there, it's four other guys who are in the yeah. mix of that of the situation. You. Yeah, so because uh, you're an old school guy, I mean, yeah. when when the whole Jay Beagle thing goes down, like what were those conversations like with you and your players afterwards? And and like Tyson Nash made his comments known. He made some comments like, and and now you're in the mix. These are your players. You know what what was that like for you? You know, just having yeah. been around the game as long as you have been and watching that unfold. Well, I think the first thing, you know, that you talk about is if, if, if you're going to go into a scrum, you better be prepared to fight. I think that's the first lesson. And, I, you know, obviously, you know, if you talk to Troy, I don't, you know, he wasn't prepared to do that. Um, he was just kind of prepared to stop it, but it didn't stop. So um, I think obviously he learned a lesson, but I think with the other players being involved there as well, there's certain they could have certainly uh, done a couple different things as well, you know. So I think it was a whole it's a learning experience for everybody. So, um, so you know, it's just something that you have to overcome. And I don't think it's. Uh, I think we were fine after that. Like you know, we did have a few team meetings about it, and uh, certainly hashed out what we needed to be hashed out. And and I think you know the guys understand now you know how to protect themselves and how to protect each other yeah well, Andy's a free agent if you need any protection <laughs> just so you know okay. hey you know no but that's why it's so good to have people like you and the guy running I teams know. man for I these know. young kids to learn from I because know. you know they, they they need that presence around them you know a guy like Zegers I mean listen he gets so much attention because <laughs> he is so skilled in the Michigan I, I saw on the NHL network a few weeks ago that they were asking what the over under is for for him to do the Michigan this coming season I think the the number was set at 3 so he gets so much attention for it you know like where do you stand on a lot of the trick shots and and some of the stuff that make these okay, guys five. you know so you know exciting and give them so much attention like how do you look at it with uh, your own guys Well I looked at it like you know I think um had it been done in, in our era, my era, um, he probably would have got a, a stick over or cracked over his head. Um, <laughs> but today's era, like I, you know, we would have considered that hot dogging. I don't consider that hot dogging now. Like I've come to appreciate the skill level is much higher now. These kids can do different things with the puck on their stick now. Um, you know, my whole thing with 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 Trevor, um, you know, as I, I think he's a great kid. He's, there's no doubt he respects the game. And I, I think, you know, that I've, you know, I've asked him, you know, to, re, you know, just respect the traditions of the game. And he understands that. And so, you know, there's certain times when it's going to call for, and I, I don't think that we should look at that as, uh, um, uh, as, um, uh, you know, as a, I'm trying to, as a, a negative, detriment. yeah, yeah. Where's a negative, or are you being, you know, uh, made fun of if you're if you're defending, if you're defending uh, that play, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, certainly Wayne Gretzky did a lot of things that we hadn't seen before, and um, you know, he, you know, he owned the back of the net like nobody's business. He was able to do a lot of things from behind there that we had never seen before. Um, so. This is just another one of these times and, you know, in the era of the game, it's, it's changed. So is there, you know, should we frown upon it? No, I, I think we should celebrate it. Um, it's just another way of displaying skill um, that, you know, we weren't able to do it before. Yeah. Hey, you know how you stop that as a defending team? How about play better defense? <laughs> like, that's all you got to do. Like, play better D. You know he's behind the net. You know what he's going to do. We'll just stop him. 
So that's on yeah. them. That's how I look at it. <laughs> yeah. You let them do it. Yeah. <laughs> like you're giving them time behind the net. Go, yeah. go take yeah. them out. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, see, it's always easy yep. when you're watching on TV, though, Pat. You know how it goes. Hey, a few more things Go for you. Else. Yeah, a few more <laughs> things for you. Um, you, you got Klingberg d- done. Yes. Like, was, was that in the works for a long time? Yes. Like, I mean, were you were you working on a one year deal? Would you have liked to lock him up longer? Like, how'd that come about? Uh, no, we we had communicated early on, probably uh, the first three days of free agency, and then uh, I got to a point where I wasn't comfortable with. Uh, the term that they were asking for. And then if I was comfortable with the term, I wasn't comfortable with the, yeah. the amount of dollars. <laughs> so, um, so, you know, uh, so I kind of, it actually just kind of, it, you know, uh, the talking just subsided. And, uh, and so I didn't, I didn't really hear anything and, uh, it was kind of quiet for a long time. And then, um, you know, it kind of, we kind of became aware that, uh, you know, he had changed agents and then, um, you know, his new agent reached out to us and we, we started talking again. So I kind of just, I laid out my plan and, uh, my thoughts on, you know, for for the reasons, you know, for the term of the contract. Um, and we discussed a couple other different, you know, things as far as term, um, but he, he circled back and wanted to do one year. And so I was comfortable with that, that scenario. So that's, we ended up arriving at is what you saw, the dollar amount and the term. He's a hell of a hockey player. Hey, let me ask you, man, like uh, as a GM, like I am a mathematician, just so you know, you know, I got my uh, grade nine education, but let me ask you as a GM and all the numbers game that you have to deal with, like, do you got the point Dexter next to you? That's crunching these numbers. They're like, no, we can make this work. We can't make that work. Are, are you crunching numbers yourself? Like, do you got your crew? Like, how does that work? No, no, we got. So Jeff Solomon kind of is our capologist. So he, um, you know, him and I communicate a lot um, on um, where we are, where we are in budget. Um, you know, how much it was, believe it or not, it was more about trying to get to the floor than uh, worrying about, you know, being a cap team. Anyway, so it was harder for us. Like we had, you know, initially we had to spend to get, you know, we had to spend off almost 20 million just to get to the floor. Um, so that became, um, you know, that became uh, part of what we needed to do. Yeah, you got a lot of cap space there, man. Oh. Got a, got a, and are you okay with that? Is that what the is that is that the plan yeah. to kind of maintain yeah, some cap space moving yeah, forward? Yeah, no, that's the plan. Yeah, yeah, we're um, like we've got a lot of, you know, we. We've got a lot of draft picks that are coming that, uh, you know, aren't ready. Um, and so trying to um, instill really good culture um, in the locker room, really good culture with working habits, really good culture with uh, strength and conditioning um, to when we get to that point, when our, when our, our young guys that we start that we're, you know, uh, that we've drafted, so we start certain inserting them into the lineup. They, they've already learned, they already learned the hard stuff, and so, you know, the, the easy stuff is going to be playing the game and, and uh, understanding how to play the game the right way. And so, um, so it, it's kind of it's, it, I'm right now, you know, and just we're we're trying to improve every little a little bit every year and. Um, until you know, until we're, you know, until we can get a, a good chunk of our our kids in the lineup, and and they're learning and developing and getting better. Hey, I gotta give uh, Rob DeMaio a shout out, man. He oh. worked under he worked under Army for yeah. all those years. I, I I love the way he he went about his business. I fully understand like Tough. the impact that he had. Uh, on the Blues and, and obviously them winning a cup and, and whatnot. So so you, like, hand-select him to be, like, your right-hand man there in Anaheim. I know you have other people around you, too, but – and you guys go back. You guys were teammates, but why why Rob DeMaio? What stood out about him that that uh, made him – you know, you one of the first people you brought on board? Well, Rob and I, we were teammates in Dallas, so Rob and I sat beside each other um, uh, in the locker room, and so I, we just – you just developed a relationship. Um, uh, you know, I knew Rob's inner makeup, you know, really, uh, really highly competitive. Um, 
was probably pound for pound one of the toughest guys in the NHL, um, you know, for his size. Um, and when he, I kept an eye on him the whole time. Um, it is, you know, he started in scouting and then, you know, he became, uh, you know, director of player personnel in St. Louis and you know, director of pro scouting. So he kind of, he kind of took a lot of steps um, to, uh, you know, all the way up. And the whole time, whenever I was at a rink, I always saw him. So I knew he was, you know, I considered him a hard worker and, and, uh, and he also was part of that team that won the, won the Stanley cup there with St. Louis. And so part of what I try to do is I always try to, to hire winners. Yeah. So I want to, I want to be, you know, surrounded by winners. And so right. he fit that, bill. he fit that bill. That's that's a good model to have. Surround yourself with winners. That's that's what. <laughs> unfortunately, I don't do that because Andy's by me. <laughs> hey hey, I know you're a farm boy. You're up in Michigan, all that stuff. What's your place like in Anaheim? Are you like okay? I gotta be by the beach. Look, I gotta take advantage of the beauty. Like, what do you got? <laughs> what, what kind of setup you got going over there? Uh, not much of a setup. I'm uh, actually I got. Uh, I'm just renting a house right now in Irvine and uh, which is about I don't know, four miles from the practice rink and about Ooh. 15 minutes from the Honda center. It's kind of a, a perfect kind of setup. Um, I got a little backyard where I can let my dogs run around and, yeah. and that's, that, that's all I need. I love it. Sex simple. You gotta like, keep it I want to go back to Michigan. The dogs. Hey, I've got two more things for you and then I'm going to let you go. I, I got to ask one more Iserman question because you know, he is so stoic on the outside looking and people just don't, there's very few people that he lets in in his inner circle who truly know the personality. Like what is he like, like during games? I mean, is he always intense? Does he, does he like to kick back does and have laugh? fun? Does he laugh? Does he like explain his personality for those who don't know? Um, uh, when he's at the rink, he's all business. Um, he's competitive, uh, very intelligent, uh, very patient. Um, uh, when he's away from when he's away from the rink, as far as playing golf, um, that's when he likes to have fun. He let he, he relaxes. And, but um, overall, he's a very intense individual. Uh, you know, like I said, competitive and smart and patient. Yeah. And then there's no surprise by that answer right, exactly. at all. Last thing, I was reading that you like you lost your thumb oh, God. when you were a kid, and then they reattached Ugh. it. And so I can't fin- I can't fit your family like they yeah. were there with you. So I, I can't finish well, this interview yeah, without asking about I, it. Yeah, I was, I was 21 when it happened. I was actually I played two years in the NHL and thought my career was over. Um, yeah, I cut my thumb off in a farming accident with an auger. So the auger just uh, just basically took it off and uh and uh my dad it was it my dad was able to find a thumb um and they brought it to the hospital six hours of microsurgery later uh they they had reattached it and then three days after that um there was kind of touch and go and once i got through the three days after that uh it was nothing more than a broken thumb that's what ended up happening. So six weeks after the accident, I was playing hockey again. Wow. Okay, but just explain an auger and explain how the hell your thumb got cut off with it, R- real quick. So I was, well, I was, so I stepped up. I was, cor- I was on a corn plant machine and an auger. We had uh, an auger that was distributing fertilizer through these boxes that mm-hmm. were on top of um, the corn planter. Um, and as um, I was stepping up, there was a piece of paper that was kind of lodged in, in the box. Oh, of, uh, anyway, and I kind of slipped on it. There's a hydraulic oil leak that I slipped on and my hand went in. And uh, I, bare, you know, I, I, I lost my thumb, but I almost lost my index finger and the tips of my other two fingers. So I was really, for, really fortunate. And, wow. uh, and so, yeah, so, so I, was, I was blessed. Well, it's amazing yeah, that your dad it. found it. I mean, I, I, he, yeah, he found it. Yeah, he ended up finding it. Um, we were able to tell. We were able to tell him because I knew what box. I knew the boxes that were full, so he. I knew where he was able to go, and and really knew what box was empty, but wasn't as full. Mm. So I, he was able to. Uh, he was able to dial it in right away and get right 
right to the right box to where he was able to find it. Jesus. Wow. And how does he carry it into the hospital? He just picked it up, like, or does he have? I, yeah, yeah, Andy. He, yeah, he just picked it up. Wow. Wiped it off on wiped it off on his pants and oh. brought it in. That's what, hey man, that's, that's, what, that's a real tough. hero, man. That's and a hero. he stubbed his toe the other day, and he wouldn't stop bitching for like three months. Like, <laughs> that's I, not true. That's not true. I don't know what to do with him. Hey man, the little ball. Of, hey, listen, You're the you, best. you had an unbelievable. First, yeah. I, can I ask you the, real quick? Oh, I know. The Hall of Fame. I know. Does that bother? I, do you think maybe. about it? I can't believe you're not right. in the Hall of Fame. We're writing emails, and so you know. we're gonna. You will get in now. You're after getting this, in now because this is get. This is out of hand. This <laughs> enough's is, enough. This is ridiculous. Yes. What do you have to do? Uh, what do we need to do for you? <laughs> well, uh, unfortunately, it's not up to me. It's up to the committee. And, you know, they have a job to do. And, and uh, um, that's, you know, that's pretty much, you know, you know, they have, they have to do what they have to do. And, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, one day it'll happen. But if it doesn't. Uh, I got no uh, no regrets. I played the game as hard as I could for as long as I could, and uh, left it all out there. And that's uh, that's that's all uh, I could really ask myself. Yeah. yeah. Well, twenty you years. Should, you should be in. Jesus. I think you're the only player in NHL history with 500 goals no, and 2,500 penalty it's minutes or something like that. It actually pisses me off. So to be anyway, hey, listen. All the best to Anaheim. Best. You're gonna have a you're gonna have a great run yeah. there, man. And and We're you guys have a you. young, exciting team. So we look forward to seeing you this season. We're rooting for you, big boy. All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate it. The Chemistry Podcast is brought to you by Bellman and Bellman.com. B e h l m a n n. Dot com. Get out there to Detroit, Missouri. Check it out on one side. You got the Buick, the GMC. Options for everybody. Then right across the street, you got the Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. Again, find something that works for you. And get yourself a new set of wheels in time for the summer. Yeah. All right, that was Patty Verbeek. He's hey, awesome. Hey, what do you think he's thinking with all that cap space? I want to get badass players. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think every GM? He's says? like, I'm not just gonna like sign guys because I have cap space no, when we're not ready right, to win yet. Sign the right guys. Sign the right, the right guys at the right time. Mm-hmm. You don't need it right now. Just wait and see what see what you have, and mm-hmm. then figure it out. You know, he he's got such an interesting way of looking at the game and knowing the game and and identifying players. You know, listen, he had a lot to do with helping build that you know Tampa Bay Lightning franchise into what it is today. Uh, they aren't what they are today without Stevie. And the people surrounding Stevie Y. There is not. I mean, they're talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. And so Pat Verbeek had a lot to do with it. I'll, I'll be curious to see what he does with a guy like, you know, Trevor Zegers and some of these guys, you know, whose contracts are going to be here before you know it. And, you know, they're going to want to position themselves. Well, he'll to get, get a Robert, Max Robert Th- Thomas yeah. contract. And why if, wouldn't you sign him to yeah, that? Yeah, 100%. Well, sign him for sixty-four million bucks for a kid that's twenty-two, mm-hmm. twenty-three. Yeah, you sign. You, I like. Sign, I like when GMs sign the young players mm-hmm. that are fucking. What are, about like a cadre for, who's thirty-two who no, wants a six-year deal? Them, I'm not doing. It. <laughs> like if I'm a GM, I'll, I look. I won't be married to what about this homie? Just so you what know. about Huberto who gets like a? I wouldn't do that deal. either. But if you have to do, sometimes you got to do. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Here in Calgary, ten fucking, and a half. That is a heavy, fuck, heavy number, dude. man. That's heavy as shit. And you're gonna be paying this guy ten and a half when he's thirty seven, thirty eight. <laughs> like what? I ain't doing I, that. Listen, I, I feel bad again for Brad Tree Living, man. He was in a tough spot. I ain't doing it. He's probably like, you know what? I probably won't even be here. Yeah, I know. Six fuck, and seven years you. from now. Exactly. I just lost my two best players. I I, I gotta like Give me the save fuck face out. here. Yeah, fucking right. I gotta compete a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You're right, Andy. So, I get that. I do get that as as a GM. That's like fuck mm-hmm. you. They fuck me. Okay. I know I'm gonna get canned anyway eventually. Fuck what it. what impressed you the most about Pat Verbeek? Um, he didn't laugh at my jokes. Well, no, uh, well, he used to uh, that. It's kind of like, uh, um, he kind of laughed a couple. He laughed no, he a couple didn't. times. No, he didn't. Um, <laughs> he hates me. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. But uh, sometimes I don't think these guys even know who I am. Oh yeah, they do. I, you think so? Of course, dude. That's they know everybody. Yeah, but I feel like. The guys that do know will say, hey, Cam, he never even said my name. He just, I don't know. know. Is that weird that I think that way? Kind of. Well, maybe. But I just Am don't. I sensitive? A I little mean, bit. It's just like, hey, man, did it bad. I just don't want to be too goofy if the guy doesn't know who I am. Because mm-hmm. he's going to think Cam, I'm a journalist like he, you. He, and so now I'm a weirdo journalist that asks stupid questions. He played, and he's like, what the fuck did you he do? He played then? in the league for 20 years. I, I know. And he's been scouting for like another 16, I, 17. I, I, he knows. I, I know. 
But but sometimes I think that. But he wasn't scouting. He wasn't watching you play I junior. Know. You know, he yeah. wasn't watching you I play in Albany back in the day. Yeah, I get, I get that. But it's like if you don't like, and this is me being uh, petty, petty a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're right, mm-hmm. uh, and I admit it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's like you don't. Know, does he even know? Does he think I'm just a journalist or something? I don't know. Because I ask stupid fucking questions. So he's probably like, not only is he not a good journalist, he's fucking stupid. <laughs> you think he thinks <laughs> that about you? Yeah, I do. Uh, that's I very possible. I know. But he stayed on with us, man. It was all good. He was cool. Yeah, he was totally cool. He lost his thumb, Cam. Yeah, we all have. No, you haven't. No, you're right. But His dad went into that feeding box. I know. And he found it. He found, uh, could you imagine finding it? What do you do? You pick it up? Well, yeah, you give it to the surgeon. They put it back Is it on. moving? It could be. Chicken with the head cut off? Yeah. I yeah. would honestly, I would just die on the spot. No, you wouldn't. I don't know if I could survive that. No, you'd pass out like a pussy. But you wouldn't die. Well, I was almost passing out when he was telling the story. Well, because you're a pussy. But he's got a beautiful farm. Yeah. And uh, Michigan. And I love the way he lives his life, too. He's got the dogs. Dude, people who have dogs and, like, you know. You go, what kind of hunting dogs are they? Uh, uh, Pointer you dog. No, you go, what kind of what kind of dogs are they? German shepherds? I'm like, no, dude. I'm like, those are point. <laughs> what do you mean? They actually point? Yes, they point. They point with their fucking paws. Like, here. I asked him if they I had meant a Gordon to look Center. up some videos about that. I haven't seen it's that a, yet. Dude, I had a Gordon Center. They point. They go like this with their with their with their paws, like and really. This, yeah. Do you know my German Shepherd? Um, the white one. If that's a oh, badass dude, dog, dude. she used to howl like a wolf. Yeah, but into she's not a hunt, she's not night. hunting dog. She could be. Dude, she was amazing. They're not bred for that, but they're bred for protection. She would. Um, very smart. If there was a fire truck, she would howl into the sky like a uh, like a wolf if she heard a siren. Yeah, or like a tornado siren that, that, that we get here on Mondays. Yeah. Oh, we scared people last week. Oh my god! Anybody I reach have out people, to you about oh that? Oh my god, yes. They're like, "You okay?" I go, "Yes, it was a test." Because they want to know if we're okay. I yeah, know. I go, "Yes, it was a test." Were they asking about me? Were they no, asking they, if I was okay? No, they know you're gonna be fine. Oh, you get sucked up in that tornado so fast. Did you see that video the other day in Maryland from oh, no. that tornado? Yeah, it was a F one. Yeah, don't tell it me what. It, I know what it was. It was stronger than that, dude. Nah, it's a F one. Dude, it was. It destroyed that house. I know what it was. And they're videotaping it. It was on the water, thing. and then it hit the little fucking shitty ass little fucking little like uh, you know garage to the dock, mm-hmm. and it ripped that apart. We always think there's like like rednecks and stuff like that in the just like just the Midwest, but like whether you go on the East Coast or the West Coast, like I've met some real rednecks. You know where the biggest rednecks are? California, what do you think? man. Well, upstate California. There's upstate. some there. No, I, not even upstate. Uh, in the middle of the state. In the middle, it's for sure. It's the middle of Sacramento. It's Hoosier. Bakersfield. It's Hoosier. It's like, if you watch, do you ever play GTA 5? Grand Theft Auto 5? Look at all the hillbilly boys Never up where Trevor it. was. Where Trevor was in, in California, that's Hoosier fucking Hoosiers. But it's in the desert. On the East Coast, man. I'm not, I'm not talking just like You want to know the biggest Hoosiers are? Well, Florida. What do you think? Nope. Well, Mississippi, Alabama. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. Great call. Mm-hmm. Poorest st- state in the world is Mississippi. It's Mississippi. But what do you think? Country. Where do you think the next biggest Hoosier for 300 miles? They just got rocked by floods. Where do you think it's at? Uh, Arkansas. Nope. Close. That's a good call- question. It's eastern Kentucky oh, and yeah. it's western West Virginia. Georgia. Oh, West no, Virginia. West Virginia. Yeah. So there's a 300, and they all got killed on the floods. Because there used they're in the to be hollers. a Listen TV to me. show with that family from West Virginia. They're all, I there? know, fucking Hoosiers. They're Hoosiers. And in, in Kentucky, eastern Kentucky, they're in the hollers, meaning there's big hillsides, and they all have these fucking little shanties in mm-hmm. these hollers mm-hmm. where the river goes through, and they all got flooded away because they don't have cell service. They don't have fucking this and that. Mm-hmm. There's 350 miles of just fucking degraded... Poor, poor, poor. All the way from eastern Kentucky, all the way to western Virginia. West Virginia. Damn, I just drove through the a most lot. poorest part in the world is that stretch. I just drove through a lot of that area. Yes, not, you not did. Not through West Virginia, but through Kentucky, Kentucky and yeah, Georgia. But that was west and I, we stopped for peaches in Georgia. So you want to make sure I was Georgia's able okay. To get some, but peaches. no, western or eastern Kentucky and mm-hmm. fucking goes it tr- trickles into West Virginia. It's the poorest part in the United States. Wow. Yep. Three hundred miles of just poor. Poor. They don't even have cell phones, dude. Poor. No. And this, it's rampant this, with fucking this farm drug that abuse. I, I think it was Hillsdale or Hill, Hillman. Hill something. Look it up. In Georgia. And they had a farm. And we stopped at that farm to pick up some Georgias because I wanted to get my yeah. peaches. In, That's a cute farm. In Georgia. You get your peaches in Georgia. Yeah. Like oh, Justin I'll Bieber does. I'll eat those peaches, dude. You know Justin Bieber? Like he, like, yeah. I don't he's, mind him. He's kind of growing on me, dude. 
he likes hockey. If you like hockey, I kind of like. Yeah, it. I kind of like his videos with his girl and everything. Yeah, like I they're just kind of like they seem to like really genuinely like each if other. If he likes, he's <laughs> you're funny. He has. Um, you're so like. Well, he's really grown up over the years. <laughs> he's still nerdy, but it's all good. He, he likes hockey, and that's all I care. He's not about. a good dancer though. Like t- puts- you know, like Justin Timberlake really can dance. Oh God, yeah, I know what you mean by that, dude. This guy is like. He's a performer though. He's, Andy. Like, he's good. I, who he's Bieber? Good. Yeah. I yeah. could dance. Listen, Matt Lashoff, who who brought us into the uh, this episode, one ninety eight, and then who uh, is going to take us out of the episode as can well. Can I tell you something? I would like to collaborate with can him. I'd like something? to do some you like do no. I can like do a little rapping or something like that with one of his can songs. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. If I had the voice, if I had the voice, mm-hmm. and I was a lead singer of a heavy and metal, could play band, guitar. And listen stuff. to me. Yeah, I know exactly. What I would do on stage. Me too. I think about it all the time. It gives he me copies, chills. Bro, he no, copies it gives everything me chills. I, I watch performance and I envision myself oh, doing geez. the same thing. He, Brody, he copies everything I say. <laughs> it's I just true. Get get Cam, no, you don't. I think I'm like... I'm a, the only one that's ever said that I'm in St. Louis history. I'm a way more polished, intelligent... Um, well, Musician than me? Is that what you're trying to say? Version of you. You listen to fish. They just sit up there. I'm talking about heavy metal where I have to go from the east side of the stage to the west side of the stage and do no shirt on and scream and do. I okay, know. Well, I don't envision I knew myself it. doing that. Yeah, because listen, I know exactly what I do. I know how to perform. I'd be a, a mixture of Phil Anselmo, of actually Steven Tyler, because I want the long mic rack. Is he with in all, rehab again, or is he probably. in jail? Where no, is he's he? in rehab. I was in one of his videos. Remember, I told you that. No, and so anyway, I'd have him and I do. Uh, Tell Lindemann from Rammstein, I'd mix all these guys together, and I'd have I just know exactly what I'd do on stage if I was in the heavy metal. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see you going from one side of the stage to the next with no shirt off, acting like that. But no, I was in a video with uh, Aerosmith. We we already already talked about that, and no one cared. Back in the mid nineties, mid to late nineties, everybody talks. You talked about that, no one cared. So what else you got? Anybody else video? Anybody like message you about that or anything? No. no. <laughs> the only thing they messaged me. Oh, okay. I mean, hey, be nice. It's dude. all good. Be the I robot. I stick up for you. Yeah, I did. I stick up for you. Yeah. But they love you. Yeah. But they chirp you a little bit. It's all good. Oh, I yeah. get chirped too. It's all good, man. Oh my god. We love Do you ever? It's so funny. My sure. people chirp you, and then your people chirp. Eh, it's just the way it goes. <laughs> your people. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they at? I don't know. I'll see in you in your neighborhood. I'll in see your you neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you Friday at the show. Looking forward to that. Mm-hmm. Get us a box. Will you? Yeah, hold your breath. I like hooking people up. I don't know. No, you do that. know them. Let's not going to say who it is. Who right. are they? I'll tell you here in a minute. You know them. Are they my buddies? Oh, yeah. No, they're not. I'll let you know here shortly. Well, don't bring it up if you're not going to answer it. I'm going to answer it. Okay. You know who brings us the uh, Cam Mr. Podcast? With, who? With Pat Verbeek, the little ball of hate. Hair Club. They hooked you up? And hairclub.com. No, I know I'm them. I'm telling you who brings us. Because I know them. Yes, you do. And I they know, know you, too. That's why my front part of my hair looks good. <laughs> I can get the back. 800-279-7878. Go to hairclub.com today. Hairclub.com slash Cam and Strook. That's actually our landing page. Regrow, restore, replace your hair. And uh, listen, just walk in there. Have some confidence. They're going to treat you like gold, man. That's what I want. Like family, really. Well, it's easy to walk in. It, mm-hmm. Actually, the hardest thing is to walk in mm-hmm. and to make up an appointment. Like you're a guy and you're like, I'm walking in. Like everybody's going to think I have a... Who gives a shit? Every time you walk they in, don't they, they, they don't care. They don't give a fuck. They're like, no. "Let me help you. Come no. on in here." Like it's a it's an easy environment. Yes, it's so. And the, God, I, I'm like, "Oh, I got an appointment. I'm going right yeah. there." They're so gentle right and nice, there. and yeah. they're like, "We all get it." Yeah. Even the women are like, "Hey, we I got know. our own problems yeah. too." Carshield and Carshield dot com. Telling you. 800-857-2481. 800-857-2481. Go to carshield.com today. Use that promo code CAM, and you'll save 10%. I know it's embarrassing, but listen, Piano. You might get a makeout session. Oh, really? <laughs> 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 All right, Bellman and Bellman.com, baby. Yeah, Danny yeah. boy. Danny, don't make me say it. Danny, Dale, everybody. I know what you're looking for, a three-quarter ton. I want a shit kicker that's going to fucking haul my 33-foot R33 Cobalt it's gonna cost me a quarter million bucks. You're gonna have that bumper sticker with the uh, four coexist peeing on the uh, no Chevy, or with the ball sack hanging down. Oh my god, That's I so never even heard of that until you brought that up. Well, you me. live in fucking Fancyville. Come on with the ghetto that. buys, and you'll see it. They have that out where you are. Yeah, they'll welcome you. You get nervous driving at night in your neighborhood, or my neighborhood? <laughs> are you out of your mind? In my neighborhood? Are you out of your mind, dude? You come into my neighborhood, man. They're all wealthy, and they have. 
loaded with guns. Oh my Everybody god! Loaded. You with don't it. know. Is that. there any crime out there? Is there none? Everybody has Did multiple guns. Did you see guns. that guy? I think he was like an Asian shop owner. These dudes him. walk into the guy. Ga- yeah, no, he didn't kill him, did he? No, he stabbed the fuck, killed the guy. That was different. And then he got arrested for it, and they wanted to fucking prosecute the guy because of one, the dude, this Asian dude who's been there since fucking the 50s, mm-hmm. he's busted his ass. He came from hell, came over to the United States. He started stabbing him in the back. Because the guy tried to rob him. And, and so he's like, he protected himself. He, what kind of night? It was like a little like. What, uh, what are you talking? Are we talking about the same thing? I saw that one, and then there's another one I'll tell you about. But yeah, he started stabbing it, him because Andy of the sometimes neck. watches the news, and he'll be like, "Oh, a news thing happened," <laughs> and he'll like say it, and like, "Yeah, that was debunked or whatever," you okay, know. So they arrested that guy. Yeah, they arrested the shop owner, and then all of a sudden, people put their foot down on it, and they gave him gave him a break. They did. Yeah. Did the guy he stabbed? He didn't survive. I don't think so. Okay, so Fuck this him. other one I'm talking about, um, he wasn't Asian. He was just a good old boy. He had this, like, white kind of shaggy hair. And these dudes walk into the gas station. Big sawed-off rifles, right? ARs? Probably AR, yeah. Point at the guy. This dude, calm, grandma, cool. And it looked like a grandma, but it was a man. That was a dude? Yes. Oh, wow. I know. And if she, or he blew him up. Calm, cool, and collective, just picks it up, shoots the guy, and the guy's screaming, he blew my arm off. Fuck him. And they got in that BMW that they had just stolen? Of course. And so Scum then they the got air. arrested at the uh, hospital because he had to go to the hospital Aww. or whatever. They're celebrating that guy where he's Pussy. from. He's like a hero. I love it. Good. Put him down. If you come into my fucking shop, I bust my ass for this, and you're going to fucking rob me. Sit the fuck down. I love Sometimes it. Sometimes you do get prosecuted for that. It was well, at 2.30 shouldn't. in the morning. That you guy shouldn't. needs to go to bed. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. Why is he working so much? No, late? we'll say this. So a cop came up to a, a bunch of a couple African Americans that owned a comp, uh, owned a business. They were up late. They're d- discussing things, and a cop came up to him and goes, "What are you guys doing? Are you supposed to be in here?" And that was a little bit. Uh, they should have. The cop should have played that better. And the owner's like, "I don't need to talk to you. This is my shop." Well, how do you know? So that was a weird. And so situation. what happened? I don't, I don't was know. Was there that, a shooting? No, no, no. I'm Where just was saying, this? Like, and when was I, it? I, I want to balance things at, at times because I'm always so hardcore on shit. So I'm mm-hmm. like. So, like, cops aren't perfect. So, my point is, like, and shit like that. Like, sometimes you're not perfect when you see it, when that it comes video to of that female officer. She lost her job. She was like losing. She's like going crazy in the car. Like, it's going, she started going crazy. She's dropping the like racial. Well, uh, uh, she should be ex- fired. Now. Oh, she did get fired. By, uh, anybody. And he always likes to like find a couple things that he just randomly saw, like driving to soccer practice or something. He's like, Dude. oh, did you? S- I'm doing my homework. <laughs> I okay. see more shit than you. Th- than you're like, you got to be kind of like, I, I'm, I'm on top of a lot I of stuff right now. I host a right three-hour show about all kinds of shit. Just like fucking, what's his nerdy-ass name, that fucking dork basketball player is like, Mount Le- Rushmore. LeBron. Mount oh, my Rushmore. God, Jalen Rose. Fucking nerd. Well, he says that, hey, you know on. the Native Americans kicked our ass for 400 fucking years? We stomped the fucking we stole, Nazis. We stole the we land from Imperial them. Imperial Japan. What people haven't stolen land throughout history? Okay, Go well, ahead, and explain it to me. We'd be in the where would, we, where would we be right now if we didn't take land here? Where would we be? Okay, would we be exist? Let me would ask we exist? You this. Are we gonna be in the fucking Did Stone Canada Age? Take it from England or something? Or wait, wait, wait. The fucking French came over mm-hmm. and fucking took it, and they they bought it back from them. Yeah, they got it back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Right. So let let me know what country hasn't been fucking taken over and this that and the other. What country? Okay, so listen. In in civilization. Go mm-hmm. ahead. Let me know. Well, let me just tell the people what Jalen Rose is saying. Yeah. Former Fab Five. Really geek. good basketball. Great, great. What a geek he is now. He was married to uh, Molly Kiram, who um, who uh, was the, she's like the host of First Take, which is a good show yeah, with I, Stephen I A. Smith. Yeah, she's actually really pretty. Yeah, he was really he was pretty. married to her. I don't know. But his thing kind of came out of nowhere. I hadn't thought about it. So Mount Rushmore, which is where? South Dakota, North Dakota? Where? Where is it? South Dakota. Yeah. Uh, there's four presidents, founding fathers, whatever, that are that are on this uh, Mount Rushmore, as we all know. And people use it all the time in sports. Who's the, who's on the Mount Rushmore of yeah. uh, baseball or hockey or whatever it is? And he's saying you shouldn't say that because Mount Rushmore was built on top of dead Native American bodies. Okay. They got Geronimo being, being built, just so you know, too, as a, uh, as a statue. Look, I, I don't give a fuck. Like it didn't bother. You think that, he really thinks that's yeah, no? He's just virtue no, signaling. Is he is he like that? He's a dude. Is that he that passionate you? about no, it? No, he's virtue signaling. Although he did say like he found the Redskins name to be very offensive oh, and Jesus. the Cleveland Indians to be. Offensive. Oh god! Now they're the Guardians. 
It's so funny. Let me give you an example of something real quick. Watch these clips on, on YouTube. They'll have a guy in a poncho and a Mexican sombrero and a mustache. Mm-hmm. And they'll go to this f- white college, a bunch of white nerds that look just like you, Andy. Walking around me, I'm doing things. I'm doing things. And this guy with a poncho will be like, hey, do I look offensive? And the white people and the blacks would be like, oh, my God, yes. Oh, my God. That's cultural appropriate, appropriation. Bah, bah, bah. That's this. That's it. They're like, oh, okay. Ask another white. Bah, bah, bah. Ask a black guy. Oh, that's stuck. Uh. Then they go into Salida Road where it's all Mexicans, Mexi- Mexicans. Mm-hmm. all Latino, all homegrown. And they don't find it offensive. And they're like, do I look at They're like, hell no. Come here. Da, 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 da. Hell no. Come on in here. Hell no. You little white so you're bitch saying boys. People find it offensive, but their own people aren't they offended. They don't give a fuck. Well, some people are. They don't give a fuck yeah. about it. It's unbelievable. Well, who's putting the pressure on? The Redskin on, name. Who's putting the pressure on to change The that? little nerdy white boys are putting the pressure. The nerdy white girls that grew up in houses like we live in now. Mm-hmm. They're like, fuck the rich. Fuck the... And look at your house you grew up in. Like, they're psychos. And they're like, that's offensive. And then he goes down in Salitaville, whatever it's called. And they're like, mm-hmm. no, come embrace. You're representing us. Like, we like that. You're not mocking us. You're representing us. You're showing people like this is our heritage. It's so ridiculous, dude. Mm. I, I don't know, man. These people, they it's virtue signal. It's virtue signal. You see all the nerds on Twitter like, women this, more women. It's so funny how like uh, some of these like writers, like, mm-hmm. we need more women to do this. Okay, why don't you quit your job and give it to a woman? Well, what are you doing? Wait, don't you need more? Wait, wait. Don't you need more women? Well, you're the head honcho. Why don't you hire more women? Oh, you didn't. Mm-hmm. Why don't you give up your job then? Oh, that's weird. Oh, you want other people to. But you don't. Why don't you give yours up? Go ahead. Give it up. Give your job up to a woman. <laughs> You've been there for 20 years. You keep bitching about it. Why do you still have a job? Give it to a woman. Mm. Be the better person. Hey, speaking of women. Nerd. Uh, get your waggle on, Doc. They got women's clothes. They got men's clothes. Cam's wearing the uh, alligator today. You got the matching shirt yeah, to go with I do. it? In my car. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be. That'll be I'll a look good look. That'll be a good look. That's if I'm going. Alligator, baby. Um, they've got some new looks, some new designs that are just coming out right now. So check out their website. Get your waggle on.com. Look good on the golf course. I, sometimes if you look good and you play like shit, it doesn't really even matter as much, does it? Yeah, it does. You got to play decent. Not if you look good, Cam. It helps to look good. Don't get me wrong. And I love waggle golf and I look goddamn sexy in it, but God, do I suck. You look what? Sexy. No, I don't think you're doing that. I kind of do. In your, in your waggle My golf? My wife said. Oh, she said she that She gave to me you? a makeout session. That means something. <laughs> Okay. But I'm not that good, and, you know, but... Uh, but it makes you feel better about yourself, does, though, 100%. too. I'll tell you that. When I roll up to that golf course, man, it's just like, I just feel good. I might even put, well, like... you a, shouldn't, because you're not good. I'll put a golf, my golf glove in my back pocket to just walk around well, like that. Well, that's what you're kind of yeah, supposed so to do. that's what you do anyway, yeah. You know, I didn't know... And he finds unique ways to think that he's cool, and it's just... It just I doesn't didn't go know anywhere. that you're not... Well, why, why can't you putt with your glove on? You can't. You it's just look goofy. such an issue. Yeah, you just look goofy. I don't like all the rules and all that stuff. Well, they're there, Andy, and they made way them too up. many rules. Eh, well, you got to figure it out and just appreciate yeah. the you know the consistency of the rules. And then, of course, uh, Mars Blade. Get to Mars Toe Blade. Get there today. <laughs> Toe drag of them Cougars, baby. I got. I know exactly what I want on a T-shirt. I thought maybe we could, if we ever changed the name of the podcast, I'd call it Toe Dragon Cougars. Oh my God, that's. Do you want to do it? <laughs> kind of. Hey, here's what I the visual I want with the toe drag cougars. Toe dragon cougars. I want to. I want a kid with the Mars blades cruising up the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. With, talk talk with to a, our boy with a hat. Well, with I'm, I'm with right a hat now. backwards with long flow, no mm-hmm. shirt on, mm-hmm. with his gloves on, mm-hmm. and he's got the biscuit puck oh, and yeah. a cute coog with a nice little skirt or her yoga pants, mm-hmm. kind of jogging by. And right when she's jogging by, she's like, ooh, and he's yeah. toe-dragging her. Oh, you yeah. see the back of him, his hair flowing in the wind, and she's like, ooh, kind of looking yeah, at him. Yeah. That's what I want. We're, we're waiting for your sketch. You get, I gotta, I'll put it down. Somebody's got to sketch this that for us. Just so you know. Send it to us. So yes. you got the you got the dude, toe dragging, hat backwards, hat back, flow, long flowing hair. No shirt on. Toe-dragging a cougar. Nice shorts. On like a... a, a sidewalk. Like, or like a beach a, a board, boardwalk or something like, you know. Well, 
we're 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 not, we're not on, like I California. So let's know, do it like I in know, a neighborhood sidewalk yeah. where there's a tree right there, and she's just yeah. she's jogging with her headphones on in Lulu pants, and you're just toe yeah. dragging her. She's giving you that look like, oh my god, mm. you sexy motherfucker, <laughs> you are sexier than my nerdy mm-hmm. fuck husband <laughs> who's out of town. Okay, you know, yeah, well, what's he doing? Uh, well, he's <laughs> making you money, but okay. he sucks. Okay, and the dude is toe dragging you, mm-hmm. sexy. Yeah. Yeah, Nick. All right. This has been the Cam Strick Podcast. Again, Matty Lashoff, man, takes us out of this episode number 198. Yeah, We're yeah. toe dragging cougars, man. Hey, make sure you smash and crush that like button. Uh, subscribe to all our channels. All and like all our, our um, like everything. Follow us on I'm on Facebook, two two different Facebook accounts. Mm-hmm. Follow Instagram, me and uh, my uh what's it called? We got cameo. We my got cameo's everything. open. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time you did a cameo? It's been a while. It's been a while, yeah. <laughs> For I you too? One. Nah, I did one the other day. Did you? People they still, come do, every people other still day. doing that? Yeah. Come like, there was uh, a hot thing a for week. a minute. Yeah, it was once or twice a week. Yeah. I bumped my price up. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, that's what I'm trying to I'm trying to sell this patio furniture. I need to bring it down. No one I gives think. a shit, dude. To bring it down. If you really think about it, no one really cares. Well, they that. might care. You just <laughs> <laughs> You never know. Hey, listen, this has been episode number 198. Matty Lashoff, we're going to collaborate very soon. He and I are going to put out a song together, man. And I'll see you Friday night, Cam, at the concert. Yeah, hold your breath. Yeah, looking forward to it.